Yeah, welcome everybody to the Pulp MX Show presented by Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, and Decal Works. Coming at you! It's Monday, March 11th, 5.01 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We've got a banger show lined up for you tonight. Really looking forward to this one. Should be a lot of fun. We've got Birmingham Supercross to talk about. we got MXGP opener as well to talk about tonight. And whatever else is on your mind at 702-586-7857. Give us a call, and, uh, yeah, we'll try to uh, answer some questions for you. Super excited again for this one. Got a really good in-studio guest, my friend. He, he's, he's a pretty good rider. Won some races back in the day. Never won a championship, though. But anyways, let's get into it. 702-586-7857. And uh, Cooper Webb will join us tonight. Cooper Webb with a runner-up spot in Birmingham and two wins on the year. So Monster Energy star Yamaha Cooper Webb will join us. Some guy named Jeremy McGrath, 72 Supercross wins. He'll call in. Looking forward to that. And then also some guy with no Supercross wins, uh, Lewis Phillips from Vital MX. Lewis is calling in. We'll talk a little bit of Birmingham, but mostly talk MXGP opener. We'll gauge his uh, his panic level on the 84 uh, on, on more and more on the show. So thanks for watching and listening again, people. Uh, we've got the Race Tech rant coming up. We have the X-Brand Goggle tear-offs. Motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment as well. And motorsport.com, fly racing, decal works, race tech, X brand goggles, Michelin, Renthal, Acherbies, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Maxima USA, OGO Power Sports, ORW, Pro Filter, FMF, Guts Racing, Renegade Race Fuels, Atlas Neck Brace, WUSA, Get Data, Works Connection, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, Wiseco Piston, MTX Braking, Ethica, Troll Training, Lifted Trucks for Sale.com, Factory Chassis Parts. All on board with us tonight. If you want codes to save on most anything of that I just named off, like for example, did you know that Pulp Mex Dash Works uh, Factory Chassis is the uh, code to save with Factory Chassis Parts? No, you didn't. Actually, I think it's Pulp Mex Dash Chassis. Uh, did you know the code Pulp Mex 20 to save at Works Connection? No, you didn't. Pulp Mex code saves at Atlas Neck Brace. No, you didn't. PulpMexShow.com. Go to the sponsor deals. It's all there along with the other show deals as well. So whether it's uh, OGO, or, or Pro Filter, or any of these companies, most of them, X Brand Goggles, we got codes to save. So we appreciate using those codes to save you some money. And uh, yeah, tell you more about the LCQ Privateer Challenge Race coming up as well later on. Uh, maybe you could win a YZ450 there. We got a live show coming up this weekend in Indianapolis and St. Louis. This Friday night, Indianapolis, the great Justin Brayton will join Weege, JT, and myself, uh, amongst others, to talk about uh, the Indy race and Supercross Series in general and have some laughs. So really looking forward to that. 702-586-7857. Uh, give us a call. Uh, my studio co-host for the night, he is um, coming in here. We were bench racing so hard that we almost missed the intro of the show. Factory Yamaha rider, factory Suzuki rider. He's won GPs. He's won supercross races. He's won motocross races. He's got his own podcast now. David Villeman. What's up, DV? How are you? Very good. Thanks for coming in. No worries. Should always, be a good night? Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. You flew Spirit Airlines. You're staying at the Orleans. Like, you are really saving me some money. Thank you, yes. buddy. Yes. I woke up at uh, 420. Okay. 425. Just for this show. Yeah. Oh. Just for the love of the sport. Oh, thank you, buddy. How's your podcast going? You got a French one and an English one. It's a, it's one, but I do okay, yeah. two versions. French mm -hmm. one is obviously like pretty good. Okay. And then uh around the ten thousand listen every okay. time. It's pretty yep. good. And then is we that, started is that views and and audio both or no, that's that a podcast. Okay, uh, podcast downloads. only. Yep. Yeah. And um I have, uh, yeah, we do something with Marvin. So Mar yep. I did one by myself. Okay. Well, I talked for an hour. Yeah. And, um, and Marvin listened to it. He says, hey, I want to come on. Oh, Let's nice. do it. Yeah, yeah. So since the second one, uh, he's been with me every weekend and uh, or every week. Mm -hmm. uh, but this weekend, he's racing Day in the Dirt. He was racing Saw that? Yeah, yeah. in Florida. Uh, so I had to find uh, another guy. So... I did w today. I did one with uh, Nico Oben. Oben, I remember him. Oben, yeah. or what did you say? Oben. I say Oben. Oben. Yeah. Okay. Nico yeah. Oben. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's I also say Bourdon, and I guess it's Bourdon. Bourdon. Bour. Bour. Bourdon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, um, uh, so I did one with Nico today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's been good. Mm -hmm. But we do like obviously French people. There's less stuff of French people. Yeah. Like. 
most of the French guys like they don't understand like English, so yeah. they don't listen to right. your your stuff. So yeah. they like having like uh, some French stuff. So there's Le Big, there's and then yeah, Le Big USA is coming in later tonight. Uh, I don't know if it's a podcast gang war going on between you nah, two, but okay, all right. I don't charge anybody. I don't have sponsors. Like you have no sponsors. It's free. I, you can donate, but okay, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, looking forward to talking about that. Pulp Fantasy is going well for you. You're 120th place or something. Yeah, I'm 123rd. Jesus, Stevie, good job. Yeah, I'm trying. I got a rough. Hardy rough. Hardy got you in Daytona. And then uh, Romano got me this, this weekend. weekend. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> two races in a row with, uh, I think, only – and I think there's another guy. I only had six people in Daytona, oh. I think. I, I, I did a 180 or 188 or yeah, something. Yeah. And uh, But this weekend, yeah, Romano got me. Can I only had seven in the main. Can we add DV to experts' picks? Is that possible? I mean, it'd should probably we? be better for right? everybody if we did at this should, point. Should we not add him to experts picks? I don't think any of us, <laughs> I, I say us, we're, you, any of you are doing we're, super hot We're right struggling now. as a group. Me, Paul, Dan, JT. Dan, not, our, yeah. not our finest. Dan's on the up. Yeah, Dan, Dan's okay, but. It's yeah, not. it's, um, I don't, see, I, I'm, I'm a cheap ass. I don't pay the $5 extra, so I don't see you guys' well, pick. It's, it's a good thing right now. I yeah. don't want to get influenced. Okay. But, uh by mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, by the way, I'm in some French magazine. The guy interviewed me at, at Paris, and uh, so that was from that. Yeah, so yeah, it just came it to out. You, yeah. yeah, yeah, it just came out. Uh, you can see uh, this super nice shot on my story that I posted. Oh, yes. you reposted it yeah, too. I think yeah. I reposted it. So yeah. I, yeah, I'm blowing up in France. And that guy, I'm sure that's the guy. Did he speak English yes. very well? Yeah, yeah. So his name is Richard. Yep. Um, that's the guy you saw. Yeah. Um, I used to race 80s, uh, oh. like a French championship mm -hmm. in the 80s, uh, in 1990 on 80s. Okay. He was always like a Honda guy. He was close to Pichon. Was he good? He was, yeah. He was yeah, good, yeah. okay. He was a good ra yeah, racer. Yeah, yeah. And then we race, uh, we call it junior. Junior for us is a uh, schoolboy. Yeah, same as, same as Canada. Yeah. Yeah. So like uh, 15 to 18, that's like 125. He race, we race together too. So like, uh, yeah, very, uh, okay. he was very good. Nice. Close to Pichon. Also, like oh. buddies with Pichon yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Kind of same area. Well, I got a four-page story in his magazine. Yeah, in you're a star. Yes, exactly. I'll sign a copy for you if you want. Yeah, why not? Uh, um, we do have some questions for you from motorsport.com. Tweet at uh, Talon as well. Uh, over there, uh, watching the video, working the video, uh, coding the new app as we speak, and uh, working on the Pulp MX uh, LCQ Wild card idea. <laughs> oh my god. The Travis Marks. What's up, Marks? You're just gonna like throw it in there, so I don't really have a choice, aren't you? This is a great idea. I mean, it's not a bad idea, but how uh, how hard can it be? <laughs> famous last words. Right? How hard yeah. can it be? Hi, Marks. Famous, uh, hi. He happy, said he's not feeling well today. Happy to be here. So, you know, who is? <laughs> uh, <laughs> great point. There's only one guy raking all the dough. Is you feeling oh, good about this no, show? No. That's why he's the happiest one yeah. here. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I mean, we're miserable. <laughs> what we got is a, a spirit flight if you, and a Starbucks. If you had my money, you'd throw yourself off a cliff. Like you'd be so, you'd be so like Dude, mad. I, I can fit two house, two of my my house in yours. I, I doubt that. I very much <laughs> doubt that. And, and like I said, you know, oh, uh, this is the guy who doesn't. He doesn't have a job. He does not work. I, I mean, he was. He just hasn't worked. He, he, was he retired in. He retired in two thousand and nine, <laughs> and he has not had a job. <laughs> yes, I was. I coach a multi. Oh, okay, yeah, national coach. coach. Champion. Sure. sure. Okay. From A to Z. Okay. I I, I know you did, but I, I mean more than any coaches. Did you? Uh, did you? Do you in think you put in forty hours in any of those weeks? Yes. <laughs> With Dylan? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I'd like From to see. A to Z. I'd like to see those hours. I'm telling sir. you, I can bet you. Okay. I spend more time with Dylan. Uh huh. With than any coaches in this okay, industry. Okay. I, I don't. I'm not with any rider. I'm not disputing that. Hundred percent. But I'm just saying you didn't put in no forty hours. Like a like, like I do. Like grinding away. You know what DV needs to do? I what, made what? I made less money than you though. He needs to be a Walmart greeter. Can you, you did, imagine? You did make less money. You show, you told me the money you made from him. You did make less money <laughs> from what? From Dylan. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. Uh, barely like I think when he was champions, I barely made six figures, barely. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do it for the money. I know we know. I made three or four times more like doing nothing. But that's not the point. 
That's <laughs> not the point. <laughs> you know, it's about like, don't. Uh, it's not because I don't have a job. I never had a contract. Uh, I never okay. had a contract with Dylan. Uh, it's yeah. all like. Um, this is just for you. I'm just coming at you because you you came at me for. No, you know. but you should. You know, I I don't like when you minimize my. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I don't like when you maximize ha- my. Uh, how my money. affected Dylan's career I, and results? I I don't I don't you minimize know. it. But you know, I was, I was like every day like. Uh, I followed him when he was running in the morning. Like we go jogging, mm-hmm. like on the, on a run, uh, rain or shine. I'm on a bicycle behind, telling me like to go faster or not. Uh, right? I, I uh, believe all this, but it all started because you were, you know, saying that I don't pay my valuable employees any money, and I'm the only one making money <laughs> here. I'm sure if they're here, they make some kind of money. They, they're yeah. they're well compensated. Well, all of well, them. Me, all it, of them. me yeah. is a way to give back. Okay. You know, I'm it's giving back too. Yeah, I'm so. employing people <laughs> to, to the state, <laughs> to the economy in Nevada. Uh, uh, yes, taking yes. your phone calls over there, the Talon Taylor. Hi, Talon. Hi, Steve. I'm happy to be here today. Oh, look at oh, that! Oh, look at that! It's it's only because I haven't been here for like a month. I'm so of the, of yeah. the week. Uh, okay. Also, DV, which we talked your podcast. We talked about Mex Fantasy. You got back on a dirt bike. Or is this a thing? Is this uh, a real thing? Yeah, like. Uh, Kind of like Marvin's been like pushing me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so and um, and I had a car. I don't have a truck. I don't have a bike. Uh, <laughs> so I bought a truck. I bought a bike. Um, What'd you buy for a truck? I have an F one. Okay. Uh, F one fifty. Yeah. Um, and then for all the the guys, it's the small engine. It's the V six. It's a two point seven Eco Boost or whatever. I know. I all also bought the small motor, Silverado. Okay. All you yeah, guys, yeah, in all the moto guys, it's like, oh, we need a, a, a Raptor. A V24 yeah. with, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, with, this guy's got a Raptor. With Why does he need a Raptor? 262 valves, you know. <laughs> no, it's a EcoBoost. It's a small stuff. I paid that 20,000 bucks. It's, you know. Yeah. And I bought a, a YZ250, which is, I'm way too old for this shit. <laughs> so, so. So the riding might be over already. I thought I was. I, I thought like, so I go one day. Yeah. I think it was on a Monday or something. We go to Pala, and uh, first of all, <laughs> so I can I check everything. Yeah. I you know I I just pulled the head off, look at the mm-hmm. piston, took the pipe off, look at the piston also, uh, if there's no marks or yeah. when I check the clutch. clutch what year is it? What year is it? It was 2019. Okay, so yeah, so new. Right. Yeah, so the clutch was great, plates were great. I checked everything, you know, all change. Um, Clean the call. The guy who know you were who you were. Uh, when I got there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't happen often, but he's this like guy, fucking villains this, behind my back. Yeah, this guy knew, <laughs> okay. and um, I go there, and there is a uh, Marvin is kind of doing some testing or something Mm -hmm. with magazine and KTM or Husky or whatever. I don't know what it was. Um, Nick Way is there with uh, Vincent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oh, Nick would have loved to see this. (laughs) No, but he was there. Yeah. And I take my bike and I I turn the, I open the the gas. Yeah. And then it's like. Oh, it's just pouring out. Pouring out the cup. I'm like, am I dumb? I I know how to do this. (laughs) And Marvin is here and he's like, Look, so he saw that first. Look, do you have a yeah. leak? I'm like, ah, it's nothing. So <laughs> I let it go. I take like a tiendo. Yeah, tap the side of the car, right? And the top, and it stops. Marvin looked like me. <laughs> like, like you were David Copperfield. <laughs> yes, like I was an alien. He doesn't really know much about like. <laughs> like the, it's like the, his magic. Yeah, he doesn't really know much <laughs> about the <laughs> mechanic side of things. He looked at me like I was an alien. That was great. Um, <laughs> and then I started riding it. And I put like pump gas in and... Uh, and uh, the thing is stock. Everything jetting. Yeah. I checked yeah. the jetting. Everything stock, and that thing was detonating so bad. And I'm like, dude. So I went back. I changed. Mm-hmm. I had a few jets. You had and some then, jets, okay. And I changed like a uh, needle position. Yeah. And uh, it was a little better, but not. Uh, I was kind of over it. Okay. <laughs> Did I you wrote, jump everything? How'd you feel? No, you know, I I rode the vet truck. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and I think two days later we went to Kaia Creek. And it was like during the rain and yeah. st- stuff. And they had a new vet truck 
We rode there. He had vet track was fun last time I rode it. It was really but fun. It was a new layout. Okay. It was great. Okay. We had a lot of fun. And um and the bike so it's What are you wearing li- for gear? What do you got for gear? Uh <sighs> I can't I cannot tell you. <laughs> Why? Because you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me. Is it new so gear or old gear? No, it's old. No, so what do, what do you have for gear? Li- listen. No, 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 no. I swear to you. So uh I don't give a shit about all the gear, all the stuff. So I have a bell helmet that I got from uh Benny, you know? Oh uh, B- Benny Bell? Yeah. Be- bell Benny? Yeah. Be- no, uh, the guy that works at Bell. Yeah, right? Benny. Because uh, Dylan was there and then he asked me one day. And I got an MC rep- replica. Oh. So I have that. <laughs> I read that. And uh I still have the gear from the dirt is that dirt rider or dirt bike uh shootout? Oh with for Kiefer? Kiefer? Yeah. Okay. So he got me a set um of um uh, fox gear so jersey pants gloves and a pair of boots but that was in 16 or 15 yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's all i yeah. still have that yeah but um it's vented and okay. it's it's the jersey's vented it's cold and i'm like ah, i need something else and i went on motorsport and i looked did you go through the banner on publicmex.com I, no i didn't Thanks. But Thanks I have a code. Us. I have a code. Oh, so you do? When I sign in, I yeah. have like a yeah, 20% yeah, 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 or 30% right. off or Guys whatever. Guys hooking you up. Yeah. So they were nice. And uh, there's a, this chick that uh, sent me email sometimes. Uh, you know, you know, Talon's a gearhead. Yeah. Okay. S- <laughs> <laughs> so Not when, interested. <laughs> so when I go to, what I do now is okay. like I do every, I put everything in the car. Yeah. And they're nice yeah, with it. The discount. Uh, it gets. And. I emailed this chick. I forgot. She she rides Britney or something. Maybe she, Mar- Talon. Um, she's a writer. Yeah, we have a we have a Britney, so it's probably Britney. Yeah, <laughs> she she rides or whatever. We have a Britney, so it's probably Britney. Uh, at least he picked a name that we have an employee I, I, of. I think if I remember okay. right. But she rides. And yeah, she she looks like she rides. Yeah, pretty much all of us ride okay. or work on bikes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't do returns. So, I know that. So just not for you. I put everything in my car and then I send her an email. I say, hey, I. Everything I need is my car. Yeah. And then she tells me like what she can do. Yeah. Internal price okay. and stuff. But you don't do this this time. I bought um <laughs> what is a pair of used Fox because I have Fox boots from okay. from 2015. Yeah. I don't want to wear Thor or yeah. whatever. Okay. So I need to kind of match a minimum. Mm-hmm. And I wanted like a non vended pants. And I bought uh I can show you the photo. Uh, they like uh, white, blue, and black fox. From so maybe like uh, five, six. And these are used. Over. They use. I paid like twenty bucks on eBay. It was great. Okay, so, so I got that, and I wrote a hoodie. So <laughs> I had a hoodie on. So like, with one phone call to Alex Ray or JT, I don't, I, or I, I don't, pff, they have better things to do. I don't. I hate to ask for shit. When I was doing all my builds, uh, yep. I was posting on on uh, on. Yeah. Uh, on my stories and stuff. These companies, Michelin gave me stuff. Yeah. Uh, you got me hooked up with V Force at one point, yeah. and all the guys. Uh, I called WR to give me deals on the rims we, and spokes yeah, and yeah. stuff. Uh, but I, I, okay, I really don't like asking for shit. Right? So you have a 2016 pair of Fox boots, a pair of used Fox pants. I don't know why you have. Okay, and then a hoodie. And I had like a black hoodie like that. Okay. <laughs> and I wrote. And uh, it was fine. And the bike is like, ah, forks are soft. I'm too heavy for the forks. So I click it in. And then mom was like, hey, do you want to try my bike? I'm like, yeah. So yeah, this 252 yeah. shock, yep. uh, electric start mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And dude, that thing was good. I was <laughs> Probably like, better than a stock 2019 bike. Yes. Yeah. It was like. So are I we going to ride more or wh- what are we? Where are yes. We at? I was. I don't want to go ride alone. Okay. So, so I don't have a riding buddy. Kind I of. can be your riding buddy. Yeah, but. D- I'm not going to Glen Helen. Oh, you're not? It's too far. <laughs> okay. Me is like uh, <laughs> Kaiha, Paula, Lake, Lake Elsinore, is, but is, it's okay. not very good. So, but. but Glen Helen is not fun for me. Like, I rode. So we if rode, you ride in the morning, it's fun. I understand. But let's say uh, we rode the vet track f- for the longest mm-hmm. at the Kaiha Creek. Mm-hmm. It was great. Mm-hmm. It was getting kind of beat up. Yeah. And it was the, the, the dirt was great. Yeah. Um, and then almost at the end, like around like one, one o'clock or whatever, I went on the main track. Yeah. 
I wrote a lap. I'm like, there's no way I'm riding here. <laughs> it's like, it sucks. Uh, there's no fun at all. Yeah. Square edges and yeah. stuff. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing that. And then I know Glen Helen gets like that. Yeah, but so not in the morning. Yeah. I, I get there I get there when it opens. I leave by like noon. It's nice. You're crazy. You, you're like, what? It's it's a, then, it's like three hours to go there. Two forty, yeah. Two forty, yeah, yeah. For me, um, the, the Listen, traffic man, on the two fifteen in the morning okay. is ridiculous. Kiefer and will take you out to the high des. If it, I would love if, doing if it that. rains and yeah. stuff and all that. He'll he'll take you. Dude, like we used to go to the Memphis place yeah. to ride supercross yep. um, when it rains, mm -hmm. and it looks like there's a lot yeah. of like Kiefer knows all that shit. Yeah, I know. I would I would love to do that. Yes, okay. and then I would bring Marv. Marv would love that stuff. Um. Okay, uh, David Villeman here, brought to you by the folks at Decal Works. Speaking of graphics, do you need some graphics, some Decal Works? No, actually, can I say another brand? Or? Yeah, I don't care, sure. No, the guy from uh, Era, Era Moto, do okay. you know them? From nope. Out of Temecula? Nope. They're more like in the freestyle guys. <laughs> of course. Guys uh, like you run freestyle stuff. No, no, but... It, Hoodies. He, he does like... I uh, mean, it, fits, it fits you. So his, his name is uh, Dustin. Okay. Uh, his nickname is Walker. I don't know if you know. That, that's that, that's great. That suits guys. That who, that re, that super nice guy. Suits guys you ride. And then in every hoodies. time I ask him for something, okay. he did the. I I left the stock uh, graphics okay. on my right. bike. Decal works. And I got a like Alt just twenty four is the code to save. Decal works is great. <laughs> Pull, Thanks. All you all your sponsors. Pulp are Pulp Max twenty four. It's code to save. With decal works bringing you David Villeman here. I don't uh, know. Red Bull KTM, uh, Rockstar Energy, Husqvarna Off Road, and many more using Decal Works. Thank you to still the run, that, run still yeah. there. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, Decal Works. Thanks uh, for those guys for bringing David Billman on the show, and also Michelin. Speaking of Michelin, giving DV tires. Uh, our guy Randy Richardson down at Day of the Dirt in this in the South. I don't know how he did. I don't know what happened, but uh, he's down there with Michelin's on Michelinman.com forward slash motorcycle to learn more about the complete offering of Michelin tires. Follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Great mountain bike tires as well. Uh, thanks to Michigan. Thanks to Michelin Silica Technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides 11% more durability than the previous generation and 16% more, percent, 16 more traction when worn. So thanks to the Michelin guys for bringing you to David. All right, we got, we got Cooper Webb coming up, so we ought to talk Birmingham. I do want to get into this a little bit more later with you. Yes. Uh, but Jet Lords, two in a row. Daytona was a great. It should, have, it should have been four in a row almost, right? Yep. If you look at it like, yeah. you know. Yeah, he threw in, it away. In, in terms of performance, it, it's, what? it's a four in a row for me. What do you see from this guy? What I mean, we're going to have McGrath on, and Jet took heat for talking about 72 so quickly, and that, that, that's still early. I get it. Uh, a lot of his wins look like Jeremy's back in the day, and he's phenomenal. Busting up that quad in the middle of the rhythm. What do you see from from Jet Lawrence? <laughs> um, I understand the seventy two. Like uh, uh, it's it's controversial because it's the king mm -hmm. and MC yeah. is the biggest thing that ever happened to Supercross. Yep. Um, and I understand the other side. We, we we're gonna need somebody to beat that thing, right? Yeah. If not, yeah, records uh, are made to be broken. Yes. Yep. Um, and I, I understand both sides, but just take away. We do you think? Uh, Ricky has a lesser career because he didn't get to 72 or Bubba or something, you know. Um, it's it's just like um, um, they're all legends. Doesn't really yeah. really yeah. matter, really. After all, you can argue who had more competition, who had less competition. Look at a guy like Chad. Let's say Chad did not have Ricky mm -hmm. or Wyndham. Uh, did not have Ricky or James, yeah. right? How many? How many times he's yeah. as Wyndham. winning more? Yeah, Wyndham six times team. he was yeah. runner up. <laughs> so, um, but for me, I lo what I love about Jet is supposed to be uh, he rides the bike the way it's supposed to be, and it's crazy to me because he's obviously super young. Uh, but we've seen it with Roxanne too. I think uh, they're uh, very similar in a way. They are. Uh, agree, yeah. For me, like uh, as far as uh, the approach of the, the racing, um, but y you can see Jet is having fun and he ch the, the track, when he's on the track, he challenges himself to do stuff, like to be creative, uh, to find something. If, if there is a rut that's not good or if, you know, the other the other day, like he was jumping 
over like a pocket where everybody landed. Mm -hmm. So to miss the ruts, and then he plays with the track. He he moves a lot, and and the way he rides, it's. And I was talking about this afternoon. Uh, now, like kids, non-kids, pros, whatever. Uh, for me, is the best thing that happened in terms of riding style, right? I'm not talking about wins and uh, other things. Uh, in terms of riding style. Mm -hmm technique since Roxon. I think before that was Roxon. In between, uh, not really great riders. Yeah, yeah. Webb, yeah, Tomac, but nowhere close like technique and the way how to use a 450 in Supercross and Motocross. And uh, in Motocross even more is is unreal, mm -hmm. right? I think it's, it's riding style fits Motocross even more. Uh, but now, what we see like uh, in Supercross, three wins, almost four, and then the wins last year in, in, in Motocross. We know the finished product. We know what's good and what wins kind of easy or without taking too many risks and stuff. So we have the finished product. Mm -hmm. And now for g amateurs and stuff, how do we get there? Right? Yeah. So everything that doesn't look like Jet right now, I would say Barsha. Yeah. Uh, like 250F Barsha. Doesn't look anything like... Uh, yeah. So if you're riding like this, just forget. Don't, just don't do that. <laughs> just move towards. I so mean, there's a lot of kids who, who need to forget it. <laughs> so right now, right now, basically, uh, you have a finished dish yeah. or a finished cake. That's yep. great. Right. It's jet riding style. I'm not talking about the what's around. Just like yeah. focus on riding and how to use a 450 the right way. And... You don't have the recipe, but you have the finished product. <laughs> With everything we have around now, videos, the... the Darkfish. Uh, Darkfish. Yep. The, everything is everywhere. Mm -hmm. You cannot hide, you know. You can see, uh, I'm, I'm big on fingers on the levers. Mm -hmm. You know, pointing fingers on the levers. Stop with the middle fingers. Forget oh, about those. like me, I'm a middle finger guy. Okay. Yeah. I saw your starts too. Okay. They're not very good. Stop with riding with your hands f like this on the ball. Mm -hmm. Yes, Roxanne does yeah, it. Rox I was just, yes. just going to say that. There yes, was, there's some really yes, fast Bubba, guys. Yeah. Yes, Bubba does it. Right. Yes, Webb used this one and one. But stop talking about exceptions all the time. Yeah. Right? Look at something that would fit and would work for everybody. As I said, you have the finished product. You don't have the recipe. Mm -hmm. But you can basically cheat and look for how to do it to get to that point. So that's like uh, yeah. at 20 years old for me is a model of of writing, and the way he does it, uh, his longevity is going to be mm -hmm. high. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not a lot of panic moments. Like so these, yeah. whatever is not working, you know, when uh, when you're up and coming, a 250 guy. Uh, right now, for 10 years you're going to have this guy. Yeah. Unless something happens. Yeah. So. Uh, does he ride t to me he rides um, like a smoother more in control Tomac no like uh, Tomac it's, it's, it's stand no, up there's no comparison there's, there's no comparison you can't compare the two okay the black and white okay I mean Tomac revs too much he's too aggressive I get all that but like I mean, the way he, he, the, he sets his bike up too well yeah that, that is yeah. I mean that's a Honda Yamaha thing too maybe you know in, no, like it was the same at the Kawi. It was same at the Honda. It was like he's, he's gone different on the on the Yamaha. Yeah, but it's very aggressive. It, it, it worked like yeah. his champion. Yeah, yeah. So that thing, that's like it could work. But look at the guys that uh, did good for a long time. You know, Denji, smooth. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, MC, smooth. Yeah, right. I mean, Villapoto breaks that pattern a little bit. He stayed with the rear. He's yes. very aggressive. Yes. But yeah, and the like same you thing. said, there's exceptions. But, there's exceptions. But Ryan is the same thing. Like, yeah. uh, if you look at Ryan, yeah. don't take ex exceptions. Don't take as a model yeah. the way Villapoto was riding. Yeah. Nobody can do it. Yeah. And or, or, if or you like go, David Villeman. if you <laughs> go any, any, if you go anywhere, I'm not talking about myself. No, I never want to share. I said it. But. So, <laughs> if you look at Villapoto, yeah. the way he turns, yeah. uh, he's going to say that's the best thing ever. His entourage is going to say it's the best thing ever. Yeah. His mechanic and is going to bump, pump yeah. him up, right? Yeah. But it's maybe the worst technique a guy can do. Mm -hmm. You cannot control. He's the only guy that can turn like this. You if you try to 
turn like this, yeah. like this, you're gonna uh, regress. Yeah. You're not not gonna improve. Um, so just look at stuff that works for the masses, right. not like pinpoint stuff. But okay, G great discussion. Uh, I want to get into it more later. Um, yeah, because I do have some questions for you. Uh, but our first guest is on the line. Uh, he's in Florida, and uh, yeah, brought to you by the folks at Wiseco. Speaking of Jet Lawrence, HRC Honda using Wiseco pistons across their 250 and 450 programs. Pulp 24 is a code to save with Wiseco. So if you need a piston for your two-stroke, like DV just got, or a four-stroke, use the code Pulp 24 to save at Wiseco. And uh, Garage Buddy engine rebuild kits as well. Thanks to the folks at Wiseco for bringing you our first guest. It is none other than Monster Energy star Yamaha Cooper Webb. What's up, Coop? How are you, man? Steve, what's up? How Not much. Ahead. Talking to DV about uh, Birmingham. Um I guess let's start with uh, the Monster Girl. Uh, <laughs> we have to. Uh, wow, she got lucky. That could have been really ugly. Um, what? Take us through what you what you saw and what you thought. Oh, it was crazy. Is what it was. Um, yeah, we came around and <laughs> it was like one of those things like you don't ever expect to see. Yeah. And I saw Jet slowed up so i looked up at the track and i saw her in the middle of the track and i'm like oh wow <laughs> he went right she was kind of walking right and then as he passed her she obviously realized she was in the middle of the track and went back left and i had already committed left and was just oh. along for the ride like i braked for impact and <laughs> i thought i did hit her um but i saw an interview or something that she said i actually just hit the board and it kind of like whirled her off yeah. the track so i think uh Everyone came away pretty pretty lucky. I thought honestly, like I hit her, and then the twenty guys behind me are just <laughs> running her yeah. over too. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, but yeah, pretty pretty dang crazy. That's for sure. DV, what'd you think of that? That was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think she was like daydreaming or something. Like uh, I, I, I heard an interview with her, and she said that. The two, the four fifties go way faster than two fifty. Yeah, but that's yeah, not a reason. I, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. I, I was buying this shit. I was like, oh, I've been, <laughs> yeah. I've been using that to my advantage with the boys all day. Today. <laughs> all the, the young kids. Um, so see, I just are fast enough. Yeah, just not, just you can see what happened. Yeah. I just have one question. Uh, I went on social media and they say, oh, should it be a red flag? Uh, yeah. What do you think, Coop? Do you think that should have been a red flag? Uh, no. I mean, it didn't. As weird and as bizarre as it was, it it really didn't affect much. I honestly thought for a few turns it might be because, like I said, I mm -hmm. thought I hit her pretty hard. And if, you know, like anybody, if they're sprawled out in the middle of the track, like there's <laughs> yeah. there's a medical that needs to come out there. That's That was my only thing was like, man, this thing might get red flagged. Like that whole first lap, that's what I was thinking. Uh, obviously, it, you know, I think it kind of, looking back, it cost me a few bike lengths, but nothing horrendous, mm -hmm. you know, like nothing worth restarting a race over. But. I'm sure everyone has their opinion for sure. Well, I got to say, props to you, Coop, because it, it, you know, some racers would grab that because you did lose time without a doubt, and some racers yeah. may grab that and be like, "Well, you know, it happened," and you were like, "No, no, no, no," you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, yeah, for sure. Right. I mean, like you said, you, I, I think I was just so at that point you're so focused, right? That like when something like that happens, you at least for me, I try to just you got to forget about it instantly. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it was definitely a little bit of a – looking back after the race, I was mm -hmm. like, man, a few inches I could have really, you know, hurt myself or hurt this poor girl or whatever the case is. But yeah. it's like anything in racing. You can always look back and go yeah. a game of – you know, it's a game of inches sometimes. What did you think of the – now, it didn't really work out because we it, the weather was great on – well, not great on Saturday. The weather was okay on Saturday. It missed it a little yeah. bit. And but they built a tamer mud track, forty-five foot double, no whoops, some waves. Um, what did you think of that plan that they did? And I, and I think it's, it, you know, like I said, it didn't work out because the rain didn't come. But what did you think of it? <laughs> I liked the idea. I really yeah, did. Okay. I, mean, I think all week everyone, including myself, was expecting another San Fran. You know, yep. um, just with the forecast and it changed, but you know, when it, when it said all week up until Thursday, that it was going to be about four inches or three inches of rain on Friday. Um, I, I liked the idea of it. Um, just to, like I said, being mm -hmm. at San Fran, that one was, was really gnarly. Um, so, but then obviously, like you said, it, it kind of backfires and then it ends up being a great 
conditions, great track and good dirt. And all of a sudden we have a, a pretty easy track that everyone is very close and doing the same thing. And, um, you know, feels like a monster cup without whoops. It's yeah. been, I don't think ever since, you know, there hasn't been supercross whoops on a, on a track. So, um, you know, I think it definitely backfired a little bit. I mean, it's, it's awesome that they can cover it, right? Like that's something that saved it by far, but it mm-hmm. then makes those, as we saw, those transitions super notchy. But, I mean, like I said, I'll take the notchy rhythms any day of the week over mm-hmm. a foot of mud. Um, but, yeah, I think it's tough. Like like I said, they're always trying to plan ahead, and I feel like Dirtworks did a great job of the build, everything they did. Like they yeah. fully built this anticipating rain, and, you know, I heard they built late and to avoid one of the days of rain and mm-hmm. everything like that. I think they did with good intentions. But then, yeah, like you said, yeah. it's, it kind of backfired a little bit, but, uh, you know, it, yep. I'll take the dry track. The, the easy track <laughs> is, is debatable. You know, you could, I could, I, I could go either way, to be honest. Like, I think you could leave it and just, if it does rain, we're, we're professionals. We can figure stuff out in the mud. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, I also see, see the other side of it too. Cooper Webb here on the Pulp Mech Show. Um, let's let's go back. I want I do want to talk Birmingham and the ride there. It was great, but I didn't get a chance to talk to you at Daytona. Uh, you've had such a good record there. Um, I'm guessing it was kind of like one of those things where the 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 heat didn't go for you well, and then the gate pick, and then just never got on track at Daytona. Uh, any reason why? Looking back at it, oh, uh, not really. Nope. I mean, like you said, the the I think the it seems like so far this year the starts are are crucial right mm-hmm. and um yep i think it that was like you said you kind of nailed it i i actually qualified really well it was my first yep. hole and someone said like 1100 days or something really like oh shit okay yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty cool that was a, a good thing um but yeah heat race kind of messed that start messed that whole heat up and um just didn't get off to right. i mean i think i was you know fifth or sixth around the first turn and then i made a bad line choice and the rhythm got shuffled back so okay uh i didn't ride terrible like i, I got yep. going it took me a little bit to get going um but by that point if you give you know eli jet and chase track position it's pretty much over yeah. and um i didn't ride bad you know but okay. it was definitely a a distant fourth and yeah it definitely sucks to i think i ended my my podium streak there i've yeah. always been on the podium but uh yeah, I think that's hopefully will pay off as minimizing those those bad days and it was a P four that night. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, not much you can do for sure. Like you said, you know, I didn't even notice you for a couple of laps. I was like, oh shit, look at Coop. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like he's got some work yeah. to do, and you did get Kenny, so that that part's good. Um, no, I helped, and like you said, it's yep. uh, it wasn't my best night, but it for sure wasn't my worst night. Um, but yeah, uh, Birmingham. You look. You you did your Cooper Webb things. You got better. You hung in there. It paid off in Dallas. Exactly doing what you know. You, he crashed and you got the win, and you got it from four point six to three point one. I think at one point, um, and, and you know you're doing your thing. Kid got you. Um, but overall, you, I think you got to be happy with your ride and just tip your visor to Jed. I think uh, you unless you tell me different. No, no, it was it was. It was a really solid ride. Obviously, you can look back and nitpick a little bit of things here and there. And, um, you know, the the few, I mean, I made a few mistakes early. Like, I missed the one rhythm, I think, lap two. And that that was a lot of time. Um, but, yeah, I felt like I, I rode really good. I felt like I was charging the whole time. I tried, you know, keeping the pressure on them. And for a long, a lot of the laps, especially after halfway, uh, at least on my board, like I was making slow, you know, two tenths here, tenth mm-hmm. there, yep. and making, you know, time on them. Um, but it's, yeah, like you said, it's, he's, he's really good, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I, I dropped my times late, you know, and, and yep. he was able to do the same. And it was just one of those things. Yeah. I'm trying my ass off riding perfect laps, and he is too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, you know, but I felt great. Like I, I sure. rode good, and you know, I I felt like now it's I know right. You gotta I think be a little closer, and even I had the whole shot going on the first turn and gave it up right there. So mm-hmm. just little stuff that that now I know I can can fix. But overall, I was, I was happy. Go ahead, DB. Um, 
in an e-race when you uh, you crashed right there was did you that that was the first time you jumped three out uh, before yep. the turn yeah yeah i kind of definitely oj'd and missed time that and you know ran right into the back of them uh not great but it yeah it was it was the first time and those transitions were definitely a little strange and uh <laughs> just overshot it by you know a little bit and by the time i could even grab the brakes i was in the back of them so i know it it didn't look great but it was i told i talked to him after i was just yeah. said, hey sorry dude i oj'd and had nowhere to go my bad chase had a hell of a time there too in the main a few yeah. times yeah well, when did you decide you wanted to triple out right there like was it planned or it was just like you were right there and you and you said oh I'll, yeah i think like when he passed he passed me in the turn before and we were doing that same rhythm like two table over single and when he went table over single he actually kind of got i don't know if he got cross rutted or just balance or what but he actually kind of came right on me and had I done our normal rhythm, we would have probably collided. So I actually backed out and then just went basically double over the, I call it that new obstacle, like the banana. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I toed and, you know, I saw it was, a, no one had been there. It was clean. And I was like, Oh, if I could three out, you know, and if he goes wide, I could maybe go up the inside and get him mm -hmm. again. And, uh, But like I said, it was the first time and just kind of overjumped it. And then I think he knew that as I, like, he knew who he was racing. So he kind of tightened that line up a little bit. And, um, you know, we made the contact. And obviously, like I said, I was too far back and just fell, fell over. But yeah, definitely looking back, I, I should have just kind of taken the pass and not forced it and taken, mm -hmm. taken the third and the heat or, you know, at least rode behind them, maybe learned a little bit for the main. Um, But I, I was able to get a great start in the main, so it worked out. But it could have been could have been costly for gate pick. How how important it is to get get a good result in the heat for sure. Um, as far as uh, like uh, setup and testing and everything, we're halfway through the series. Uh, are you guys done uh, trying new things and focusing on racing or and riding, or do you still like trying to find you know a better setup? Uh, I've I've been really happy for a while. Um, Believe it or not, like we found, we had a, a really good test in December, like midway through December. And yeah, crazy enough, we made one adjustment at press day, like a, a fourth change at press day of A1. And since then, I haven't changed the bike at all. Um, you know, we might go one click here and there, depending on the track. Um, but it's kind of funny, like, you know, we, we've been trying to improve it, like, you know, me and Gilly will talk and Rich and we'll kind of get like a game plan to maybe try to improve it during the week. And then I always go back to base, you know, even <laughs> during the week or on race day, we'll, we'll go maybe a click away from base and then I come right back to it. So, um, for me, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Like I, I feel like the bike does everything I need it to. I feel comfortable. I feel, um, like I can do all the things really good. So, um, I, I'm happy, you know, like for me, that's like in my championship years, it was always the same way. Like mm -hmm. I would get to a setting and I, I wouldn't touch anything, um, you know, so for me, that's what works. I'm sure there's, you know, little things here and there that we could clean up, but I feel like as a rider, it's on me now to, to fix those areas. I feel like we have the bike so good for me that, that I can improve instead of trying to improve the bike. So yeah, I've been super stoked on that. Actually, I'll piggyback off that question for something that I had written down. Yeah, you mentioned Gilly and Rich Simmons, who's there. I was going to ask you, like, how does that go? Because obviously Gilly and Tomac, we know they, they got championships together. Uh, they're practically like, you know, brothers at this point. They, yeah. they argue like brothers. Um, but you're trying to beat Eli. You're on the same team, but still trying to beat Eli, just like DV is trying to beat Chad Reed back in the day and all that. So how, yeah. how does that work? Hey, Rich, uh, I'm thinking this. Or, hey, Gilly, like, Gilly's E.T.'s guy and Rich is, like, how do, oh, you're laughing, but how does it work? Like, is it a little delicate dance there or, you know? No, it's it's actually worked out really good. Okay. Like, that was one of my, coming here, like, it was one of my, I wouldn't say concerns, but questions too, you know, because yeah. like you said, they're, they're really good friends, but I've always heard 
amazing things about Gilly mm-hmm. and, and just like, I've always been a, a KYB air fork. That's like, just, I call it the magic setting. Like I've always <laughs> just loved yep. that feel. So for me, I was super excited about that. And I know he has, you know, a lot of experience with that setup. So when I got here, it was something where it was like, Hey, you know, or like he, he made it clear, like, Hey, I'm here for the team. I'm yes. I'm tight with Eli, but Mm -hmm. you know, I'm here to make you happy. I'm here to make Justin happy. Like whatever it takes, let us know. And, um, they, they do great. Like we're based in Florida and Rich is here in Florida Mm -hmm. and Gilly's full time California, but he'll come here when we need him to test and, um, vice versa. Like I can go to California anytime I want. So, uh, it was pretty unique. Like I, I was used to kind of, at the old team, like I would go to California to do our testing. And then if we didn't figure it out or if I, you know, wanted to get a setting or something, they would just send it to where, uh, like I said, now it's kind of been Gilly and Rich kind of come up with a game plan and he sends stuff. And I, I tried it, you know, one or two things here and there, and then I would kind of give him feedback. And mm-hmm. so it was a little bit different. Um, but then I think what was really helpful was when he came here in Florida in in December, I think I told you, but I actually hadn't had a test day with him until like this off season. Mm -hmm. You know, he had just sent stuff before SMX. He had just sent stuff before Paris, all those races. And I was happy um, at the time. And then when it was pretty cool, like when, when he came here, I left after day one and I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Like, let's just leave it. <laughs> day one. And he's like, nah, I think we can, we can be, you know, 10% better. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh shit. Like you think. And then sure enough, we're there for another two days and we end up being 30% better than we were. So it was pretty cool for him to like get to know me, me yeah. get to know him. And even now, like it's been really cool. He doesn't, you know, certain things work for Eli that don't work for me. And vice versa and same with Justin. So it's been cool to not have like a a certain window that you need to be in, I guess you could say like Mm -hmm. it's, he treats all of us kind of differently. And, and even on race day, I feel like the team does a great job of like, they go to Eli or they come to me and they go to Justin and they give us all equal time and opportunity and everything like that. So, um, I've been stuck on it. Like I've, I've kind of used to it. Like even on KTM with Marv, you know, like they, I was kind of always used to having a two number ones, yeah. I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, so for me, it feels very similar, you know, having the two number ones in the, in the truck. So, um, and even in my activity days at Jmart, it was always the same. So yeah. I've always been kind of used to that and comfortable with it. So it doesn't bug me. Um, but it's been awesome to get to know him and Rich. And I've always known Rich from just, I, me and Cole Seeley back in the day actually rented Milestone Supercross together and oh, okay. ride together a lot. Yep. So uh, I had a lot of, you know, fun times with him. So it's been right. great to get to work with him. Because, uh, DV, there was some, some tension between Gilly and Dylan at times, right? And I think I think it was kind of that. I think it was yeah. a little bit of like, you know, why are you helping Eli or what, you know. you know. I don't think it was like that. It was more like uh, I think maybe Dylan being frustrated that he couldn't get something like he liked. Like okay. he, he was never really happy or yeah. they did not really find what he wanted to have, especially yep. in Supercross, more like Supercross yep. stuff. Uh, but I don't think it was because it wasn't he thought, okay. yeah, I yeah. don't think it was because of Eli. Right, know. right. Um, hey, Coop, what do you, uh, well, actually, I'd heard from somebody on the team that, a lot of times during the week, Justin Cooper's the fastest guy, which, I mean, he's coming <laughs> along. He's riding great. Um, and, you know, like going back to my day as a mechanic, there were some days that DV and Timmy were faster than Chad during the week. But what guys like you and Chad Reed and other guys do on weekends is, you know, figure it out. But Justin certainly been coming along really good here. And, yeah, I guess talk about that a little bit and, you know, him crushing it during the week. Yeah, it's he's for me. It's been awesome having him as a teammate and a training partner, and um, he's got a lot of speed, right? He always yep, has, and yep. you know, I, I've definitely gotten better as at the practice track. But that's I'm sure you can ask DV. He when he was with Marv from KTM, I'm sure he saw some of those days where you know Marv would just hand it to me during the week during practice, and mm-hmm. I was always able to to come out on race day and and get it together. But uh, Justin, yeah, he, he's been awesome to put us. The whole off season, we're really pushing each other, riding really good, and um, like I think how he rode this last weekend is is showing how he he 
has the potential to be, you know, and I think it's tough. Like it's, it's one of those things where on race day, so many things have to go right um, to have those really good results. Yep. And, you know, one bad start or, you know, if, if you're not gelling with the track or whatever it is, I think can be tough. And, and also as a rookie for him, I think, you know, he's been honestly to me really impressive. Like he's been building every weekend. He's been consistent. He's riding good every week yeah. um, and just creeping in, you know, now to the top five. So it's cool to see. And yeah, we always joke about it. Like I remember when I first met him, like he, he came to my facility in North Carolina because Swanepoel said, Hey, there's this kid on this Yamaha and Horton racing that's hauling <laughs> ass. Bobby wants to sign him. And yeah. he came, came and rode with us and he stayed in my, I have like a fun mover that was the size of like a shed <laughs> and he lived in it all like for like four weeks of the summer, just no money, no nothing, eating PB and J's every day. But, from day one, he went out there, and Dylan was actually with us too, all those boys, AP, and he went out like day one and just did a sprint lap that was like two or three seconds faster than all of us. <laughs> and we're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And so that was the thing. Jay Coop is always, yeah. he's been an awesome rider, always had good speed, and yeah, it's cool to see him coming, coming on, on his own for sure. Yeah, in, in outdoors, when uh, Dylan was racing with uh, yeah. Jay Coop, um, in practice qualifying, I was like, we don't need to go faster than him. <laughs> like, you can't. Just, just don't, don't, don't worry about it. Just get second. Yeah. Your second pick, third right. pick, you're fine. Right. Just deal yeah. with it in a race because he's, a, like, um, after a couple laps outdoors, yeah. he can, like, go balls out yeah. crazy fast, like two seconds faster. I'm like, Dylan, if you it, try like this, like, you, it might take you two days to get that speed. On, yeah. on one lap, and yeah. you might you might eat shit. Yeah. So just <coughs> just yeah. stop and get second or he, third, and we'll deal with it in a minute. In he the, had a uh, pole position in fifty something percent of his career two fifty races, motocross races. Insane, insane. Yeah. just just nuts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But well, so, well, it was funny because yeah. after the he qualified pole at I think it was the triple crown at yeah. A two. Yep. And up until Daytona, I think I only had four. I'm like, damn, dude, you're about to pass me already. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> his his sixth career race, and he's got he's yeah. already on his way. Yeah. Uh, just one thing that we saw. You don't have to answer, but it's about KTM like showing up with oh. uh, what so called what the KYB conversion kit in yeah. force in uh, in Sexton bike. Uh, is that something you wanted to try, or you tried uh, when you were there? It was definitely something I was very interested in. Um, the 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 shock that's on his bike right now was something that I went out and did my own testing, and I really, really liked. Uh, I brought it to them even one day on Supercross and showed them the potential, and the lap time showed the potential back then of the 48s and um, that shock and everything like that. So it, it's definitely crazy to see. I mean, like I said earlier, I've always been a big fan of, uh, KYB and just the way it feels. And so it's, it's definitely crazy for me to, to see what's happened and, uh, what is on the bike and what he's running. And, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty bizarre. I'll put it that way. Like I, at the time, would have given my my <laughs> left nut for that. <laughs> yeah, T KTM flexible now. Yeah, yeah. And, but, and so Barsha wants to go to the fifty twos, and they told him no, like you can't do it. They're gone. Fifty twos are gone. So it, in six months, they've gone from you can't use anything but fifty twos yeah. to now you can't use fifty twos. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and same thing, yeah. Marvel so like forty eight or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, Coop is a trendsetter. Coop, Coop, Coop. Uh, yes, yeah, because Coop of you. you. Hey, you. Coop walks so AP could run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Why go pissing? Oh, yep. The right. answer. There you go. <laughs> Why go pissing? Bringing you Cooper Webb on the show. Uh, Pop twenty four is the code to save with Why go. Please check them out. Performance partner of the factory Honda HRC guys. Uh, Coop, what do you make of this? I don't think we've had you on since we kind of talked about it. Uh, nine whoops, no dragon backs, uh, and then, um, you know, no loader whoops, only dozer whoops. What's, what's your take on all this? Yeah, I think um, I don't, I mean, I don't mind it. I just think, like, 
my biggest thing was uh, be, tell us before the season or, you yeah. know, yeah. let us know beforehand. I mean, I hit three dragon backs all off season. You know, and <laughs> yeah. Good point. Just like, yeah, good damn point. It. <laughs> and feel like, you know, I've, I've gotten better in the loops and stuff like that. So anyway, you know, I, I'm fine with whatever they think is safer or whatever. I, I, I'm not a, I'm not for it or against it. I, I think yep. if it were to be, and I'm a huge jumper, I'm a big fan of jumping whoops, but to me, I think they should make it 10 to make it to where you can't just go 3-3-3, three, 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 mm-hmm. personally. Yep. Um, that That's one thing that I would maybe adjust. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, I think it's just one of those things that if they're going to make the rule, I think it'd be nice to just it be said in October or November so we mm-hmm. can kind of just know and then know, you know, I, I, people can call me crazy or whatever, but I do think it can – affect how you set up a bike you know if they're sure. if they're only building dozer whoops then star racing can build dozer whoops then we can mimic that and make sure our bike is as good as it can be in dozer whoops because it's only going to be dozer whoops right yeah so those are little things um but yeah i mean i it, it's a little bit like i i get the safety or whatever they want to call it but i think there's a, there's supercross unfortunately is is a risky sport and the tracks are definitely, um, I don't want to say are getting easier because they're not by any means easy, but I feel like there's, there's gotten to be a lot of very, um, basic obstacles, um, in some of the, the sections and stuff like that. And I don't know, I just feel like maybe we just need to stop trying so hard to make it safe because it's not a safe sport. Um, and make it back to like, hey, let there be some separators. If yeah. if Jet Lawrence wants to hit a sketchy quad and win tonight, then let him or, or whatever the sure. case is, yep. you know, or a dragon back or so. That's just my kind of opinion, but I mean, yeah. not that it means much. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, for me, my opinion is it, the speed is too high. You know, like yeah, so jumps face of the jumps too flat transition to good and flat um you see the faulkner crash right mm-hmm. it shouldn't yeah. happen yeah. Like this section is too sketchy the the takeoff is too flat the landing is too steep and the yeah. next jump yeah. is too close mm-hmm. right um but at one point you got to bring somebody that actually know and wrote those things and yeah. to, to kind of like be there when they build or and do obstacles if you tell me me or anybody that rode for over 10 years there, uh, you can see the the, the Faulkner jump. Uh, it's yeah, a disaster it's jump. Time. Yeah, it's I a put one on track walk. I said because it doesn't go high the, enough. Oh, it goes it? flat, and yeah. they're they're gonna hit this concrete instantly. Really? You said that? Yeah. 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 Hundred yeah. percent. Like you you should know before you build. The the takeoff is too flat. Mm-hmm. The landing is too steep, Deep. and the next jump yep. is is right. too uh, close. That's like. Make it more condensed with like steeper face, mm-hmm. especially when the dirt is kind of hard. So you go higher instead of going longer right. because the speed, like uh, that's where people get hurt. I- I'm with Coop though. Like, and, and again, it's lack of dirt and it's these safety regulations, but we're starting to see the same rhythms and obstacles every week. It's, it's stupid. Like we don't see the, on, on, table on, no. table on, table off, or, or you know, a multi-level table or, Take, um, you know. The uh, main event, best lap. Yeah. Best lap or the top five in the main event. Yeah. Uh, separated by one-tenth of a second. Yeah. Top five. Right. Top ten. Yeah. In the main event where the track should be, like, kind of rough yeah. and, like, challenging. Yeah. Especially there. See how many ruts. Yep. It was not an easy track. Uh, and it was 54 seconds, 53 seconds, whatever. Um it was only one second from one to ten on the yeah. best lap. T- way too close. Way too close. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd like to see some different stuff. Uh, it, do- it does start, like, some of these, uh, the Detroit and Dallas were, like, the, I think it was Dallas, were the exact same track with just the rhythm lanes moved over. Like, different Detroit spots. Detroit yes. It was the same thing. They, they need to stop with short, uh, short uh, starts, too. Like, yeah. Detroit. Well, you could you lose you lose a whole lane if you go the length of the stadium, right? You no, can because you can you can cross it multiple times and you can take it backwards. Like back in the day, remember? Like it was great. Like finish line and one eighty to, to on the 
on the starting Starts line. Right, yeah. You can go inside. Yeah. You can square off. You can block pass. That's a good passing spot, mm -hmm. right? This yeah, this sure. thing like uh, I I hate the the start on the width of the track on the football, uh, yeah, on the football stadium. stadium. Yeah, yeah, that's stupid. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I like you said, dude. Like I I th I was thinking of Dallas in particular. We did the finish line, and then it was an on off, and then we went over the start. And we went to the sand, and then that that put us, you know, coming into that section we were just talking about with mm -hmm. a lot of speed. And I was thinking, like, from a design standpoint, it would have made a little bit more sense just to actually go ahead and turn on the start straight right there, like you're saying. That way you can, you know, go out to end on someone. If you stay tight, you could maybe run it in to where they couldn't get the rhythm or, you know, it, it opens some things up a little bit. And like you said, I, I think they're just – trying with some of the obstacles a little bit too much and it's it's making it very one line it's making us all mm. really close and then like you're saying we're scrubbing these jumps and hitting these jumps as fast as we possibly can and unfortunately that's what you know sometimes leads to those those bigger crashes because of the higher speeds and everything like that yep absolutely uh well uh, thanks for coming on, Coop. Appreciate it. Good job in Birmingham. Uh, triple Crown this weekend. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Last time yeah. we Triple Crown, you won it. So, you know. Yeah, we're hoping hoping we'll keep that momentum going. And, yeah, Indy's always always a crazy track. Gets real gnarly. And uh, I always enjoy it. So, yeah. like yeah. I said, hope, hope I can have a great weekend. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Right. Okay, that's Cooper Webb, everybody. Brought to you by the folks at Wysco. Uh, Wysco, Piston, Pop 24's code to say we got some calls for you. Um, Sean. On three. Let's go. No, Sean's on two. Let's go to Sean. Sean, what's up? What's your question for uh, David hey. Villeman? Uh, hey, guys. What's going um, on in the so my Are you, are you on a carousel or yeah, what, something? What yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Hold on. Sorry. I've been on hold for a while. So. Okay. Uh, I'm in a lounge waiting for a flight. Okay. So, uh, the way that Jet rides isn't really like the raw speed that you used to see with. Um, james or ricky or tomac mm -hmm. he has a, a much more fluid style um everyone says it's more of a european style and i haven't seen or heard anyone really compare him to christoph purcell and his ability to do kind of the same thing i wish there was more footage of it but i wanted to get dv's take on uh purcell's riding style and how his philosophy was on attacking a track and how he can do the same thing jet was pulling a really fast lap late in qualifying or practice and uh, setting fast lap times all the time. Um, I, get, I get your point. I get your point. It's tough for me to um, to compare two guys that um, actually not at the same level, right? Uh, I don't think Paul Stiver uh, – did he top five a Supercross 450 before? Uh, no. I don't think so, no. right? Like, so uh, Paul Stiver was a 250 guy. And – what you have to understand is, I think uh, Christoph knew his lack of fitness, kind of, and he rode in a way to uh, waste the least amount of energy. And his lines were like always trying the smooth line. Um, it was amazing, uh, like uh, creativity, mm -hmm. and but he was not uh, reactive as and as um, Jet because Jet doesn't care about getting tired or something he does what's right at that particular moment right you see outdoors like he's on his leg he doesn't sit down to rest his legs uh he does the stuff that you're supposed to do all the time so and i say that because i think for him it's he, when he rides it's almost a game that he he races the track so the track is his uh, enemy um and he wants to um, and and for me, the track always tried to make you crash or make you uh, mess up, you know, because yeah. it evolves, it's ruts and stuff. So, uh, and I said, the track is not your friend, you know, yeah. it's it's your enemy. So you are, you have to be very focused. Um, and then there's guys like Purcell, like oh, Wyndham and Purcell for me closer. Mm -hmm. Wyndham would come in super tight in the turns, miss breaking bumps because he was kind of like almost. Um, you don't want to get tired, yeah. right? It's more like saving energy type of lines. But Jet takes the fast line where it's rough and plays with the bumps. You know, go mm -hmm. to Millville or something. 
it's for him uh, down here is the rhythm section. He goes he really jump three, you know, mm -hmm. but he's always on the right spot, like open his turn so he can keep his momentum in the rut rather than missing the bob and then getting, you know, super tight on the inside. Kind of like a, a wind dam, a web. Uh, Coop does that a lot, mm -hmm. coming inside yeah. very tight. Um, so I understand like what the point you're kind of making, but that's my point of view, yeah. kind of. All right. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate yep, it. Yep. No problem, guys. Thanks. Uh, Jake's on four. What's up, Jake? Hey, how's it going? Good. What's your question? Good. Yeah, I was at Birmingham last week, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously the attendance was a little bit low. I was wondering if that was going to affect its consideration to be back on the tour in the future. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a – I didn't hear plus positive or negatively about it coming back, you know, uh, for next year. It did strike me like – we didn't go to Atlanta, and we went to Birmingham, and the attendance wasn't great, and a smaller stadium and all that, and the pits weren't great. So it's a, it was an odd choice for me after being there, but I don't know whether it's coming back or not. I have no idea. But uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I know. It know. ended up being pretty damn cold there that night, and uh, there was a GNCC in Georgia, so that probably yeah. took away some of the fans. Yeah, maybe. But, uh, you know, there's they're, they can track the ticket sales. They can track the weather. You know, that's all stuff they think about, right, for, for future. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate what? it. Yeah. Hmm? What? Um, I have a Burner Twitter account. Oh, okay. I don't I don't uh, roast okay. anybody. Yeah. It just I follow the news, okay. kind of. Is it Cobra? No, it's or? not. Okay. It's, right. it's nothing. Uh, and I follow you. Mm -hmm. I follow, Thank like, you. 10 people maybe. Yep. Uh, and you had a feud with somebody that from Atlanta didn't want to drive to yeah. Birmingham. Yeah. How far is that? Two hours. So they say, I'm going to Atlanta, but screw it. I'm not going to Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. So maybe that guy had a point. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. The the Feld guys are thinking people would do the drive, but I mean, I would drive two hours for a supercross race. So what I was the – so what's the – you can't get and into then, Atlanta, uh, the Georgia Dome or the uh, No, yeah, the dome? Mercedes Dome I think is out, but we Speedway, right? They got the Speedway there. Um, then it turned then, then like everything Twitter it turned into a big argument about Georgians don't want to support people in Alabama that's dumb yeah 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 I, I, got, I got out of it after that yeah uh, so, but, but um, um, it looked like the pits were inside kind of yeah, like a two, Seattle stuff yeah and it was two layers of pits it was it separated the, 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 the monster teams were in one pit and then the other all the other teams were in another pit okay so uh, it looked nice though better than a, a speedway track right I don't know. I mean, speedway tracks, I like them. I think they're a nice change of pace. I, w I wouldn't want all speedway tracks, but I like some speedway tracks. I all think right. they're kind of neat. Uh, Randy's on three. What's up, Randy? Hey, yeah, I got. A, I kind of got a rant. Race you know, Tech rant. All right, let's do this. Pretty, pretty much. Okay. Hey, um, Fuck you, you're fired. I, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a drop. So, that's uh, not me. You should. You I guys shouldn't use drop when I'm online. Use my drop when I'm not here. Okay. You know what I understand? Noted. Noted, yeah. Mark. Stop that. Yeah, sure. So yeah, they don't know shit. I'm worried. I'm an. I'm an old guy. Fifty-five yep. years old. Been a fan of the sport since I was eight years old. Yep. I'm worried that we're losing it. Um, it just seems like we're going through a wussification of of everything with trying to keep the riders safe for this three-round playoff and taking out the whoops because it might rain. I, I don't know. The semi, you know, we lost the semis. As a fan, I, I, I'm. It's like I don't want to lose my favorite sport. You know, Why are you gonna lose <laughs> it? Why are you gonna lose it? With well, ent I, entries it, are it, entries are way up. They gotta cap the entries every single week. Good riders can't get in because they don't enter soon enough. Like yeah, good privateers, the, the entries are. The, and attendance has been great. Like outside of Birmingham, it, attendance has a, been it's great. Race, the racing fact of it. The I get it. I get it. And yeah. I think a lot of these kids don't know, haven't seen what it, what I've seen growing up, and they don't know the difference really. Like I say, never before have I seen them take out the whoops because it was going to rain. You know, you can go back to mid nineties in Dallas. Yeah, but dude, that was a mud but fest yeah, but dude, Doug Henry won. Yeah, he did. But look at the yeah, whoops exactly. in, in San Francisco. The whoops were. Muddy as shit, and they sucked, and everyone was yeah. crashing, and they took them out. It, like, it, for the, for they're the, the best guys in the world, though. That, that's it. That's yeah, it. but they it look tells, like they look like it, me. It, yeah, it, it, they look like me at the, when the whoops when it's it muddy. It tells you something. Like um, muddy whoops are like stupid. It's it's not good for TV. I think that was a good idea. Idea. It didn't work it this didn't weekend work, right. because it was dry. And I can see both hands because when you're a fan like you, um, love the sport, you got to see both sides. Uh, me as a writer, 
I hated some ice. When they say, oh, we get rid of some ice, so we don't have to kill ourselves to get top four in the heat race to go straight to the to the main event. Uh, uh, if not, we have to race another like six minute or s six laps race uh, in a semi to take top five or yeah. whatever. When they came up yeah. with the heat race only top nine, I was mm -hmm. like, dude, that's the best thing ever. But now as a fan, mm -hmm. I'm on my in my couch. We're missing some races yeah the, you know the, 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 intensity, not, the intensity from six seven eighth and its positions is the, not there there's there's um we need two more races in the night we need it's good yeah. when the future is out there it's kind of cool but you know they don't know what they're doing and they you know almost yeah. die every <laughs> rhythm sections so um the semis as a fan i would have loved them um plus you, you have like second tier guys they're racing for a win it's yeah, it's something. a semi win, yeah. but it's still a, a win, right? I got a lot of semi. So I see both hands, but um, for for riders, I'm telling you wh what they do right now. Um, the only thing I don't like is the whoops thing, and the track tame. Yeah, but the rest, from a, a rider's perspective, way better. For a fan, and I, I, I get your point, but you cannot please both sides. Yeah. It's like yeah. you know, you cannot please anywhere. I, I'm I'm. I get it, Randy. I, I'm I'm open to change. So let's see how this goes. Let's see what this yeah. does, you know, and, and we'll go from there. Um, right. You, you you touched on a lot of it with with Cooper there, um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 uh, watching the race this weekend, I was I was a little disappointed. Let's put it that way. I I was hoping again, you know, yeah. I, like on the back of the semis, it, it sucks to lose those. Um, like David says, I, okay. I, I taught, you know, Bailey at one point said that, you know, the guys that got to go out and win those semis, they were learning how to lead, win races. And yeah. that was yeah. to elevate them. I, I, and, I'm, I'm always so. wary, uh, Randy, of being the guy that wants to say everything was better back in the day. Yeah. I, 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 some things were, but, you know, as we get older, we start thinking that, you know, it was better back in the day and blah, blah, blah. I try to keep an open mind. Not always. I mean, my listeners can probably laugh at this, but I try to keep an open mind to embrace some stuff and see how it goes and, you know, and go forward from there. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, the, the sport's healthy, man. We got Triumph, Ducati. I, salaries I are that. up. Salaries are up. Attendance seems great. Um, you my know, salaries are up. DV's, DV's I, I like, investment on this market is going great. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Joe, for that. Um, Bidenomics? Like, yeah, Bidenomics. Bidenomics, baby. <laughs> well, you know what it is. Oh, now we're going to get canceled <laughs> on the show. Yeah. Uh, but, no, thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. We got um, – He has a point, though, but writers has a point, too. You know, yeah, I think, yeah, like, I writers mean, love top nine, good and main. Yeah, and two yeah races. absolutely. But as a fan, we're missing – yeah, I'm missing like, two races somewhere. Honestly, with 20 minute mains, and we couldn't have semis. The tracks are so fucking hammered. They have they don't we have we enough did, dirt. We did back then. I know, but these four strokes, dude. It's, I don't, the four strokes, dude. You don't remember Seattle? Uh, oh, you don't remember like Indy? You're you don't? pointing out the extremes, DV. What you talked about earlier. You're pointing out the extremes. It's just it. generally speaking. Just Generally. let them suffer, for God's sake. Okay. The sure. Riders Thank don't change tires anymore. They don't put gas in the uh, gas tank. Uh, they don't put a bike in the truck. Uh, okay. They race Daytona only 20 minutes or, uh, instead of 30. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's me being like, oh, it was better before, yeah. right? But they got to suffer eventually, right? They we, We're going to a point where... We're getting to divas kind of level a little bit. What level? Divas. Divas, got it. Yep. Divas level. Yep. Yeah, got it. Uh, all right. John's a big DV fan, and he has track suggestions. Go ahead, John. Hey, guys. You there? Yeah. You're a big DV fan? Like, what, what stands out for you for DV? Oh, I was I was telling him. I, I Back in the day when DV was racing, I wasn't the hugest fan no, of his. Yeah. I, was, I was a Yamaha guy. Yeah, but, nobody, nobody man, liked the French guy beating McGrath. I mean, let's face it. No one wanted to right. see that. A few times. I had so, a few times. I, uh, but he, man, knocked, he, knocked, after, he knocked Ricky down getting, at Indy. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. After getting into Gnome through the years on your show and uh, you know, all this other stuff, man, I've grown to really love the guy as a character in the sport. I love the way that he's no bullshit and uh, tells it how, he, how it is. He's not put to put his opinion out there. So sure, sure. And that's very cool. And then uh, another th observation with the track designs. Mm -hmm. 
there's only like so many square foot in these stadiums, but lots of cubic space. So really high ceilings in these domes. So if we can make these obstacles steeper, more like uh, like new BMX bike jumps, where these guys are getting more altitude and slowing down compared to like Evil Knievel going 100 yards. Um, like the, uh, the overrunner tunnel, when they use it like as a step up, and they're like trying to scrub it, but they're getting some floating time in the air. Mm-hmm. I think some obstacles like that would really help slow down. Mm-hmm. One of the, the biggest, track, one, of the biggest costs, one, the dirt. one of the biggest costs for Feld is dirt. And dirt. they, they I could use I knew more that was dirt. gonna be the Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt yeah, I knew that was gonna be the, the thing. These tracks but. get down to the concrete or the plywood. Um, you know, the bikes are faster, more torquier than ever. Uh, we see lots of pavement left on the tracks. They could use more dirt at every every round, build taller obstacles. Remember D V the old Houston tabletop Elevator. every single year yeah, 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 right. yeah. like th- go build that but that's you know how much dirt that is right um yeah i knew that yeah. was going to be the answer to why i just i just think that's yeah. i mean really the only way you're going to get these guys to slow i'm mean, not a fan of the walls you know i don't like that to slow the guys down but if they had some jumps that were a little steeper like mm-hmm. even tabletops you know yeah. something like that where they just getting more hang time i you think know, it, the of, jumps the jumps been they've been the same thing for the last 30 years or like not 30, three, but 25 three years. Three-footers, five-footers. The three-footer, right. the five-footer. The the gap in between, the yeah. distance is 24 feet. Yeah. You know, it's... Triples are 67 feet. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, 68 yeah. feet or whatever. So it's always the same. What change is just track prep. They used to have uh, uh, no bobcat. So in in a ni- um, when I got here, late 90s, early 2000, everything was in a dozer or loader, mm-hmm. right? So right. basically, rhythm section were... Those are tracks. Horrible. Like, first practice was like, uh, you couldn't ride it. Mm-hmm. Or you had to be careful because it was uh, clumps and, yeah. and a bunch of stuff. Now, it's, and it, it was very, they didn't work on transition because they didn't have the equipment to have nice transition. Uh, because they were doing it with the dozer and then the loader was doing the wolves or whatever, or backwards. Uh, but now, with all the bobcat and the tracks, uh, they can make everything like smooth. So, so the thing is, basically, the, the, it's the same uh, length and obstacles, really. But it's just the face of the jumps and the landing that rounder, flatter. So you go forward mm-hmm. instead of, of going high. And then it's the right. speed. And the thing is, when you case coming from high, so you land hard, the bike stops. But when you case coming from low and low, fast, yeah. you uh, go over the bars. Kicked over the bars. You get right? kicked yeah. and you get kicked, and but you get to the next jump when you're being kicked, yeah. rather than getting stuck on on the, on the jump. Yep. You get kicked, and then you you take off from the next jump with uh, only your front wheel, just like a Thrasher in Glendale. Yeah. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Faulkner. Faulkner. Yeah. So that's why we, it's. Uh, we need to go higher or slower. That's more dirt. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, but what you can still do it yeah. like that. No, you're right. Like you're right. it's just transition. What about bringing in some stupid like shipping containers or something like that. I mean, I don't. I'm not saying the old semi truck flatbed. Oh, from back flatbeds in, the day, like in Canada. We used to do that in Canada. We had flatbed trailers. <laughs> That's what they do right. in tabletops. In France, they do like you know those big uh, a bales. Yeah. Like uh, super. Yeah. What, the, yeah. They stuck that stuff yeah, up. Yeah. 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 Uh, thanks for the call, man. We got JT on the line. Hey, one more, one more thing. Yeah. What okay. happened to your workbench at the Yamaha shop? What do you mean? Fucking Yamaha building, done. It gone. is. What? It demolished it. The Cypress building? Yeah, I just drove by it today. Holy shit! Wow. Yeah. On Catella. Oh, one more thing. Six I grew five up five five. Three from McCarthy on Garfield. Oh, you did? Okay. In the cul-de-sac, so I'm obviously a long-time Yamaha guy. In uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or- Orange of Catella? In Orange? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I never he, went to Keith's I remember house. when I remember when Keith moved in using Hannah's box van. <laughs> yeah, Keith, is, I don't know all you think about him, but I think he's great. He's I, didn't, I was not a fan. I understand. Not a fan. But, but it's I know something <laughs> is, he really helped you, though. He polarized yeah. a lot of people. Is yeah. either you love him? Oh, yeah. hate him. I'm like, I, I love yeah. the guy. Uh, guys thanks, John. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you, guys. Hold Appreciate on. it. I, the Yamaha's gone? I don't the know. Cypress? 655. 
Five? Catella Avenue. Catella Avenue. Cypress. Oh. I don't know. I forgot the zip code. Uh, a Cherubis is the world leader in accessory dirt bike plastics. Whether you're simply needing a new fender or you just want to personalize your bike, a Cherubis is there for you. Check out the latest styles and colors at acherubisusa.com. What, what are you doing? That's called a sponsor. That's how I got you here. Share the wealth. With, I am. With, I'm going to pay you tonight. a small po podcaster The last like time me. you came on, you refused to take any money outside of expenses. I tried to give you money for doing the show. You said, just pay me expenses. <laughs> That's what you said. Oh, 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 I okay. to do something today. Oh. Fly Racing, Fly Racing USA, 25 years of fly. David Villeman wants a fly factory rider back in the day. And, uh, One yeah. of the OGs with JT. Yep. What's up, JT? How are you? Not too much. It's come a long way since then. Uh, who, was, who was the previous caller? Was it just a caller? Just call a caller, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, had, he had a lot of, I got one more thing. Yeah, I yeah. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know if it was somebody you knew. I was like, what is happening? He had a lot but, more, one more thing. I'm just shook. I, I'm yeah. shook that Yamaha headquarters are demolished. I'm shook already. Yeah, yeah I yeah. know. Maybe they're going to build something else. I don't know. Yeah. I never heard of it. Okay. Uh, welcome, JT. Appreciate it. Um, look, we got to – we might as well just start with this. Let's just start with this because I was going to bring it up anyways at some point. What's up, Kane? How are you? Hey, man. How are you? Hey, Good. Steve. And What's hey, up? David. Right. Uh, I was calling. I just wanted to see what your guys' take was on Deegan's behavior, behavior at uh, Birmingham there. Yeah. I've always kind of been a Deegan fan and – Always heard everybody kind of talk smack on the Deegans, you know, for being brats and whatnot. And it wasn't until Birmingham I was like, whoa. Yeah, it was a rough weekend for Deeks. Let's face it. Uh, it's a learning weekend, we hope, right? Um, you know, so uh, thanks for the call, Kane. I'll talk to DV and JT about it, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's let's right. start. I just okay. want to yep. say good job to JT on TV. Okay, he's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, very, you, sure. great. Um, I wish you had more, like, uh, thought into it. Right. I, oh, I thought you were gonna say height. Me no, too. no, more part, like more like uh, input, right? More lines, more talking. You know, like, he was on race day I'm live. Trying. He's on race day live. Yeah, it's, it's I, you know, I wish you could. Like, it's good. You know, I, I really like uh, what you say compared to some other guys. Like, oh boy, I'm like, uh, I can't do it. Okay, I got a report that yeah. Yamaha headquarters are not demolished. So John is lying <laughs> to us. Yeah, I don't know. I just got a text that it's not demolished. Yeah. Right. Um. Oh, well. Okay. All right. Deegs. Deegs. Can we start with that nickname? Okay, Deegan. Hayden, Deegan. Hayden. Yeah. What's your take on all of that, DV? I'm starting? Yeah. I thought I was going to finish. Okay, JT, what's your take on all of that? <laughs> uh, I think that he, you know, I was a hothead like this too, so I have to be careful. DV knows all too well. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I think he's. Probably still mad about Detroit a little bit uh, from the first turn crash, right? Like, Hammaker mm -hmm. kind of started that. Well, he did start it. I don't think he meant to. So, I think in the back of his mind, he's looking at it going, okay, so I got taken out in a first turn crash in the main event in Detroit from Hammaker getting out of control. That cost me a lot of points. And then now, on the easiest track of the year, that's going to be really difficult to pass on. Now, I got to go to the LCQ in his mind because Haymaker did such and such to me. Now, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily a fair way to look at it. Right. But I think that's where Deegan's mindset was coming off the racetrack and going over there and asking him the what for. Um, he's going to get older. He's going to get more mature. Mm -hmm. I would bet and hope that, you know, his father and other people are like, hey, I got it. You're angry, but there's nothing to be gained from that. We just got to go execute the LCQ in the main event and whatever. But to think that he's going to handle these situations like a 30-year-old when he's 18 is probably not the right path either. Like, we're, we have to just know that he's not going to get things right sometimes, you know. And I can't put myself in his shoes because you look at the life he's led, the microscope he's been under. That's a very different existence than anything I ever dealt with. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I would also bet that if he looked at the tape, he would probably be like, yeah, man, that sucks. You know, oh. I think he just thought that Hamaker went super deep and blasted him out of the way, and they both went into the wall. You know, I think that's what he thought happened. That's not what I believe happened. So that's kind uh, of what thousand I bucks. Down on it. Thousand buck fine announced today by the AMA for what going was over that for? I, no, the pit specifically. The pit. The pit alter. But like, are you not allowed to yell at anybody? Because I oh. yelled at people all the time. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, the pit. Going over the pit was what it was for. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I'm gonna ask. I, I I would like to ask Mike Pelletier, right. like. What rule did you break? Because there is well, there is freedom of speech. Like you're allowed to yell at people. You're allowed to voice your displeasure. I didn't hear him mf anybody. I didn't see him throw anything. 
Mm-hmm. So to me, like, I don't really, unless I'm missing something, maybe there's a, a clause in the, in the AMA rule book that I don't know about. The, I, no, so there is. The surface, I'm not a big fan. They have instituted a code of conduct. It, it yeah, goes you into. Sh- you shouldn't go to somebody else. Some I think. Uh, they, no, I the, the, the like, flipping off, JT. Find a thousand dollars. The flipping off is now a fine. But, you but, know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Just, well, that's a lewd gesture. I get that. Okay, like, okay. That's on okay. T- on television. I, I get yeah, yeah. that part. Okay. Yeah, but I have a, a few problems with with this stuff. But c- couldn't the mechanics say, "Hey, don't go to the truck or the dad or." Somebody said, "Don't." Agreed. Yeah, but it's, agreed. It's, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea that I did it either. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just don't know that I agree that it should be a thousand dollar fine. Like I don't think well, that. Who cares? For, it's it's right. nothing. Yeah. They, they do something, you know. But that, for me, it's more like uh, the the overall thing. So, uh, he crashed in Detroit. Okay. It's, yeah. Uh, it, it sucks to start the series like this. I understand. But two or three races later. Everybody is tied in point, the first six guys anyway. Yeah. So Detroit is not really a uh, f- uh, big issue anymore after mm-hmm. two or three races. Um, in Detroit crash, he thinks Tom Viao, uh, you yeah. know, striked everybody. Then he must found He's, out Hammaker did it. Yeah, <laughs> he spent two or three laps, or two laps, I think, yeah. going through uh, by Tom Viao that was like uh, on the ground yeah. or next to his bike, flipping him off, losing time. Yep, yep. You Too know. Much. Uh, he goes uh, out of his way to to do this kind of stuff where you focus, you're a racer, right? You're not an entertainer right now. You're a racer. You need to uh, uh, win, score points, championship. That's right. what you pay to do, right? So all this stuff affects your result. You crash on the start. Instead of uh, still thinking about this shit, just get the most points you can yeah. because they're going to try to get in the heat. Yes. Try to get up and get in the top nine. Same yeah. thing. But here... But the bikes it, were locked together. Yeah, but so. I'm talking about Detroit. Okay. Oh, Detroit. Got, Detroit. It. Got, yes. it. Yep. got it. Yes. So now he, he figures that Hammaker was the guy that dropped the ball in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And he has a grudge on him because Detroit happened. Who cares about Detroit? Two races later, everybody's tied in points. It did not affect anything in the championship. You did not lose the championship in Detroit. You could have... You could have, if Faulkner went one, 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 the first three races, mm-hmm. you miss a race, yeah, you screwed. But now Faulkner is not there. Everybody in points, right there, and you still all the grudge about Hamaker. You think he did that on purpose? He went out of control. Like shit happened. It's a short start, yeah, yeah. a ninety degree left, and then um, you say he's gonna grow up, but and this and that. But this is all about education, right? Yeah, uh, it's I all. Think, I, I think you're right. It's I all about education. He, he, he needs to learn from these things. They, That's all. He's it, it, showing us he's really young and not handling things correctly. No, but history speaks for itself. Well, look, last summer, yeah. last summer there was a lot of shit going on with Hunter. Uh, he was riding by the pit. You know, he was yes, revving the bike. History. Like, yeah, we lo- We should There's, learn from history. We had the same kid. Uh, I don't know, maybe ten years ago. I don't know what year. It was Bosha. Bosha right. rode exactly the same. Uh, go and try to stuff guys yeah. and make them uh, break or yeah. just ride very yeah. arrogant with uh, b- being condescending. Like he was the only guy on the track. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Barsha you know, did do that. You're right. The, what happened? Barsha is 30 plus years old. Same shit. <laughs> he rides exactly the same way. So people don't change. They, this gonna, we're going to get digging for tw- 10, 12 years. He's going to be the same guy. You know, okay. most likely he's going to stay like that. And then that's it. But that's all about education. The way they did it in amateur, the day they did, right. you know. Oh, there's a lot of stories about the amateur stories, stuff. Yeah, they're not going to change, you right. know. And then you have yeah. the doubt of your hopeful that he will. <laughs> and the <laughs> I understand you know, your point. I, Brian I is kind of like, point. yeah. yeah. Brian so is kind of like, a, it, I'll put him in the, in the rhino category. Kind of like, uh, kind of like different. Yeah. Right. Uh, he, I don't think... And, and that's their, you know, bread and butter, I think, almost. They need the, it's kind of like mm-hmm. uh, the Eminem song, the Without You. <laughs> little controversy um, you can do without did, me or whatever. Did either one of you have a problem with the pass on Shock? Because I really didn't. I understand Shock getting pissed. Now he broke his collarbone, rebroke it. He's going in for surgery. Shock owes him one. I'm down with that. I've super crossed no, the contact no, score. It's, but it shouldn't. Wait, what? You don't, you don't retaliate. No, but okay, um, you don't have to. But I'm just saying, if Shock wants to tee him up, yeah, I get but, it. But that's I get that, it. That would be dumb. 
Okay, so you had no problem with that pass. No. I didn't really. I have a problem oh, okay. when you all the way left yes. on the, and then there's no way that's the racing line or anything, and you wide open where you should when you should be on the on the break. So that was a straight hit. It wasn't going to a block pass. That was the intent behind it. If you rode dirt bikes at a minimum of a level, I, I was a Canadian pro. This is basically. Yes. Uh, Shock was a target yeah. to knock but him he down. Didn't, he didn't T-bone him. It, no, but so it was to me, if to you go inside, yeah, 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 yeah. But you yeah. gotta, we gotta stop with the T-bone, the angle, the this or that. Okay. Like the way he did it, when you should, put, you're supposed to be on the brakes to take that, to make a left, to, to make a left on that little inside rut. Aiden is like this, wide open, wide open. So the intent is to go and hit him, knock him out of the way. I'm fine with to, that. To get, yes, but I don't like the intent okay. of it. Okay. It was weird. Like I, I actually agreed with uh, Cody's point that like Hayden had the inside. Like it was over. You know, like I don't know why he decided to make that much contact because he had he had me. Like, oh, where did you see this in Cody? Where Where did you see this in Cody? I I didn't see uh, this. Interview. Oh, okay. He said that in his interview. Okay. Yeah. So and then uh, I don't know if it was. Social media aware, but yeah, I did yeah. say it. He's like, I, I couldn't understand why he decided to make such hard contact when he already when he had, had the inside. Made. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to do a parallel with Jed Lawrence. Okay. On this, uh, look at when Jed passes Anderson and Malcolm in the same turn. Right. Okay. You put like Boscher or Aiden Deegan here. He's gonna go straight. He's gonna push uh, Anderson mm -hmm. to make him break and go. Look, go back to the footage. What does Jed do? He turns as fast as he can. He doesn't even worry about who's on the outside. Go back to Daytona when he passes uh, Tomac after that long run yeah. section, that tunnel jump. He yep. goes in. Here you can put like you put like dirtier, uh, I say dirtier, but more aggressive guys. Yeah. They're gonna go and and put you high. Anderson would do that to you. Yeah. Bosha would do that to you. Aiden Deegan would do yeah, that. But to that's you. phenomenal. But I mean, it's not about, about being phenomenal. Uh, it's it's, but it's the efficient, right? It's it, like I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, why, waste, well, why waste the time? That, it's a, that is of course it, ideal. You, everyone would love to do that. It's a philosophy. <laughs> okay. It's a philosophy yeah, it's of. A, it's a different. It's a different like frame of mind, right, about the path. Like, yeah. I have the path made, now I have to go as fast as possible, the lowest lap time Exactly. Possible. So one is thinking about going as fast as he can. Okay. The other guy is thinking of, uh, about making somebody else slow down, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the approach in there is, is wrong. They need to kind of turn it around. And, but, s you know, s I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so uh, Amy, uh, Mark's found the rule. A physical confrontation or a verbal attack on a credentialed participant, race official, promoter, staff, media, media, keep that in mind, uh, or, and or engaging in a fight. This is in the rule book, JT. This includes any person who attacks or is involved in a fight anywhere on the premises prior to, during, or after. Is that, like, that's, to me, it's so great. What is a verbal attack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying you know I mean? like, this is the code of conduct. They did what they did. <laughs> yeah, they did yeah. what they did, right? right? But I, I still am like, I don't know, man. There's, there's always going to be – Verbal confrontation. It's, it's well. Racist. Here's the thing, too. A lot of high emotion. There's privateers three weeks ago that went into another pit to yell at another privateer. I guarantee yeah. you, that's not a thousand. But nobody knows. They did nothing. Right. These no. guys were yelling at each other. Like yeah. people are yelling at each other when they pull off the track every single time. Yeah. Like yeah. every time. Yeah. So like, yeah. What was it because it was on TV? Yeah. Is that's it? More I, I don't. Like you it. know. I, right. It's fine. So they made their decision. I just, to me, it's like, so, eh. Like, but, but, don't you think that's a escalation of multiple things that was the last thing yeah, they need to put like a second time in yeah second yeah. time in multiple weeks or something well maybe we go back to detroit right Detroit, yeah. like yeah. you right. know um any problem with his move in the heat going moving down like that on seth like i i put it at 85 blame pie 85 deegan 15 seth that crash like deegan had a, a spot and he just swiped over and to me that was more on deegan than seth and he flipped out because of the reasons we just talked about what about that move, DV? Um, I, th I think um, if it was like half a bike length ahead, yeah. that would have been fine, kind of. Sure. Yeah. But he misjudged his placement compared well, to the guy on the inside. People brought up Freeze at A1, and I said, well, Freeze didn't fall. So it doesn't matter who well, falls Hayden, or not. Hayden wouldn't have either. Hayden wouldn't have either, to be fair. If the bikes didn't get locked together. Aiden didn't fall. He was standing. He was on his bike all the way to the wall. Well, yeah, he just couldn't but, get disconnected I mean, from the motorcycle. Okay, but 
point is, is he didn't have it. The bike got connected with another bike. So, <laughs> DB, what do you think about the fact that, you know, when I think when Bennett checked up, that was kind of Seth's cue, like maybe check up here, and Seth continued to push forward. I think there's a little bit, like I don't, I, I think it's maybe a little bit more than 15% because Bennett gave him a cue, and then Seth, like, finagled the way around and pushed deeper and then that got him into a world of trouble yeah but you know when you start from the outside um especially first turn what do you do it's kind of like you see the guys coming from the outside halfway through the starting line you you, you look left or you look right uh, more left because the first mm -hmm. turn is left so you're gonna look and see where you at um i thought like it looked like um Deegan Tully was kind of alone on the track, kind of like yeah. from uh, shorter distance between uh, being outside of the box to all the way to the inside uh, in the first turn, straight line. But the thing is, if he's outside of the box, there's 10 or 11, it's an e-race, so there's 10 guys on the inside. There's 10 mm -hmm. guys to beat. Um, so if you're alone, you're fine, but put a few guys in there and then somebody mess up. Uh, uh, you cannot go in the first turn thinking all the 10 guys going to uh, take make the right decision you know look at anderson in uh, the fake star you call it yeah uh, anderson just effed up yeah and uh, you know so you always have to take in consideration somebody might overshot the first turn yeah and that's something like i learned the other way my first ever supercross 96 anaheim uh it race i was on the outside kind of and I was spinning it, and I did not really uh, pay attention. Yep. I ended up on the concrete. Right. And that was the only time <laughs> that happened. I'm like, uh, I, f I got it. <laughs> so you know when you're outside, you're like an easy target to crash. That's yeah. kind of, you know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, listen, he's JT. He He's becoming must-watch TV here um, for wrong reasons and right reasons. He's a hell of a rider. He's got to win. But he's... And you guys at Fell, JT, you, you guys at Fell. Oh, 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 we, okay. Yeah, yes. you're you're really leaning into this. But for real, though, yeah, he's. Who decides who's on TV? JT. You got oh, to yeah, yeah. Gotta do better, track, JT. On the track. <laughs> yeah. No, and uh, since we're on Digging, like, other than, like, uh, other than the, um, the controversy, or, mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't think uh, he's as, as radical as a writer this year. Than he was kind of last year. Wrist maybe uh, wrist, the wrist injury. Wrist the yeah. butt or he hurt his butt in in uh, Daytona too when he landed. Oh when it, yeah uh, yeah like I heard. Right. But um, and then technique also he looked a little lost in the ruts. Um, even this look weekend. he qualified seventh this weekend he qualified something like that in the <laughs> Daytona uh, you know. So the the the, the level of the rider itself mm -hmm. like the pure level yeah. speed and technique. Uh, I haven't seen it this year. Let like, he won a race, obviously, yeah. like, we know why. Uh, uh, but remember, like, the that turn, the, the first race last year? Uh, was it Dallas Houston. or Houston? Houston. Yeah. Houston. It was insane yeah. in that right. right. Have, yeah. have you yeah. seen something here this no, year? You're right. No, you're right. We haven't seen yeah. anything. Yep. Like, right. we've seen, like, timing bad, okay, short, so long. JT I, wasn't having this at all today on a group text. Let me throw it at you, DV. Okay, JT was not having this. Is it possible we're, – we're a season and a half into Hayden's Supercross season, second season, right? Season and a half into his career, Supercross. He has one win. Great outdoors. Like Alessi, not, like not as much as Alessi, not as much. Is he – is Supercross and motocross skills, are they that drastically different? Not like Alessi, but like Alessi, if you know what I mean. Yeah. He's one win in the so season. So kind of like uh, Dylan Ferrandez. Sure. Dylan Ferrandez, Doug Henry. Uh, Doug Henry was another. Steve Lemson. Dylan was a Supercross champion. 250 Supercross champion. Yeah. Twice. 125. Right? Yeah. Twice? Yeah. 125. Uh, yeah. Twice? But like, twice. You can't yeah. use Michael Lessie and Dylan Ferrandez in the same competition. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, but uh, are we talking about like 450 stuff? Like, uh, I don't know. I'm, saying, just, I'm just talking as a rider. Vegan is Michael Lessie in Supercross. No, I did, there's no way. I didn't say that. But he's he thinking did. like no, he, I, there, I, there I, is I'm a, trying to use an example. Yeah, there's a difference between his yes. level in motocross and yes. supercross. Is, is, is Hayden, never mind Alessi. Is Hayden Deegan's supercross and motocross skills that much different? No. Okay. Because All what right. DV is saying <laughs> last year, 
the form and the raw speed he had was undeniable. Like he, he okay, he didn't have the full package yet. Understood. He's a rookie, all that. But I, I think it's the risk. Like I don't think he's as prepared as he was last year, and it's understandable. Okay. You have a broken navicular or whatever it was. I don't think you can be as prepared. But some of the things he was doing on tracks last year, like that, is not common. Like he has okay, yeah, a crazy he's... amount of talent. Right. And I wasn't a fan of like not a fan as a fanboy, but uh, I did not see the hype because I saw him ride Supercross the first few days he tried on 250F. Yeah, he was like hor- not very good. Not Bubba like like be, yeah. everybody was wow. comparing with Bubba, right? People were comparing so, him to Bubba. Yeah, people but like were? okay, uh, like to people that don't know YouTube people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Instagram. Or okay, but uh, and he improved a lot. Okay, so and, JT's and, not and JT, last year. JT's la- not having my argument. Okay, Are you having it or last not? year. Uh, last year he surprised me. Like yeah, Supercross and outdoors because I saw his progression yeah. was very very fast. Um, and I thought it was going to stay here, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. And did he, he change something this off season? He went to ride a tomac, and we we see him uh, ride more like tomac now, like less uh, body English, less moving on the bike, mm-hmm. more like strong. I think he got some weight on or like uh, muscles, or whatever. But it's very like uh, straight and strong on the bike kind of mm-hmm. but not very fluid like okay do you understand what yeah, i'm yeah, trying to sure, say sure. and i was wondering if that could be uh because he went to tomac and uh, you know tomac yeah. hammer yeah. you know like yeah, yeah. well the, the thing about jt and I, I get it the wrist injury but i mean he won a race so like to me the wrist is fine like he won yeah, a he's race. just not as polished though yeah like, he's not he's nowhere near as polished as i think he would have been otherwise and you know, i would you can't oh, yeah Okay. You can't take a ton of time off, come in, ride a couple times, go to Detroit, and think, like, I'm going to be the best I've ever been. Like, that's not – right. in my opinion, that's not how these things go. Not yeah. in my experience, anyway. The, there is something because – and I see it, too. It's, it's yeah, not as good as last year. It's good, right. It's, yeah. And then it should be way better than last year. Like, Tom Vial is way better than last year, yeah. right? Uh, they were both rookies last year, right? Yeah. Vial never raced Supercross. Same thing for Deegan. Right. Um, and it should – Okay, uh, so D- JT, the thinks techniques. JT thinks it's the wrist. Yeah, and yeah. That, and that's a good point. Yeah. I'm just like throwing stuff out there to see yeah. what. And and to, for the know. record, I'm not saying that his supercross skills are way behind his motocross. I was saying like, should we start thinking about that? I'm not saying it right now. It's too early to judge. But my point was, should we start thinking about this because he's got one win in a season and a half? You it's guys been four races and he's got a win already. That's how I look at it. Like last year, okay, he's up against Hunter. Hunter is, you know, I don't think that was really fair to think he was going to beat Hunter, you know, at, at Hunter's age and well, experience just, level. He had a race or two. He could have won a race or two. I agree with the title, but, you know, uh, uh, so that's all. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I think he's fine. Sure. I think we need to give him some time. But I, when I watched Michael Lessie, Michael Lessie had fundamental flaws in Supercross. Like he wanted to run a super soft front end, and he didn't want to hit the whoops the same as the other guys, partially because of the way he set his front end up. Like there, that was just never going to work. It was never going to work to allow him to be an elite 450 Supercross guy. You know, he's a great racer. We all know that. Yeah. But I'm saying to match his outdoor skills, he had flaws that were, he was never going to be able to overcome. I don't see that with Deegan. I just think it's, you know, he's yeah. got to okay. put it all together. Like, he has the ability. So, uh, Fly Racing, flyracing.com. We've got the X-Brand Goggle tariffs coming up. We do have some phone calls as well. Uh, Evan said he hasn't heard us mention Deegan pushing Hammaker's bike down on the start. After the first turn, I mean, oh, I mean, yeah, he was mad, so uh, yeah. he threw the bike down, like whatever. Um, but his judgment, like, yeah. often is not and the right way. Don't to you do feel it. like with Brian and Hayden, they're gonna push back and keep doing what they're doing? I don't know if they learn. I think they're like, yeah, watch this, watch this. Like we're gonna do it our way. I feel like. Oh, not, I, know, was, I was going to th- You know, Jet, Jet got booed. Jet came out. He's a little more humble. He said some things differently. Like he acted a little differently after, you know, the controversy with him. I don't think Hayden and Brian will do that. It's just – it's going to be YOLO this weekend again. Yeah, and, and, and that you know? tells you why yeah, okay. I'm telling you sure. that uh, that's not going to improve. Right. Because right. knowing them, the, 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 the kind of – 
people there are, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to say, oh, we screwed up. <laughs> right, and, right. And yeah. We're going to, you know, not make any sound for I think they races. lean into it. Yeah, they're going to do <laughs> the opposite, right? Well, JT will be there because he determines the, the Like TV a Bradshaw. Footage. Bradshaw right. Machesevic. It's the same thing. Yeah. Right? Yep. Bradshaw, like, tried to uh, Chibo Machesevic in 92 w- w- in yeah, well, just, be- just because. Just because. Right. Why is leading the championship? Sure. So dumb. Okay. I love. He's uh, my favorite writer, yeah. but that was stupid, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, John's on three. John, you got a question for JT? Well, um, yeah, I guess I got a question as well. First off, I just want to say, uh, awesome job. He really, really adds to the broadcast, and I think uh, he needs more airtime, to be honest. Oh, okay, well, that, that's show. what TV said, yeah. Um, Thanks, man. Well, and I know I know where to get this airtime from, and it's uh, someone else you work with who's always telling us who she's talking about and goes on and on far too long. You usually miss something key at that moment. Um, I know you probably work with her and everything is great, but does anybody else feel that's a little bit too much? You're talking about Will, um, right? Um, yeah, I, 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 I think Will does a good job. Yeah, but Ricky said do the same thing. Do they have to t- t- say like the the team name from start to finish oh. all the time? Yeah, oh, yeah, that drives me crazy too. And just it, it's kind of a two part rant. One one is they don't have to talk all the time as well, and that uh, is what I think Will is uh, guilty of. And the other one is when they can't pronounce the riders' names and. Obviously not so much lately because we have different guys in the box and it's much better, but it's a Plessinger, Plessinger, and uh, sometimes you hear Barsha as a Barsher, and then for God's sakes, we get a guy that ends it in a Yoder, and they call him Yoda. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Honestly, some of that stuff, name. John, some of that stuff, and I've done live announcing and I do these shows, it's sometimes t- you just screw up, man. Yeah, you just tough. You, you just tough. get it wrong. It's not on purpose, right? It's just you slip of the tongue yeah. or whatever. Like the... I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I, I make mistakes too. I'll I, give you an example. I was yeah. so pissed at myself talking about Hymas this weekend. I said he tore his ACL at High Point. He didn't tear his ACL at High Point. He tore his ACL the week after High Point, right? Like, yeah. and I was so angry at myself Hyman. for saying that. Yeah. No. Thank, thanks, John. No, I didn't do that. Thanks for the call. Thank this, you. This uh, one thing that uh, yeah. that Ricky says that I don't understand what he says all the time. It's giving him the elbow grease. I don't. I don't. <laughs> When when you push someone, I'm like elbow grease. It's like when you work on something and you have to make something shine, like an aluminum frame. Yeah, and you that's really elbow grease, right? But when you take out someone and then bump him out, you don't give him elbow grease. You don't give him. El- you understand? Yeah. Uh, he said that like every weekend, somebody has to tell him gently <laughs> or nicely. Oh, that's say, J- JT will do that. It's like Ricky, don't say that anymore. Like it doesn't make any sense. And English my second language. When I hear that, I'm like, eh, <laughs> bro, like, stop doing that. He's been doing that every weekend. All right, there you go, JT. That's your, that's your job. I will not be telling RC what to say and what not to say. Okay. I, I, oh, I maybe he's going to send him to the show. I understand. It's slang, right? It's slang. And <laughs> slang doesn't always translate to everyone. You know what I mean? Like, what a phrase means to me may not mean the same to me, to you, or Steve, or whatever. Yeah, but so, that's yeah, not even I, a, I uh, that's maybe not he even means a, sandpaper. Elbow, sandpaper, uh, maybe he... I don't know, but that's okay. not even like a MX slang. No, we have a bunch no. of slang, yeah. but that's yeah, not yeah. one of them. Okay. Nobody uses but it. But I guess uh, it could be in his vernacular, right, is what I'm saying. Like, that could be something he uses all the time, and it just doesn't translate to an audience that's not used to yeah. that phrasing. You yeah. know what I, mean? I, right. I understand what you're saying. Uh, fly Racing, flyracing.com. Please check it out. DV needs gear. JT, he went riding. He's been riding. He Just bought. Stop. He bought. Don't he, repeat JT, it. Don't he bought repeat. pants off eBay for twenty dollars. Don't Fox don't pants. Say that. And then he's got Fox boots from twenty sixteen. And they're fine. Yeah. You, that's what you you bought to go riding in. Yeah, I, I had the Fox Why? gear from uh, Kiefer uh, uh, photo shoot when I was supposed to get the cover and I didn't. Yeah, he said and he doesn't <laughs> want to talk to anybody for gear. He doesn't feel like. He's nah, good. but I don't. I don't want to. I'm sure I can ask like a few people and. Try. And then mommy said, "Oh, do you want some O'Neill gear?" And then the other guy says, "Hey, uh, I saw A Ray at A one yeah. or A two. Yeah. Says, oh, do you want some gear?'" I'm like, ah. I'm like, um, I don't like to ask. Like people. I know the stuff. They very busy. They don't have to, okay. you know, deal with right. shit like that. Okay. All right. Uh, X brand goggles. Choice of champions ever. It's time for the X brand goggle tear offs. Let's do this. It's the X brand tear off segment. Fifteen second rapid fire. Q&A. Rapid fire. X brand goggles. DV. Choice of champions. Kyle Chisholm, Shane McElrath, Freddie Noren. Tons of guys wearing X brand goggles out there. Any champions? Yes, tons of them. 
Thanks to the guys at X-Brand Goggles. The Lucid Goggles, fantastic. And uh, Pulp Show 24 is the code to save with X-Brand. If you don't wear X-Brand, you will not win. It's, it's, that's a pr- scientific fact. And uh, let's get into this. These questions are submitted by Corey Moser, DB. Yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, and uh, you have 30 seconds to answer. Is that only me? And JT. Ah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's do this. Steve. Yep. What's a stadium Supercross hasn't been to that you would like to see and not Vegas? Okay, I would say Vegas. Uh, let's go Winnipeg. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. What about Marseille? <laughs> yes, we okay, should. Yeah. You see that right. stadium? No. It's a piece of shit. It's insane. No, it's garbage. All right. <laughs> JT, what's something that's happening behind the scenes on the broadcast that would surprise the casual fan? Ooh, um, surprise them. I think there's a lot of times where we're trying – to like okay there's been a couple of great people dv being one of them that said hey we want to hear you talk more i i'm trying most of the time but there's so many things that have to happen and they're trying to cue up sound like when when those sound segments and, and video and things are coming like there's fr- frames of time in there where we can't talk we have to basically stay out of the coverage and that's like a, a big reason why we're not talking more is those things are being set up they're leading like they'll go to like the all and then they have this video of the all well the reason they went to them is to set that up then they're playing the video so like there will be a 90 second window where we can't talk or talk about the race at all because this thing has been set up to to run so yeah there's a lot of planning that goes on i I remember when i did some uh mxgp stuff for like a french tv Mm -hmm. um same thing like you talk and the guy in in your ear says uh, don't talk three, two, one. Don't talk. Right. And then you say, and then oh, you can talk again. Right. And so that's something we don't know, but yeah, that that was like super annoying. <laughs> All right. All right, DV. Who has the best chance of challenging Jet over the next couple of years? Ooh. Ah, that's a tough one. I will say Sexton, I guess. All right. Steve. Yep. List the people you couldn't have on the show tonight because you didn't want DV to yell at them. Well, any privateer, anybody with less than Stop. one Supercross title. No, I'm, I'm nice. Mer- no Myrtle, no yeah. Rutledge. JT probably is a little passable for DV. Um, yeah. No, JT's great. Okay. Well, but everybody's good. You're being too hard on DV. You're being too hard on DV. No, D- DV yelled at Myrtle. He yelled at Rutledge. He, he's very angry. Yeah, but, but I can voice my opinion, right? Yeah. JT you, said it. You, you can voice hey, your opinion. You can, yeah. right. but it can cost you a thousand bucks. So you got to be careful. Yeah. Are right, you going to find me? I'm going to find you tonight. If you yell <laughs> I'm at, not going to find you. If you yell Somebody at Lewis tonight, you. if you yell at Lewis, I'm going to find you a thousand bucks. I'm, I'm going to have to. Uh, I have to. Uh, to see what's going on. Okay. With him. I, right. I don't think I met him before. Uh, I don't okay. think so. But. All right. He's worried. He's worried you're going to yell at him. Yeah, he is. He's fine. Okay. He's thinking- Even if I yell at him, what's going to happen? Well, I don't know. Right? All right. Next question. JT, where do you stand on the pocket squares that Weege is attempting to wear? <laughs> uh, Weege is not all that fashion forward, but I will take <laughs> anything over Charlotte last year. Like, I was just <laughs> dying laughing at Charlotte last year. So uh, we've, we've taken giant strides since then. I want to... <laughs> Okay, send me the Charlotte stuff. I okay. want to see it. All right, we'll find it. All right, DV, your opinion on Hayden Deegan. Rapid oh. fire. Oh, boy. I've, we said it. We said it. Yeah, we, said, we talked about Moser. it for like a 20 minute. Moser doesn't. I just, I just yeah, read, you don't know because he was question. before right. the show, right? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. But I think he's great. Let me, ans- let me answer. Okay. Great. Big potential. I think everything older than the bike stuff needs to change. Like the approach of racing, the focus on scoring points, and stop wanting to, you know, make somebody crash mm-hmm. or slow down. Just do your race and g- go forward. Yeah. You know, Barsha, you were talking about Barsha, that rookie year or second year. Kehoe pulled him in it was and horrible. was like, hey, man, you, these, all these dudes hate you. You're not going to win a title if these dudes hate you because somebody's just going to take you out, <laughs> you know, like – you can't ride like this. You remember on like Ke- on a yeah, on a yeah. Geico? That right. was like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then but I didn't, Aiden is going that way, mm. which is not good. Steve. Yep. Which rider did D V help the most as a riding coach? Oh well, I mean ki- well he got A Ray to stop seat bouncing. That was pretty good <laughs> for a little while. Yeah, but you have to have legs to do that. Yeah. Uh so obviously Dylan. Dylan won uh 
Two championships? Four? Were you with him for the 2 d stuff too? I was with him since the beginning, yeah. No, the, the very first two? Okay, no. all right. Four championships. Every year, but the first year. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which the first year he was also, in, people were very angry with him as well out there. Yeah, he was <laughs> out of control. <laughs> yeah. So I had to calm him down. Yeah. So I went through a guy that was like kind of taking like Savacci out or something in mm -hmm. Toronto or something yeah. that happened. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't working with him, mm -hmm. but I told him like, we're not doing this. We're gonna, you know, be, be better, and then we're not gonna make we our need enemies. To need to do that, right. You know, yeah. we we'll make enemies because we beat them, yeah. not because we knock them down. Right. All right. So I had to go through to the process of being with a, a very aggressive yeah. guy. So Dylan, Dylan's the obvious answer, but A Ray, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, JT, Steve has stopped wearing a jacket and has stopped getting on Race Day Live. I haven't Live. stopped wearing a jacket. He hasn't Coincidence? stopped getting on Race Day Live. That's not true. <laughs> I haven't. I, I forgot the jacket this weekend. I will be bringing it to Indy. The open hey, star one? Cold yeah. as hell on Saturday night, though. You were, I bet you were wishing you had it. No, I had a hoodie, so I was fine. The hoodie was good. Oh, okay. No, it was an Alpine Star. The jacket uh, is yeah. Alpine Star jacket, and it's classy. Yeah. So I I don't listen to the re review pod or whatever, okay. but I listen to that one. Oh, yeah? I was over the jacket thing too. Too much jacket talk. Yeah, yeah too me much. Too, yeah, too much okay, jacket. Okay, all right. Fair, fair, fair yeah, point. Yeah, fair point. Jacket. I can't say. I think it was. Uh, yeah, we we got into it. We got deep into <laughs> it. Steve, you look nice. You look deep, nice. Deep, but deep. We, we're good. <laughs> deep, we're good now. Deep, like, it's deep. all good. Okay. Uh, all right. Last one, DV. Where did you learn to cook? Because your IG feed of meal <laughs> prep could be on OnlyFans. Yeah. Uh, somebody else could be on OnlyFans. Uh. Cooking my mom, you know, yeah. I cooked since I was a kid, you know, like, uh, you know, bake also, uh, uh, but learn with my mom. And then I did not really do it at one point. We, when you race, you don't have time to do this stuff. There was no meal prepping services like nowadays, 25, 20 years ago. Um, but I always love to cook. always love my mom cooking. Um, and I'm kind of doing like the same thing like she was gonna do, yeah, and yeah. then I do like some French juice. Do you, you know. ask her every now and then still? Like, no, hey, mom. just okay. seriously. Right. Like, um, my uh, you should uh, watch my uh, look at my YouTube history. Okay, it's all about like cooking recipe. <laughs> I did a flan you, last weekend. You know, uh, yeah. hey, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, okay. DD, if you ever get the time and the opportunity, Sebastian Tortelli can make a quiche that would it, it's absolutely mm -hmm. out of this world, yeah. So Sheesh, yeah. just keep that in the back of your mind. If you ever get the chance, why don't and he has the ingredients and the time to make you a quiche, you will not regret why it. Why don't yeah. we do a French uh, cooking test? Cook-off? Cook-off. Seb DV. I'm, I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> That'd be great. It'd be like... Uh, I'm here for it. So we're the same uh, generation. So yeah. we've known each other since 1988. So right. it's a long time. Um but yeah, quiche in my mom's my great quiche. Okay. Uh, Can you make a quiche? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's oh, actually sorry. it's actually like a, there for a, second, a JT. crust. It's an egg mixture mm -hmm. with uh, a, a cheese and bacon, uh, and that's it. There's nothing really to Did it. Did I ever tell you like the the setup of that quiche story, like how that came to be? Yeah, go ahead. So it was I was actually on a date, right? And Seb was by himself. Um, his wife at the time was out of the country. So I'm like, yeah, come over. Like, no problem. You can come. He was really bored. He had no friends in Florida. So I'm like, yeah, come hang out. So he's like, I'm going to cook for you two. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> so now I have Sebastian Tortelli, factory Honda, male model, coming over <laughs> in the middle of my date and now cooks this interplanetary quiche. So – this is the setup that I have to watch unfold. Yeah. And then Seb cooks, leaves, and then this girl that I was dating is just like goo goo gaga eyes at Steph, Sebastian Tortelli <laughs> that just cooked. I'm just like, I have no chance now. Like, my life is now ruined because of a quiche. This, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Fabio that just cooked a quiche at, the t at my house. Yeah, well, obviously, I mean, yeah, and he's probably dressed to the nines. The guy could dress no, like no other. It was Sebastian Tortelli. Yeah, he comes over. He's got a sweater, you know, wrapped around his neck, like he's yeah, scarf, like the whole nine yards. Yeah, he and loves he his scarf. Whips up this quiche, <laughs> you know, he's flipping over in flambe, and there's flames. And yeah, it's the whole thing. It was. Yeah, it's not not great for me. Uh, so what happened to the date? Great quiche, though. Um, well, we obviously didn't get married, so. Um, <laughs> 
yeah, things eventually yeah. went sideways. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, sounds good, JT. Thanks for calling this week. Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Check it out at your local dealer. And, uh, yeah, appreciate it, man. We'll see you at Indianapolis. Triple Steve, Crown Fever. Are you going to Indy? Oh, yeah, yeah we got to do a live show. Live yeah, show. what's your next race that you're going to skip that I can start harassing you about? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm booked up through Nash to, to Nashville right now, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. just the home show. Are you going to go to Philly? Yeah, I think I'll go to Philly. New venue, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll for sure get yelled at by some Eagles fans there, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to Philly. Uh, Denver's my race. Uh, Salt Lake City, of course, the finale. So, yeah, I, I may not miss another one all year. Is there any low-key privateer drama about your race yet? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm here for all that. Yeah, I love I love hearing about people arguing. Yeah, we're working on that race. Kate, so. Kate's going to be in it. No problem oh. this year, right? Like, he's got to be leading the damn thing. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know the points. Swizz didn't get it to me, but Kate's got to be in the mix. Yeah. Did, did you oh, announce? one more thing. Yeah. I want to be like that caller. One more thing. Yep. Uh, do we have an update on our fantasy points? Yeah, I, I haven't posted them. Uh, I will this week, though. I, I think I'm leading. Oh, really? I yeah. thought it would have been doing pretty well. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'll uh, – Swiss is working on them. I'll post them tomorrow. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, man. All right. See you guys. All right. Bullshit. All right. Fly racing, flyracing.com. All right. Commercial break. Then Jeremy McGrath's coming up. Then Lewis Phillips. LeBig is coming in. we got more Supercross talk. I want to get DV's take on Eli Tomac. And will he ever win again? Don't, don't, don't say it. Don't say it. I'm gonna make friends. Uh, you 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 bring me for for me to make friends. Uh, you, yes. You ask me uh, yeah. on. Stay very tuned. Tough DV will come in and tell us if yeah, you like Tomac will I'm ever hungry. win again. I love Tomac. Okay. Be right back after this, everybody. Wake up, Supercross. Eat Supercross. Shit, Supercross. <laughs> Fuck Supercross. <laughs> and sleep Supercross. <laughs> At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact they have many off-road hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions including industry leading, built to order, G3S custom shocks. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling, looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. history. Fast forward to 2024, and they are on their 35th year of producing high-quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. 
While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. Teams like HRC Honda, Star Racing Yamaha, HEP Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Barrick Suzuki, AJE Motorsports, Solitaire Yamaha, and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. Products like their Pro Launch Star device, radiator braces, skid plates, clutch perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the pro pits and amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at worksconnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA-made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or WiseCo.com to find products for your machine. It's time to elevate your life. At LiftedTrucksForSale.com, we put you in the driver's seat of your dream truck today. LiftedTrucksForSale.com is your one-stop shop for brand new custom trucks from every major manufacturer. Full factory warranty, available financing, and a hassle-free ownership experience. What are you waiting for? Visit LiftedTrucksForSale.com today. Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP racing engine mount kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the F&H MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machined parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium, they are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by fcpracing.com to learn more and order today. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. I'm Cooper Webb, and I choose OGO. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Darren Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane Mapparath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Talon Hawkins. Stargate Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Colt Nichols. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Diallo, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrandis, and I choose OGO. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com.
FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun. Building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle and then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. 
from the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you, from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. It's time to elevate your life. At LiftedTrucksForSale.com, we put you in the driver's seat of your dream truck today. LiftedTrucksForSale.com is your one-stop shop for brand new custom trucks from every major manufacturer. Full factory warranty, available financing, and a hassle-free ownership experience. What are you waiting for? Visit LiftedTrucksForSale.com today. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. history. Fast forward to 2024 and they are on their 35th year of producing high quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. 
Teams like HRC Honda, Star Racing Yamaha, HEP Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Barrick Suzuki, AJE Motorsports, Solitaire Yamaha, and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. Products like their Pro Launch Start Device, Radiator Braces, Skid Plates, Clutch Perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the pro pits and amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at worksconnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun. Building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Cooper Webb, and I choose OGF. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Jerry Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane McElrath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Town Hawkins. Stargate Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Colt Nichols, and I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Diallo, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrangi, and I choose OGO. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer, but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions, including industry-leading, built-to-order, G3S custom shops. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP racing engine mount kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the FNH MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machine parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium. They are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by FCPRacing.com to learn more and order today. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or wiseco.com to find products for your machine. 
From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride. Upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in a wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Welcome back, everybody. Pop Mech Show presented by motorsport.com. Fly Racing and Decal Works. Decal Works bring you David Villeman in studio here. Firepower as well. I want to thank the folks at Firepower Parts. Featherweight lithium batteries. Chains made in Japan. Uh, lots of stuff going on at firepowerparts.com. Please uh, check it out if you can and get your local dealer. These guys got great products, great prices, hard parts for across the board for a ton of bikes. Really appreciate that. And we got uh, Jeremy McGrath coming up here on the show. Ethica, Pulpamex 20 is the code to save. Talon, Marks, you guys are welcome. We got a care package today from the folks at Ethica just for you two. Thank so you. So just go ahead. And there's some stuff in there for tits, but just just he's not here. So yeah, we're probably going to take that. Just take it. Yep. yep. Thanks, boss. Uh, Ethica, uh, absolutely love the Ethica stuff. Do you wear anything Ethica, DV? No. Okay. Uh, Ethica is a leading lifestyle brand based in San Clemente, California. And uh, check out their undies, men's, women's, kids. Since the inception of the brand, Ethica and his team have been determined to live life, innovate, and work hard. Uh, Pulpa Max 20 is the code to save at Ethica. Thank you to those guys. Uh, the 7 o'clock hour brought to you by Renegade Race Fuels. Pulpa Max 24 is the code to save, so they, they ship direct now. Use the code to save SX2, MX2 Fuels. Uh, and you look at Justin Brayton winning championships with, with Renegade, Will Hahn back in the day as well. Racers who win, pour Renegade in. Pulpa Max 24, they're excited to be the race gas company to ship directly to your door. RenegadeRaceFuel.com, select the products you want, enter the Pulpamex24 code, and within a few days you'll have the world's best race fuel at your door. And they've got a wide variety of fuels as well. So please check out Renegade Race Fuels. For more information, they bring you the 7 o'clock hour on the show. Uh, we do have some phone calls here, but right before McGrath. Uh, let's go to Justin on two. Justin, you got a Sexton and ET question? What's up, man? Yeah, how you doing? Good, thanks for calling. All right, good, good, good. Hey, first I want to say uh, what's up to DV. Um, little quick memory: met him at Buzz Creek in 2000, and he—I uh, was like seven years old. He signed uh, some goggles for me. Um, so oh. just want to say that his yeah, goggles are like your goggles. Uh, you know what? I don't remember if it okay. was mine or his. No, okay. Actually, no, it was his. It was his. It was his. Yep. Some Oakleys. His goggles. Oakleys. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Back in the day. 
Yep, Team Yamaha. Uh, yep, back in the day. All right. Um, What's up, man? So, got a, uh, so this whole jet thing, right? Like amazing rider, things like that. I was listening to your show on Thursday, the Moto show that you have on Thursday mm-hmm. this past week, and um, I think there was some debate, and I think you guys talked about it this morning too when I was listening to it on the Racer X podcast. Um, the competition as far as Sexton, Tomac, things like that, I don't think those guys, I agree with you, Steve, are nearly as good as what, not nearly as good, but at the par they were from last year or the year before. Um, I think Tomac yeah. coming back from the injury is, uh, is, is, is taking some progress. Um, I don't know about the bike. Um, at times it looks good. At times it looks kind of funny. Um, as far as Sexton goes, um, he's getting past this year in certain uh, parts of the races where, and by guys, and I, last year I didn't see that. I think last year he was way faster. He was probably the fastest in the class. Mm-hmm. Um, and this year he's getting passed and uh, drop, getting dropped positions, things like that. So, yes, Jet's great, but I don't – I think his competition has – I don't want to say declined, but just yeah. not as good. Um, and also I will have a few um, – debate real quick i heard you guys last week too on the uh, thursday show mm-hmm. with zach though, and those guys talking about the skill with jet and Stu. i don't see it being really close at all i think stewart was way um head and shoulders better okay i mean we see you know in 125s i mean he was coming from last to first i mean and, and even yeah. the things he was doing on the 450 um in his prime um, i think one year in indy he came from last the first and, and ran Chad down and, and blew him out the water. I don't see Jet doing that. Um, if he yeah. gets a bad start, I don't see him winning. Now, granted, the competition is a little different. Yeah, you know, I think it's deeper. I think that I, th- I would I would come back to that with the competitions a little deeper than those days, but I get it. Okay. Yeah, because okay. even Ricky was on this show a few weeks ago, and Ricky was saying in his day he could start backwards. Uh, he didn't say yeah. that. I made a joke to him about, hey, you could start backwards and get third. And Ricky yeah. was like, yeah, yeah. I kind of knew. Ricky said, like, his worst night DV would be a third, you know, in his day, right? Um, where I, nowadays, I don't think Jet's getting a third. Yeah. No, no, I mean. Yeah. But yeah, if we, you look at can... it in a way mm-hmm. that Eli and Sexton are pretty close. Yeah, we don't see Sexton as radical as la- on the Honda mm-hmm. where he was, like, on pole mm-hmm. pretty much every race. Uh, so his speed is not there yet. Um, <clears throat> but seriously, um, and what makes you think that is how smooth and effortless Jet is yeah. by doing that, right? Uh, when you right. see him, uh, all the races he won, he, when he won, he was doing 80%. Mm-hmm. You haven't seen the last okay. 20 yet. And the thing is, <clears throat> what's where um, Jet has to improve is when he's 80% and start with no... Uh, mess in mm-hmm. the first few laps. 80% can win. He's 80%. Yeah. This weekend was 80%. Other weekend, like uh, uh, Detroit or whatever, 80%. Daytona, 80%. Mm-hmm. Daytona, what he did? He only jumped. He jumped everything and then super smooth. When he has to go through the pack, he, 80% not good enough anymore Yeah. because no, you're not managing yeah. a lead, right? right? So his last 20%, that's where he's very uncomfortable, where he's not used to it. He, when he charges, he goes slower. Uh, lose the rear, come up short, go long, mm-hmm. m- mistake here and there. Like uh, almost like he doesn't know how fast the bike is because the speed of opening the throttle when he's 80% is mm-hmm. very comfortable with. But when he wants to go over that because he has to catch up, he's not mm-hmm. used to that. Yeah. to that pace and then yep. riding style, that's where he started making a yep. mistake. But when when he's going to improve that 20%, mm-hmm. then it's going to be, like, uh, amazing. Yep. Uh, yeah. good, good call, man. Thank you for the call. Appreciate it. we got to run. we got McGrath on the line. So, But thank you for the call. Um, good points. Uh, no problem. All right, you guys have a good night. Thank, thank you. you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, Renthal, when you look at the factory Honda, you look at Monster Energy Kawasaki, you look at Red Bull KTM using Renthal products out there. The undisputed global leader in manufacturing design since 69. Renthal has become notorious for a relentless obsession of detail and quality through their commitment to produce the finest products on the market today. they got more titles than all the other brands combined. Uh, they got great sprockets, chains, bars, all of it going on at renthal.com. 
mountain bike stuff as well. I've got some stems and bars going on with Renthal. And, uh, yeah, Renthal is pleased and proud to bring you a guy who won a few races using Renthal products. He's the king, Jeremy McGrath. What's up, MC? How are you? I'm doing good. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good, good to be here. Yeah, good. thanks Thanks for calling. Are you still running 998? Is that still your Renthal? <laughs> I'm not that picky anymore. It might be that number. I don't know. I just throw <laughs> okay. whatever on there. All right. It doesn't matter. All right. Because, you're, you're, yeah, your bar back in the day was the infamous 99. Tell me this. It, I, it's definitely a rental, but tell me. I don't know the number because whatever they use on the stock bike is seemed to work oh, okay. pretty good for me. Yeah, I, don't even, I don't even know what it is, but, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I don't sweat it. Yeah. Hey, did you do anything <laughs> with the Mint uh, 400 when you did anything going on? No. Nope. You know what? I, I came up to town and yep. was there for, like, sort of the parade and the registration day. Mm-hmm. But um, Rowan, my daughter, and I came up there and checked it out. And yeah. then after that, we, we only were there for that. So okay. did a Max's signing. Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah. Lots of fun people up there. That was cool. And Great. Got to hang out with Chris at Max's and, and the other Chris and all the boys. So it was, it was great. Yeah, Max's guys. Uh, listen, the Max's stepped up. They're helping a couple of privateer teams that are putting in main events, the new tire that you helped develop. So, uh, uh, yeah. you know, Max is Coming making along. some moves. Yeah, exactly. Uh by the way, Stock Cowie is the bar bend of eight three nine. So I don't even know what that means. Eight three nine. See, that's way too new. That's way too new <laughs> yeah, for me and David and, and DV too. <laughs> yeah, DV doesn't know either. Actually, I, I never raced for rental. Never. No. You were all uh, pro taper always. Yeah, and when I was in Europe, Europe, I was like yeah. uh, Oshiro, which which was like a, a French. Okay. Uh, no, like uh, like a pro taper bar. Yeah, no cross, no cross bar. bar. Oh, okay. Uh, bar, yeah. But uh, same thing. And uh, Pro Taper, and then even when I was using something else in some other teams, I don't remember, like Nikken, for example, yeah. I still had, I bought Pro Tapers. Pro tapers. Yeah. Uh, so. MC, the best thing I heard tonight so far was DV got into a, his, uh, he got back into riding. He bought a YZ250. He's going to say it every time. I, I can't. What, 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 what? No, this is the best. He, he wears a McGrath replica Bell helmet. Ah, okay. Oh well, that's that's nice of you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got because uh, that's pretty cool. You, how's that bell? They're good, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's good. I, that's the first yeah. time uh, for me uh, using uh, yeah. bell on that yeah, because I was yeah, helping yeah, yeah. like a, a couple of years ago. I was coaching Dylan, and it was Bell. Yep. And uh, Benny like said, "Hey, do you, do you need something?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm riding once in a while. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't mind a helmet. I don't have like a." A, a newer <laughs> helmet. Yeah, yeah. And he said, "Oh, go check uh, the stuff online and tell me what you want, size and then oh. the and you the, the model." I'm like, "Dude, I'm going with the MC. Like, oh gee, like it's, it'll fit my Yamaha. <laughs> yeah. be great." So that's what I'm using. Yes. Yeah. That's that's quite flattering. Thanks, DB. Um, uh -huh. nice. Do you want do you want to get him to sign it? We can do that. Maybe. Oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah. uh, McGrath, uh, DB told me I cannot talk about Phoenix. Uh, 2000, not allowed to talk about no, it. Oh, no. Okay, so we're just going to move on. Okay, so no worries. No if worries, I, no worries. <laughs> what, hey, DV, what gear are you wearing? You wearing some Oxbow or what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, can't, I can't even fit a leg in there. I won't. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. Uh, 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 no, why, I'm using why don't you tell Jeremy what gear you're nah, using, I'm DV? I'm Go ahead. I'm ashamed now. <laughs> Actually, uh, I bought a, uh, some pants on eBay, Fox pants. <laughs> My size. <laughs> I was 36. Did you, get your, some, you bought some of your old stuff. Off your <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, I was exactly. going to. I was going to. I saw, but the guy wanted like almost 200 bucks for like a 24-year-old pair of pants. A Fox, Wait, like a Fox, 2000. Oh, year 2000 pants? Yeah, 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 2000. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, eh, I ain't doing this. So yeah, yeah, I looked. Yeah. I went uh, you, um, <clears throat> Fox Racing uh, 36. I was 36. And I'm like, yep. uh, price low to high. And I look at something that was kind of like matching a Yamaha, the first blue set. I'm like, yeah, I'll buy it. It was like 23 bucks. 23 bucks. And in great condition. <laughs> and I wrote, I wrote the, and there's a reel mm. on my uh, on my Instagram the day I wrote. I had those pens. They're great. Uh, MC, do you ever see your stuff on eBay? Does anybody ever send you stuff about like like what they're selling and what they're trying to get for some of your stuff? No, nah, you know what? I don't really. Well, first of all, I don't look for sure. I'm yeah. not interested in that. But <laughs> um, I do see some. The, some some stuff that does ever get to me, you would see like a sublimated style new jersey that looks like an old jersey that people are trying to pass off. Oh yeah, like yeah, a, right. Something you know, something like I used to wear, and it's it's like comedy. Uh, I mean, we're so old and so so many generations removed now. People probably fall for that stuff, especially 
you know, some of the dads, I guess, maybe from back in the day. But yeah. um, no, I don't, I don't check into it too much. The biggest thing I sp- I did spend 300 bucks on eBay for a pair of Bradshaw pants, and they're the race ones. They're the ones hanging up there, DV. Like, oh, I, don't nice. have, I don't have anything from Bradshaw, and these are signed by him, and they're from uh, 93, I think. And I was just like, I got to have them. 300 bucks. I was like, God damn. But, I mean, Bradshaw pants. You got to do. You got to go for it. Ninety three. That was the year that I put him in retirement. I think. <laughs> it was. Oh, ouch. <laughs> it was. Uh, I'm just hit- kidding, Damon. I love you, buddy. Uh, I was Rachel's getting uh, getting strays out there. <laughs> yeah, I was watching actually on the weekend off. I'm such a loser, Jeremy. I was watching ninety three year in review on YouTube. And no my, way. My wife comes in and goes, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's no Supercross. Like, what do you?" You know, I'm at home on an off weekend. I got to watch something. So I watch Supercross. Yeah. But anyways, it was sure. funny, J- Jeremy. Like, it's just little clips, right? It's, it's from each race and it's post-race interviews. And Stanton and Kodrowski and, 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 you know, I just talked to Stanton about this a few weeks ago on my show. But they kept saying, like, look, Jeremy's really good. But, man, he's getting every start. And we just haven't got the starts. And, like, you know, once we get the starts, we, you know, we'll be fine. Like, we're not worried. Kodrowski, Bradshaw, they kind of repeated the same thing. And Jeremy, you kept you did keep getting the starts, and then like I want to say, oh yeah, so you didn't get the start, uh, Tampa or somewhere, you got fifth, and they're like, look, like this, and so Bradshaw, Stanton, Kordowski at one, two, three, they're like, yeah, man, you know, he can't come through the pack, he can't get the start, whatever, <laughs> and then like I want to say like two races later, you came from eighth to first, and after the race, you're like. Yeah, I keep hearing about, you know, I'm all about the starts, but I think I showed him tonight. Mm. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> just so like, funny. yeah, take this, you guys. Like, oh, you know? w- weren't you the first one to go through the last chance and win the main event? Was uh, I think Brad, no, yeah, yeah. I think Bradshaw did that. Bradshaw did? Yeah, Bradshaw did that in 91. Oh, did he? Yeah, I believe that so. When he got that, is that yes. when he got that famous hole shot? <laughs> yes. At, I think it was Anaheim where he just railed yep. the berm out. Ra- oh, yeah. Uh, yes, he, he, he came from 0.3 seconds from dying. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, it yeah, was, it was it was checkers or wreckers on that move, right? It, there. it was. But uh, yes, Jeremy did do that. Yes, but but yeah, yes. I did do it one time in Pontiac. Pontiac. I remember I, it was uh, Pontiac. I don't remember what year, but I remember it was Pontiac. Um, yeah, I think it was ninety. It might have been ninety four. I think. So then I was Something talking. Happened. I, I crashed. Okay. Yeah, I crashed in the heat, and then the second in the semi, we we used to have the semis. A rock got caught in the brake or something, so I ended up having to go to last chance. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny to watch that ninety three because then. And then after that win, Jeremy, when you said that, they focused more on, like, Guy Cooper just coming back and almost taking everybody out, and they focused on some other stuff. <laughs> because, yeah. like, literally Bradshaw crashed out the next race. That was it for him. Stanton crashed. Stanton, cr- Stanton knocked himself out at Pontiac. Like, it was over, right, by then? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the early theme was, like, oh, this McGrath kid, he just, he just gets the starts. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. So. I know. Well, a little bit like what DV was saying about Jet, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We've seen him. We've seen him. He controls the front pretty easily. Well, okay, but, so yeah, that leads but, me into what I want to ask you. Like, some of yeah. his wins are right out of your playbook. I feel like um, now. Look, he can do it all. We saw Daytona. He went by. Oh, yeah. He went by the two yeah. guys. But they are a little bit from your playbook. Where if you don't rattle him or get him early, he's gone. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, <clears throat> um, you know, I think uh, for whatever reason, I. I mean, he gets great starts, right? So he's he's at the front quite a lot. But I think DB was right, you know. Pushing to that extra percentage is where he gets in trouble. We saw that a few weeks ago when he ran right in the back of that guy, um, mm-hmm. you know, trying to catch back up after he made that fall. Um, there's no doubt he's – he's. It, what's what's amazing to me is, um, honest to be honest, is, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that as fast as everyone is now, like, I mean, I'm such a fan, so I watch all this stuff. The guy seems so fast. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that he's riding at 80%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's his 80% is fast enough to win races. And, you know, I guess, uh, you know, I guess he gets a little bit of a lead and, and he can kind of manage the lead. And that's a little bit, sort of a little bit easier, but, uh, man, it, it is, you know, he does, he does have some skill. He does stuff quite a, you know, some different stuff on the bike, which sort of from my point of view, I'm like, man, this is kind of unimaginable, you know, like everyone's going so fast and riding so good. And, um, in fact, today I was just talking about it with someone, I'm like, you know, I wish Eli was at full power right now. You know, I just, I still don't think he's at top speed mm-hmm. like he was last year. And we'd really get to see jet, see what, you know, see what he's got. But I mean, I think he's got enough to cover it, especially in certain circumstances, but, yeah. uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be, I hope Eli can get, 
back to full power, full speed, and see if he can mix it up here the next next races. But um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, but I think you were doing the same thing. Like when you first moved to the 250, there was mm -hmm. some races where you were jumping like a triple in a rhythm section or a little quad that nobody else was doing. You were doing this for 10 laps and not really charging, but being so much better technically, being precise and everything, and then jumping more stuff, just like he did in Daytona, for example. That yeah. helps him, like, helps him um, gain a lot of time. The other guys are, like, struggling. They are short, long, and yeah. I've been saying that for a while, is I don't see people, like, focusing on riding well with with the timing and then lines, opening your turns, momentum, all this stuff before they're looking to go fast. So riding well before going fast, I've been saying that. And I think Jed is doing kind of that. He's focusing on his technique and then uh, precision. And then after that, he puts a little bit of, of intensity just to go a little faster. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he, he definitely does like little things, like little, the little details on the bike uh, skill-wise. I think he has a lot more of that stuff polished. And you're right. If he finds a section that he can jump or something like that, which is something I did back in the day, the same sort of thing. I mean, um, if there was something I could jump that was different than everybody else that would gain speed, um, you know, I would kind of save those for the main events and whatever. And, and if you can inch out, you know, every lap, if, if you can be the same as everybody else on most of the track, except for the one section, you could really do something different. I mean, you know, after 10 laps, you start to pull away. I mean, you've, you've already pulled away. You got 10 second lead. Seems pretty easy. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I, I think um, it, it's super fun to watch. I, I, it's weird. I want him to get a bad start. <laughs> you know, as a fan, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I want to. I want to see him come through the pack. And and uh, he hasn't. He's, he hasn't. I don't know how much. He hasn't really had a race where he's too deep in the pack. But um, he's had, had to pass some guys. Yeah, the mud races didn't go well. Uh, he was buried, and then it didn't go well. But it was total mudders, right? So, like, we didn't really yeah. learn much or another, didn't learn anything. Yeah, but right. You have to to also um, realize that he's new. He he hasn't uh, start uh, behind and come through the pack often. Mm -hmm. So that's right. something you learn. Uh, it, it feels a little out of place sometimes when he's well, around other guys. So. You know, like uh, La Rocco was used to it. He knows yeah. how to do it. He came f through the uh, pack all the time. But Alessi, for example, yeah, uh, never came through the pack. He was always in front. He wasn't used to it. Vial was the same yeah. way last year outdoors. Mm -hmm. All his career, Vial M MX2, all shot almost every moto. Mm -hmm. Then you you only know one way of racing, you know? Right. And I think yeah. um, it's going to come with time. He's only 20 and then... Uh, uh, he's, well, he's going to have to start ba bad, obviously, to practice it. Yeah, but it was it, uh, it get there. It was shocking to see him go by Sexton and Eli within two turns uh, at Daytona. You're like, holy shit! But like, this is he's yeah. not an alien right there. Yeah. So one is just yeah, timing. Well, here's the, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Timing, and and jumping that rhythm section the way is you're supposed to do it, mm -hmm. and then the right. second turn, Sexton goes wide outside. What is he doing? He opened, yeah. like, yeah, he let he, him go by. I don't know what you think, him. but, yeah. 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 Well, I think you're right. And I think, you know, t the beginning of the race is when everyone's tight. It's much easier to make those kind of moves right away. If he would have sat in third or fourth for, a, let's say, like three or three laps or something, I think it would have been a much more difficult. I guess, you know, you you kind of get sucked into everyone else's pace, but... When everyone's together, you can kind of make like make those moves, and then like like you said, Sexton opened the door and just gave him gave him the lead. So, um. what uh, what do you see from Sexton, MC? Like uh, obviously, you know, getting it getting closer to the to where he needs to be, coming off the hand injury. But you know, they dropped the KYB stuff in, inside of WP Fork. I don't know if you read much about that. And and like he's still looking, he's still searching. Obviously, by doing that kind of radical adjustment to the suspension. Um, what do you see from him? Like what he hasn't been fastest qualifier all year. Uh, he's been close, but hasn't been the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does he figure it yeah, out? Well, yeah. Well, uh, we haven't seen the crashes. Nope. Good so, point. Yep. 
I mean, that, that part, I think that part, I think is good. Um, uh, you know, I heard you guys talking about it a little bit earlier and, um, Sexton, I mean, you've seen flashes of brilliance for sure. He's been riding pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not quite as fast as he was on the Honda yet, but he definitely hasn't had the crashes. Um, and, and, and maybe that's because if his bike doesn't feel perfect yet or whatever, maybe he's just kind of riding a little bit with himself, a little more reserved maybe just, and then, you know, it's a little, you don't quite get on the edge. So it's a little, maybe you're not crashing quite as much. So, uh, I guess maybe if, if he's yet to have the bike a hundred percent under him, the mm-hmm. way he wants it, maybe we haven't seen his full speed yet, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I think he looks good. looks pretty, you know, like I said, I, I like the consistency, mm-hmm. uh, seems, seems to need a little bit more speed for sure. Right. Everyone else is pretty much everyone else is so mixed up that, uh, I mean, if you can just stay close to the front, I feel like you're not, you're never going to have a really a, a bad result, even if you're second, third every time, you know? Yeah, it's been Seems a great, like it's been a great year. It's been really yeah, nice to watch. watch. I just, I, I'm started to, uh, like, I'm starting to watch this stuff and, and we joke about it being called Star Cross. And God damn, it kind of is, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. it always has been. Let's not joke, our, joke around a little bit, it always has been. But yeah. it is maybe more than ever. Yeah. Start you mean uh, start. how stacked the field is? Well, just start cross. Where you start is how oh, your right. race is going to go. Like we saw AP yeah. get on the box, you know? I don't know. I just, yeah. Yeah, but that works only for certain uh, guys that are not uh, top notch and, mm-hmm. you know, they can't really go through the pack. So, yeah. um, but look, we saw Eli crash, was 16 in Detroit, uh, Dallas, Dallas, Dallas yep. sorry, yep. Yep. went back second. Sure. Uh, Roxanne has been very impressive, like not uh, very good. Yep. And coming through the yeah, pack, he's, he's very good at that. He's this, a, this one weekend, of the best. He was great. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But look, it's possible. Yep. P- people like it is, and yeah. then uh, certain guys can, can definitely do it. Yes, but you have to have that little extra. And Jet uh, showed it too, like being mm-hmm. around ten and getting on the podium uh, or like mm-hmm. close to it. Uh, mm-hmm. It's possible. It's only the stars is only good for like let's say the. the Maybe the second tier. Jason, like, Aaron. Yeah, the yeah. Justin Cooper. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, not the top guys of the, the yeah. not the top four to five, the rest of the guys. Um, but, and I hate this about this sport, about how much importance we give the stall, and we tell the riders that. All day. Mm-hmm. Every, every yeah. oh, we got to get a good stall. We got to get a good stall. We got to get... And then it's over, it's over. It's on media. It's during like uh, in uh, testing, mm-hmm. uh, training. They do t- a test stall, and you put in the rider's head that you have to get a good start to win. Then, right, right. If you don't, they they they're already thinking like if they get a bad start, they're they're screwed. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they're thinking it's like um, subliminal almost uh, that if you start mid pack like tenth. Which is a 20 minute moto now mm-hmm. instead of 20 laps, so it's even longer than before. If you're good enough, you know, if you like, you know, a few tenths a lap and they go like yeah, 25 can. laps, you're gonna catch up, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you can make it happen, yeah. But you Super can catch up, it? yes. Yeah. When, yeah. when, but if you believe you can. But if everybody right. on the industry, media, team tells you, you know what, I gotta get a st- good start win. You, sure. you understand what yeah. I'm trying yeah, to absolutely. say? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. No, I get yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's, it's every week. You know, you watch the TV program every week and you go like, okay, RC, what's your, you know, <laughs> what's your three fa- things? It's like, okay, the first thing everyone always says, the importance of the start, you know? And last week's track, for instance, and, and with, that, with them having to modify the track a little bit because mm-hmm. of the weather, uh, and those sort of those S corners and stuff, like it really was a lot of fall of the leader last week. So there was... Um, the moves like Roxon was making last week, and uh, those were that was impressive because I think last week's track was a little bit difficult to catch up on, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jeremy McGrath on the show, brought to you by folks at Renthal. Let's uh, let's take some phone calls. As always, when MC is on the line, people want to talk to him. Uh, number line three is Mike. Mike, what's going on? What's your question for Jeremy McGrath? Hey guys, um, I got a question for I guess all you guys and MC. I was wondering if you think like. 
Jet or anybody else of current riders these days would end up doing like a McGrath Invitational type thing, like he did back in the day. Oh, yeah, good, good point. Um, you know what? I mean, I'm still not sure why that idea didn't take off. That was such a cool event, except for me crashing. <laughs> yeah, but um, it was really cool for Wyndham. Got him a new car out of that whole thing. That was sweet. Um, did you make any I don't money? Know, man. Did you make any money doing it, like promoting it? Uh, we broke even, I okay. think All it right. was, which is, which is, I guess uh, you consider that a win in the sure. promotion days. Yeah. Um, especially like a one-off event. Uh, but I, I find it hard to believe that guys would be adventurous enough maybe to go out and do an event like that. They would sign their name on the stuff. I think if there was something available, like maybe the U S open that we used to used to have in Vegas, whatever that is. But I think honestly with this, you know, what happens is as soon as there's enough time or room for another event, then they're these days they're filling it with other events, right? So they have the Supercross series, then they go to the motocross series, and now they have the Super Motocross series, right? So mm-hmm. I think there's just not enough time and not enough uh, – gosh, these guys just don't have enough energy to go out and try to promote and do their own race. So I don't really see that happening in the future. If there's going to be an extra event, it'll be something that still puts on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That plus, you got Bercy in there, right? And anything else? Uh, the Des Nations. Um, yeah, right. Well, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. some events that guys might go to that already exist that've been around for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't know about a new event, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, Mike. Thanks for calling. Good chat, right, Mike. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sean's you. on too. What's up, Sean? What's your question for MC? Hey, I got a question for MC and for all you guys. Like, or two questions, if that's all right. Yeah. Um. Hey, Jared, Sean, Jay. I was just wondering if you call oh, my dad about you? Mammoth. He qualified, and he's he's contemplating on going. So I wanted to get him on air, and I wanted you to call him out. <laughs> um, Eddie J, got to get out there, buddy. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you going to the qualifier and, if you're not going to go to the race? Let's do this. That's, that's exactly what I said. Yeah. And then he goes out and almost wins the thing, and then he's like, oh, I don't want to go. <laughs> but um, Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a call. <laughs> we can talk about it. The uh, question I got for all you guys is, uh, like you were talking earlier, how the field stacked. Is the field stacked this year, like the most? Is that why Jet's getting so much credit? Or is everyone just kind of so close now to where no one wants to push it? Like I was watching old videos, you know, of your rookie year, or even like 05 with James and, you know, Chad and Ricky. Ricky and Chad, where those yeah. guys, I mean, they would just push the limit even though they had – I mean, countless 125 champs. Like, it's just, yeah. I don't understand why all the hype is now compared to, like, how you guys were. Well, I, I think my my answer on that is is there's more rides available, right? So we have more factory riders, I think, because there's more teams. Um, so I feel like the, you know, as far as factory riders go, it's probably safe to say it's more stacked than it's ever been. Um, but... You know, and DV, you can you can check me on this one or both of you guys. Like, I, I think that, um, you know, there's some tight battling, but there's not there, – no one's I, – I don't think really – let's say like the third, maybe the fourth, fifth, fourth on down to tenth, guys aren't sort of – they're managing the race. Like you said earlier, DV, the race is 20 minutes now. It's a long moto, and and I'm not sure – with the exception of Eli and Cooper Webb, maybe, and then we haven't really seen it out of Jet yet, but, um, you know, 27 laps on a Supercross race, I think the rest of the guys are managing the race. They're managing, trying to figure out how they're going to get to 27 laps. So um, as a fan of the sport, I think that they should consider making a change to the time limit of the race. And I think it'd be, I'd like to see like an 18-minute main plus, plus two laps or you know, or plus a lap or whatever, and then it would make the whole thing 20 minutes total and not not 22 minutes, 21 and a half minutes, 23 minutes, whatever it is. Because I think guys aren't trying. They're not giving the 100% the whole time because I don't think that, I mean, most of them, I don't think they can make it. So they, they're managing the time. And I think for us as fans, we would see lot be- a lot better racing if we had, if we, if we had a, the whole group knew they could make the whole main event wide open. So um, that's why, and, and, you know, this is a strategy for someone like Eli or someone like Webb or um, someone like even Jet maybe, uh, with a long, long race, you have time to catch up. Mm-hmm. But Supercross is a show, 
and we want to show and it's a sprint <laughs> race you know what i mean and yeah. i don't think we're getting the show that we all as fans could see if the race was just a tiny bit shorter mm-hmm. even a minute or even a minute and a half two two minutes it would make it you know 25 laps let's that would try to make it like at 25 but these guys doing 27 laps it's already spread out Mm -hmm. like these riders they know they can't make that length of a race so we're not getting like we're not getting the justin barsha's you know most fast laps this whole race or or whoever else there might be you know um i don't know i think they should sort of look into that when when they went from how we used to do it at 20 laps and they just automatically went to like 20 minutes it was like that's a significant change yeah yep so i don't know i mean outdoors is where you're supposed to flex your endurance muscles supercross is a show let's get some fireworks going you know so yeah <laughs> anyway, I was, that's kind I was of watching, uh, that's kind of the way i'm thinking yeah i was watching bar to bar 05 earlier today and it's just like watching i mean you were there coming back and you know, Pastrana raced a couple races and all those 125 champs. Dude, and, like, it's absolutely Ricky, nuts. Chad, and Bubba yeah. are lapping sixth. Yeah, it was stacked. It was, it was, it was yeah, think of it, yeah, yeah. Think of Pastrana, McGrath, Reed, Stu, Carmichael, DV. Uh, that was those early rounds before Travis. Wyndham, Morocco. Wyndham, Wyndham. Yeah. I, st- I think I got fourth or fifth one night. I got lapped. I think <laughs> yeah, so, I think San Diego. I yeah. think. I think San Diego I when uh, oh five yeah. Ricky I think Chad and Ricky, and Chad Ricky Chad crushing the whoops at the last lap was yep. second to last Diego, lap. Oh five, yeah. yeah. I th- I think I got fourth or fifth right there, and I think I got lapped. Yes. Yeah. No, you did. Like they, so. they lapped Larocco in third, but he unlapped himself because it was the last lap. Yeah. But, yeah. But can we stop like talking? And I think it's the bread of butter of field and everything to say like the the most stacked field in oh, history. Yeah. DV hates so, this. So I hate. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I, I took one race that I know. I, I took one race that I know was stacked. I'm sorry, MC, you only got seventh in that race. But that year, <laughs> but that year you were champion. It was in 1999, yeah. the opener at Anaheim. Yeah. So I'm gonna go through the list. There's only 20 guys in the in the main event. There's not 22 guys. Mm-hmm. So it goes Lusk, Pichon, LaRocco, Windham, Dowd, Alsee, MC, Hemeg, Lemson, Huffman, Ferry, Sellards, me, Button, Lawrence, Arbertine, Tortelli, Ward, Reynard, Roncada. That's a top 20. In a, and then. I mean, that is stacked. That's, this that's, is insane. That's and then, you that's know as what? stacked as you can get. Right I'm going to go, I'm gonna yeah. go this weekend. Everybody says it's stacked. John Short, 21st. Grant Allen, 20. Aaron Tenty, 19th. Freddie Noren, 18. Carl Chisholm, 16. Bourdon. Mitchell Harrison, 15. Benny Blos on a crappy bike, <laughs> 14. <laughs> yeah. That's stuck yeah. to you? But, oh, Put those, gu- those guys yeah. that I said, yeah. 14. Well, Dylan so, is 22nd. But 14 to 21st, I don't think they yeah. make the main in 99. But to be fair, you just compared Anaheim 1, 99. Mm-hmm. Two, Who's missing? To eight rounds in the Who's Super missing? Uh, Hunter Lawrence. Okay. Is missing. Um, who else is missing? Craig. Craig. Yeah, Craig's missing. I don't know. I'm just saying. A couple guys. Yeah, regardless, right. put two put two more guys in there. You still have six guys there. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, you yeah. know, when you, you look at this, and I think it's they try to hype everything up. They do. It, it is a TV but, thing. It really but is. That yeah. was my first ever uh, Premier class um, right. Right. 250 race. Right. Well, it looks, like, got, it looks like Mathis and Ferry beat you that night. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Take, yeah, yeah, take yeah. that, DV. <coughs> Actually, the, I think the, the following week. We were on a crappy no cra- lean, but we were on a no lean Yamaha. I was on the, st- I was on the private. I was oh, private okay. here. Good point. You're right. Yeah, but dude, come on. The Back in the day, the, the, the difference between the factory bike and the privateer bike was not that much different. It honestly was not. Maybe my Honda was totally yeah. different, but yeah. everyone else's bikes were pretty close <laughs> your, to the same. Your Honda <laughs> was maybe a little different, but everybody yeah, else, sure, right? Yeah, right. Um, but I can get, I can guarantee, you, like Emig's Cowie and your Nolan Yamaha were, yeah, pretty darn equal, I'd say. And your your Yamaha was probably better, to be honest. Uh, Sean, I would say this too, though. Um, these tracks, because of four strokes, are hammered after twenty seven laps, like Jeremy said. And honestly, yeah. it's a bit of a survival for these. The best; these are the best riders in the world, at least the top ten, let's say. DV, and yeah. these are the these guys are trying to survive, man. Like because these tracks can't handle the twenty-minute mains. I've said this for a while. I was an advocate for twenty-minute mains because 
A couple times we saw the ma- the premier guys, Dungy Villapoto in those days, they were out there for 14 minutes for a main event. Yeah, if it's 45 seconds. Right, right. Yeah. And, and I said, I, and I was in my columns and on these dumb podcasts saying, wait, wait, wait. You pay $100 to go to Supercross, whatever the price is. You pay $75 yeah. to go, and you see Ryan Dungy and for 14 <laughs> minutes, that's not enough. But like Jeremy said, be careful what you wish for because – these tracks cannot handle the twenty minutes, and these guys absolutely are managing the race. They really are. Right, right. Yeah. And, and and if we actually yeah. had twenty minute on the on the number, yes, motos, that'd yep. be good. Yep. Yeah. But, they, and then they would give them some more time to work on the track, and then we could maybe get a little bit better racing. I know like, they they love yeah. the twenty minutes for TV. Like, hey, we we commercial breaks, and they need that right. twenty minutes. They can minutes. still get the twenty minute window. In, yeah, they have but. to figure that out. Right. Do some. Do some. I don't think it's that hard. Right. Yeah. I'm with you. Like, hey, what's we're running and qualifying? We're doing 51s? Okay, let's do this, you know, or whatever. Yeah, and I, I think, honestly, they're, I know what they're trying to do, TV window and make it consistent and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yep. But just make the thing 18 minutes plus two laps, and it's 20 minutes. There's your 20-minute window, not yeah. 27 laps. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? No, or, no. These tracks are like, – their tracks are – you talk to these guys, man. You go walk them at the end of the night. I did that a couple times. They're, they're unbelievable. Hammered. Yes. They, they, yeah, hammered. And, wh- and why are we doing three practice sessions – you talk about saving the track. The, the guys come out on lap three of the very first practice and jump everything. Why do we need three practices for these dudes? We don't need it. Like, well, here's yeah. another fun fact. Okay. If you you know when when DV and I were racing, we had a I think we had a ten and an eight minute practice. Of course, we didn't do time qualifying back it, then or really? whatever. Was yeah, it was small, we had yeah. a ten and yeah. an eight. Yeah. Oh wow. I don't we had two. That. We never had three. Here's the thing: if you did a ten and an eight, and and it's not going to happen because the guys are so good, but you know, there, if there was something like that, you know, like the guy wanted to save for the main or save for the races or whatever, with 10 minutes and 8 minutes, you might have you might have an opportunity to do something like that, especially if it's yeah. something kind of big or whatever. But, you know, with three practices, I mean, that's a, that's a joke, dude. Three practices, no, the track is just no. beat. Wait, yeah. These guys don't you need know. it. They got it all down. They're on 454 strokes. They can, they can sit in a corner from, from a stop. And jump seventy five yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, hell, when we when we used to race, we'd go out there and we'd play games like me and Wyndham used to do it all the time. Like, all right, we jump. How many, how much of this stuff can we jump on lap one? Yeah, of practice. Yeah, you know. So, anyways, yeah, about, maybe some of the trickier stuff, but hey, still. DV, how about Anaheim 01, 01, no, Anaheim two thousand, the whoops, and Jeremy yeah. Jeremy Huge comes out. Whoops. Jeremy Number, comes out. And I'm two. And I'm two. He has the and dingleberries the, 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 on, uh, on the helmet. We are all <laughs> shitting our pants. <laughs> yeah. And on the very first lap of the very first practice, Jeremy's like, gur, 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 gur. we're like, well, we're fucked. Where yeah. everyone's fucked. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. I'll so, never forget that. Blood, I don't know why. The bloods were huge. They were huge. The, but dude, that you was were, the you biggest. Like, uh, I think I was, I was actually leading for a bit. And you? then you passed me. I got second that night. Uh, I think LaRocco got third. And it was only four of us uh, skimming the whoops. Yeah. MC, yeah. me, uh, LaRocco, Wyndham. That's it. The I, four. Yeah. I remember that, it was almost like you made you were making a statement, Jeremy, because we were all talking about the whoops. You know, everyone was. And you were like, yeah. oh, yeah, watch this, everybody. You know what I mean? Like you were, yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. always. Was funny. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sean. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. See you, Sean. Yeah, thanks. Later. Thanks. Have a good night. Uh, speaking of that, one last thing, Jeremy, before we let you go here on the show. You coming in the booth? You doing? You doing race day live? You doing booth? Anybody call you? They should. I mean, have you heard from these guys? Any, you doing anything? No, no, I haven't. I haven't heard from anyone. Oh. I mean, I'm I'm happy to do it. I like you I gotta, like doing it, dude. You're good at it too. Yeah, I like doing it. I mean, you know, like we've talked about this before on the show. It's like, yeah, what I enjoy so much these days is I I'm just free to talk. You know what I mean? There's no yeah. There's no political lines or whatever for what we're doing for racing. Like that where I'm at in my life and where I'm at with, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable. I don't feel like, okay, cool. I got to say a certain thing because of this, but I, I'm just, you know, look, I'm, I'm a fan of the sport and I'd love just being honest about it. And, yeah. and uh, it's, it is fun. I'd, I, I, of course I'd like to do it, I'd like to do it some more, but um, last time you were on race day live, good time. Yeah. last yeah. time you were on race day live, I was like, I was just like blown away. I'm just like, Oh my God. <laughs> like <laughs> look at what McGrath <laughs> is saying. You know, you were just, throwing it out there and it was great it was honest compelling stuff yeah i was like you know impressed well, i think that they should rotate right on, uh with the with the, the guys yeah yeah yeah, yeah rotate would be good yeah yeah i think sure. all of us should get on there yeah yeah and <laughs> nfl like you have it, yeah. right you have like roma's good uh you have uh ekman is good like 
you know, yeah. you cannot yeah. only have one guy saying the same thing over and over, mm -hmm. you know, sure. because he has one view and one opinion. So it'd be good to bring somebody else. You don't have yeah. me here every week. You don't, don't have Kiefer every week. No, I don't. I try so, to rotate him. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, so yeah. rotating is, is important. Yeah, I had I so, so. Get, I, I get had a different point of view. I had Show 500 DV and I had Ricky and Jeremy here in studio. It was amazing. It was great. Right. So Show 600 is coming up. How do I top that? How do I top McGrath and Ricky in here? What do I do? <laughs> you do read James Ricky. Read James Ricky. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> good good so luck with that. Cool. The following, yeah. uh, you know, the, yeah. the following era, yeah. right? I'd, I'd, yeah. Because it was the MC Ricky Stu, era. You think Stu's coming in? He doesn't like you? No, Maybe. he's fine, but. We're good, but I don't think Stu's well, he, 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 he He would probably look, come in if he, you could get talk him into getting out of Florida. He stays in Florida. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, give him some uh, gaming money. He's doing there. a little more. No, he's doing a little more, though, now because he's yeah. going to the races and doing stuff. He, yeah, he's doing some more. So. No, you should. Yeah. But there was, you know, you, you, it's tough Which to Which is be, nice to see, by the way. It's great. Yeah. What? Uh, you have, uh, what's the year they finished, like, within three points, those three guys? Yeah. Oh, uh, five. Oh, five, yeah. Five uh, or six, four, five? Yeah. Five, maybe. Uh, yeah, and yeah. they hated each other, and now they're cool. Right. You know, that'd okay. be, you know, yeah, that kind yeah, of fun. Yeah. I'll try to work on that. Everyone grows up, you know? You yeah. know how it goes. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all, those, all those race fans, they end up going away as you get older. Absolutely. No, you're right. Uh, thanks for the time, Jeremy. Always good to talk to you. I really appreciate it. Uh, good stuff, as always. Thank you, man. Yeah, no worries, guys. It was fun to catch up with everyone. DV, good, good catching up with you. Yeah, um, I always enjoy man. the show. So thanks for having me on. You just let me know when you need me. I'm, I'm available. Thanks, MC. All right. Talk to Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right, guys. Have a good night. Thanks. See ya. That's Jeremy McGrath, everybody. Uh, brought to you by the folks at Rental, Rental dot com, uh, trucks for sale dot com. Speaking of that, your one stop shop for premium, brand new, custom trucks. Go to the uh, website, go to liftedtrucksforsale.com, work the search engine, and they offer top brands like Black Widow, Rocky Ridge, Black Ops, and more. Uh, the best part is these trucks are easily financeable, unless you're DV and you just pay cash, uh, through your local dealership, and best of all, retains the factory warranty. Skip the hassles of do-it-yourself customization, like rating for parts, poor ride quality, voiding your warranty. What? I, what are you pointing at? I don't have a billboard in my house with uh, advertising. That's for the show. That's for YouTube. Yeah, you you okay. should get it. You have a YouTube channel now. Yeah. Uh, elevate your own journey at liftedtrucksforsale.com. Thank you to those guys. Uh, from Jeremy McGrath to this gentleman, Lewis Phillips. Hello. It's an absolutely insane that I am following MC, but you did the scheduling. So I yeah, we kept the uh, best for last, bro. Yep. Yep, uh, I believe that 100%. That's uh, definitely true. DV, where are you at with Lewis? Do you know him? Do you, do you follow uh, him? No, or? I okay. saw him a few uh, I saw a few tweets uh um, okay with my brother i don't have one on my own but mm -hmm. um and uh listen to a couple interviews post-race interviews but okay. no podcast no nothing i know he comes from uh england i'm guessing with the accent but um uh and the mod model uh, mxgp guy so i'm excited to and now he works for vital it. mx yeah. Did you know that? Did you know it was for yeah, okay. yes, yeah. yes. And I heard about the you couldn't find a cell phone, a cell phone or whatever. What? And yeah. Don't did you, didn't you have a problem finding a, a good cell phone plan or something? Yeah. When I first moved here, it was a nightmare because I didn't have credit score or any of that. Ah, uh, yeah. That I needed. You cannot do anything in the U.S. if you don't have credit score and a social security number. Yeah, if if you know this, when I landed and was homeless immediately, I <laughs> wouldn't, couldn't do anything. <laughs> Unless you have like a, a duffel bag of uh, cash. Mm. If you don't have those two things, you you you're screwed. Oh. You know, McCarty put me on uh, on his uh, cell phone plan. Did uh, he? Uh, I know it, it wasn't. Oh. It was um, John O. John John, John Rosenstiel's yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, real estate agent. Yep. She put me on her phone bill so I could have a, a, a cell phone, phone when oh, I got here because that. no social security right. number, no nothing. Yeah. Uh, Lewis Phillips brought to you by the folks at OGO. Uh, did you get OGO yet? Yeah, I got hooked up. Okay, finally. good. All right. Uh, finally, somebody gets hooked up. Yeah. DV went riding and bought twenty dollar Fox <laughs> pants. Uh, Lewis, well, I, I can't with this guy. I can't. Okay, so no. OGO Power Sports, please check it out. Pulp fifteen is the code to say backpacks, gear bags, all of that. TV, do you think your spirit, your spirit flight, and your Orleans hotel room are free? I mean, I gotta and, pay for it somehow. And I'm swiping the the billboard. No. I bought Lewis Phillips Ruth Chris dinner on Friday night. I asked for Ruth and Chris tonight. I, I know you did. Yeah, I said I said I'll pack. 
Oh, yeah? Um, <laughs> how about our friend Jamie Lewis? Just the the smugness that he had as he took that free steak dinner. It was unbelievable. How much was the bill? Uh, Lewis, myself, and I bought Mr. Guida. Are you familiar with him? Um, uh, Pony. Pony, yep. yeah. I bought Pony. Uh, it was two eighty six, I think. That's it? Yeah. Oh, easy. You got a tip included or no? Uh, no, I don't think so. But, but Lewis, what about our friend? Just take yeah, it. Yeah, to be honest, um, I didn't spend much time focusing on Jamie because our waiter was <laughs> high or drunk or <laughs> an escaped convict, maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was like a fever dream. It, it, was, it was something else, I'll tell you. Um, all right, hey, are you, are, you at the, are you at the Anstey residence right now? Uh, yeah, I am, actually. How's the mood? What's going on? DNF, uh, lost the red plate, bummer, a huge deal. Yarif's crying. Um, what, what's, what's going on? How, how is everything going? Is he on suicide watch, or are we good? No, he's actually okay. We're on to 2025. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. Is <laughs> Rob's coming from the ceiling? Or? Yeah. yeah. No, we're, we're on to 2025. That's the slogan of the week. Okay. Bummer. You got to feel for Max and the team. Absolutely sucks, you know? But. Yeah, your Eve's uh, Instagram post was, um, as expected, quality, in-depth, <laughs> a lot to unpack so, there. So let's go to the point. What broke? He probably uh, can't say. Something to do with a valve. Oh, oh yeah, okay. the valve, yeah, okay. Valve guide, something. Yeah. Retainers. Retainer, sure. Something. Yeah. Because we know, seriously, I'm over this shit, okay. you know. Right. So what happened to uh, Tomac's bike when he was smoking? Valve cover gasket. No. How he comes from the bottom? No, it was it was what it was coming from the pipe on G outs. It was coming up of the motor and it's going on the exhaust pipe and coming out. So the the cover gasket yeah popped out. Uh, well, they powder coated it purple for the for that race. Yeah, and it was a little different thickness due to the powder coating. Okay, and it pushed the gasket in. Okay, is that the the old nineties spark plug? Excuse no, 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 no. That's that, the real that, thing. That's really it. That's okay. really it. So because in Formula One, we know everything. They make hundreds. It's do, like we, a, do we know everything in Formula a, One? Yes. Okay. It's a billion-dollar yeah, industry. Yeah. In, in Supercross, you can't even get a like an answer if the bike is smoking. I know. What's going on? Well, I mean, Lewis and I try our best. In in Moto in Moto GP, yep. they tell you our bike sucks. Yeah. We're slow. Yeah, right no, they, says, do, they do say that. Yeah, yes. our bike yeah. sucks. Like in F1, right. same thing. Our car's well, not good. So it's not good. this segues into MXGP. I feel like the MXGP guys are more honest about their bikes and things. Yeah, some of the people, yeah. I guess. Lewis, do you feel like that? Yeah, well, I'm interested to see if DV agrees with me on this. I feel like it's more of a European way of doing things, to be more blunt, be more honest. Uh, maybe the language barrier a little bit, like sometimes you say more than you mean to. I don't mm -hmm. know. But I genuinely feel like it's just a European way of life a little more, which also applies to F1 and MotoGP, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of right, yes. And a lot of people are more PC here in the U.S. And then when I got here, I got coach. We're getting coached about all this stuff. You know, we had like media days. And, yeah, yeah. You know, we're yeah. in a room and so what to say, what not say, and right. this and that. I understand it. But now, uh, that that was 25 years ago. I think the difference, DV2, and the way it's explained, been explained to me is you can't buy an F1 car. You can't buy a MotoGP bike. And so if they say that the the uh, cam failed, the cam chain broke, or, or the suspension rocker arm broke, or whatever, but you can buy a Yamaha YZ450. And if you say, hey, man, uh, the, the subframe bracket broke and the air boot fell off, then the customer's like, wait, I, I, what, that happened to me. Yeah, or, you know, yeah that, uh, makes, that makes sense. you got to be a little careful because these are actual bikes that people buy. You know, yeah. So. But after when you hear stuff on TV like the it's the shock oil going on the pipe, the the Tomac cannot finish. Do, do they know how shock works? No, it's What's not like it's <laughs> it's not the greatest <laughs> rider on earth in the history of the sport. That's on the, uh, with the mic. How can you say that? You know, I mean, you, if, is, if is the it, shock is, is it leaking, possible that Ricky doesn't know how a shock works. If a shock is leaking like this, yeah. you do half a lap, yeah. you in the ambulance. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but but does, Ricky, does Ricky maybe not know how a shock works? Like, for real? I don't know. He, he sure does. Come on. I but mean, he's trying to, to dumb out the, the audience. Mm -hmm. We all call. We know. Most of us watching this, this crap on mm -hmm. Peacock that we have to pay for, it's not like the, 
the yeah. the John Doe or the whoever. Yeah. It's people that I know. Right. It's been around forever. Okay. Don't say that. Uh, listen, I'm with you. I found it odd. I found it odd. It's like when uh, Anderson's bike uh, broke and they said it was... What did they say? The radiator was smoking, right? And it was, uh, they just said something else. And I'm just like, you can watch the radiator smoking. Like, it's the radiator. He got hit with Roxon. Yeah. And the radiator was smoking, and they were, like, telling us it was something else. And you're like, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right. Are you going to yell so at the, Lewis or no? Uh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying no, to. You just agreed with me a little bit. So yeah, 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 yeah. I did. understand. Yeah. Yeah. We're more blunt because we're not I don't uh, raised like that. I don't believe of. he ever agreed with Rutledge or Myrtle at any point. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he did say kind of right, but still, it's past. It's past. No, no. It, I understand. Yes. Right. I think we're more blunt, especially like uh, Europeans from the South, like okay. Spain, France, Italy. Yep. I think we're more blunt than maybe the Northern the one. The Dutch. The the Dutch and the, and the Scandinavian or whatever. Right. They're kind of more like... Um, the UKers. Uh, UKers are like... They have their own problems. They do. They do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree with that. <laughs> Who was your favorite UK motocrosser ever? Oh, that's a tough one. Is it? Okay. Uh, Jeremy Watley? Uh, Jeremy Watley. Didn't have cool. that on the bingo card. Uh, Rob Herring? Rob Herring was good. Yeah. Yeah, Rob Herring was good. Uh, it's kind of like... Uh, Flashy. He was South African, though, wasn't know, he? I kind of I kind of raced with Malin, but when he came out on a Kawi and stuff, yeah. it was kind of cool. And it's... It's weird because England, I say England for me, it's like Scotland the, and all the, of it. The island. Okay. Right. Um, it's very different, like, from uh, what we know. They have, like, I don't know if they had more money in the 90s than us, but when the, the, the Brits came to European Championship mm -hmm. 125, yep. even GP, they're like nicer cars, nicer motorhomes. They're like American shit, yeah. right? Like, that was cool. Uh, it seems like they had more like uh, I don't know. I want to say money, maybe not. We all broke in this sport anyway. But Lewis uh, carries himself with a certain smugness. Yeah, but they had nice things. You forget it. No, we had crap. I had crappy trucks for like m all the way until I I got my first hey, check at Yamaha in '98. You had upside down forks on your KX80 though. That yeah, was expensive. That was expensive. I'm sure my dad got it for free <laughs> as, as as part of a trade of something. Okay, right. All right. Uh, big, big on trades, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know they had those nice uh, motorhomes that you see, like uh, the fun movers, right? Yeah. Uh, we had like Mercedes, like uh, vans, like uh, with crap in it just to slip in. They had real motorhomes. They were made to to be slept in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, to come back to the, yeah. the question. Uh, Jeremy Watley. Yeah, it was okay. from like an 80s. Suzuki, like, right? Yeah, Suzuki. Yeah. And then Rob Baring was cool. Yeah. A Pico gear. A Pico. A Pico. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That was English, I think. Was it? Yeah, okay. I think uh, so. Anyways, let's, let's talk MSGP. Let's do this. Yes. Panic level for the Hurlings fans, Lewis. Any panic level? No, there's 57 motos to go. We're going to do 57 and 3. That's our new <laughs> so, so So, Lewis... Uh, who are you a fan of before I start talking? <laughs> what, a fan as in, like, who do I pick for the title? Are you, a, are you a groupie yes, uh, growing he, up he, to he a is. writer? No, yes, no, he is. No. Before you did that, what did you do? Wait, before I did what? When you were, like, uh, 10 years old, what did you do as a hobby? Did you ride their bikes? Yes, I rode and raced every weekend. Okay, <laughs> how old are you now? How old are you now? Uh, 28. So that was 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, who was your favorite? Uh, 20 years ago. Well, early 2000. My, my, well, my very, very, very first favorite rider was Chad Reed. Like, that was the first one I can remember. Okay, that's a good one. Yep. Pass again. Brilliant. We're on a good track. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, European-wise, um, I can clearly remember, like, Tommy Sell's first race. So that I followed him through, but Josh Coppins was my... Guy. Like, yeah, I but, the, but Josh Coppins was, was basically a, a Brit eventually because he was at Cass Honda, right? And yeah, I thought Cass Honda was a sick team as well. Like, yeah. Cass Honda, I just liked Cass Honda. I don't know why. I just like the vibe. And the so, you like them. everything uh, Brits and Jeffrey Earlings. Is that what He it is? loves Hurlings. 
Oh, yeah? I don't even feel like I like everything British. Like, I don't really care about okay. someone British. Like, who cares? Doesn't affect me. He loves sewer. He talks to sewer every day. He talks to hurlings once a week. Okay, he... he Paul's Jonas, so, also his so, guy. So basically, he's a groupie that just worked himself uh, into uh, the industry? Uh, is that what it is? Uh, or? That's a little harsh. Harsh? Well, no, no. no well, fan, hold on. Fan. I, can, I can explain this. Um, yeah, I started riding when I was like five. Very quickly realized that I was absolutely shit. Like, <laughs> not going to go pro. Like, from seven years old, I very much let go of the dream of going pro. So really? I was like, I, at seven years old, I was the worst of my class. Well, so. maybe I shouldn't have given up. Maybe it's not too late. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> so from seven years old, I completely gave up on being pro. So I thought to myself, what else can I do that's not pro, but still gets me to the races? So from seven years old, I decided I was going to be a journalist. So I just prepped for that my whole life. Wow. And then you did that like, yeah. school project about moto and all this stuff. Yep. Okay. Went to college. Did. I didn't know this was going to be a resume day for DV. No, no, but it, it's good for me to 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 understand. Sure, yeah, to understand okay. the. Yeah, I don't yeah. know him. I know. Okay. You know. Um, we're so yeah, we're that's it all great. Out there. We're getting there's it all a lot of you know. There's a guy that comments, um, do commentaries for MXGP in France. Okay. His name is Maxime. You might know him. I know. He does. Maxime's a good guy. Ma Martin. Yeah. Exactly the same thing as him. As Lewis? Yeah. yeah. When he was a kid, he was a fan of me in uh, like late 90s. Mm -hmm. yep. He was coming with books, with pictures, getting signed. And he started like writing for free in like kids' magazines and then a little bit for like Moto Vero mm -hmm. in France. And now look, he's, you know, commenting yeah. Brussels yeah. Supercross, MXGP in France. Yeah. So, but kind of like the same type of deal. And so Lewis learned a lot from the Pulp Show back in the day. A lot, right, Lewis? Uh, learned, learned a lot of what not to do. <laughs> yeah, that's... You got a point. I, I'll say I oh, got. I did. I never agree. <laughs> we are flying. I got into the media because when I was a mechanic, I, I you couldn't do shit. You couldn't. Oh really? Tie the, from the, break the, hyper. The, the high point national win says otherwise, sir. But um, anyways, uh, I thought the media was a bunch of fans with cameras. I'm like, these guys just are taking photos, and everybody's great. That's what they're doing. Everybody's yeah. great, and they're taking photos. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like I follow hockey and football and all these. Real sports with like you know, real journalists and I'm tough like, oh, questions. Yeah, tough questions. I want to start doing that. Yeah, that's where I found it. Yeah, tough questions. But enough about Lewis's resume. All right, is this oh, okay. Argentina? Let's what go. about? So is he okay? To, he loves hurlings. Is that? I like him too. Yeah. So panic yeah. button I'm, for hurlings. I'm realistic. I'm realistic on hurlings. It's fine. Like he's never been great at Argentina. Monticelli almost killed the he man. He did. He did. <laughs> Um, yeah, he actually clipped his front wheel. I felt like I wasn't sure, but I got yeah. confirmation that it, they actually touched. Yeah. Did you um, see the guy I, uh, apologize before it happened? Did you see that? No. What? Did you see the? You're talking about the finish in the qualifying line jump? race in the qualifying yeah. race. Yes. The the cross jump. Yeah. Did you see the guy in the air? B he sees he's going towards Monticelli. Jeffrey. Yeah, and then he. He says sorry with his. He takes his end off oh, the end of. I didn't notice that. No, I didn't. Check that. <laughs> it, that's the cr cr craziest thing I've seen. Like the guy is all the way sketchy. He's gonna collide with somebody else mid air, yeah. and he's <laughs> taking his end off the <laughs> end of and Says sorry, bro. I'm like, dude, like, hang on. <laughs> Something's gonna happen well, here. You remember uh, Monticelli mm. already got into it with Hurlings, right? That was the the guy who went down that Hurlings landed off. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Um, I got a hot take about Argentina. Are you ready? You guys? Shoot. You sound like my daughter. Why? Is she got uh, hot takes? She got hot takes all day. Here's my hot take. Prado and DeWolf won, but Geyser and Kunin should have won. No. Okay? <laughs> no. I, 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 I kind of agree that Kunin could have won, but I'm less fair on Geyser. I mean, Geyser won the qualifying race, and he got a terrible start in Moto1. And then took off with Moto2. I mean, okay. No? Yeah, did you also see him make like two mistakes in two corners in Moto1? No. Right. It's not like he got a bad start and then was just amazing. He got a bad start and then was like struggling and making mistakes and wasn't as good as the front guys. Okay, so not a hot, so hot take not accepted by either one of you? No, I thought. Uh, no, we're no. going to agree on this. No. Okay. okay. I thought Prado looked very good. Mm -hmm. And. Nowhere close to 100% in terms of charging. Mm -hmm. uh, 
second moto, he was like, he looked like Jet. Slower Jet, obviously, mm -hmm. but the way he was like playing with the bumps, his lines, like we saw him like doing some wheel tap in those to, to go over like um, rollers. Uh, I saw him like playing with breaking bumps, mm -hmm. kind of like, like Jet, jet yeah. like little, he goes in, uh, start breaking, let go, like little wheelie, drop the front end in front of a breaking bump, mm -hmm. go like three, go to that turn. Like as far as like technique and trying to play with the track, that was, uh, I was really impressed, especially in second model with Prado. First okay. model, like, uh, uh, he won, yes, yeah. but the second model, he was just playing with the track and then not even charging. I thought it was like pretty good. Yes. Lewis? Um, this may be my hot take, and I was thinking about this earlier, deciding whether I want to go this far. I believe that may be the best I've ever seen Prado um, perform across a race day. Like, he looks like he's taken a step forward. Um, he kind of justifies... I honestly believe, and he's pretty much said as much, but from round two last year, he was managing the championship, counting points, and like letting Romain not letting him win, but not taking any risks, not putting himself in a position to lose points. Um, and I believe that Argentina confirmed that he was doing that because when the points were equal, he came out and, yeah, was much better than most of the rounds last year. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, I think you can see that, like, I think Supercross did help him. He was a little more aggressive. Mm -hmm. A couple of riders even said to me um, that, like, yeah, he kind of ran us wider than usual. He was a little, he had a little more pep in his step. Uh, um, he's always been like a, kind of like a vicious a little bit, right? Uh, yeah, but, do you agree yeah, on that? I think, I think he's been vicious as far as cross jumping and as bad as it sounds, like dirty stuff like that. But I feel like more aggressive um, running people wide in turns and stuff like okay. that. Less so. Okay, like getting in there and inside and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. yeah, he's always been a cross jumper and done stuff like that, but I put that in a different category to running it up the inside, running people wide, banging elbows, and all of that good stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, I, I get that. Um, I, Honestly, I what, really, should, we, should I just hang up now? Because this yeah. is going very well. I just feel like you and DV are gelling right oh, no, now. I still yeah. have a line for you eventually. I need to, to wait for the right moment. Okay. I've been working on it all day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so I took some. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, I thought the Prado's bike looked looked very good. Uh, the balance was great uh, for like a KTM based bike on that type of track. This track is so deceiving. This is maybe like the Washugo of the GPs, where you think the track is amazing. You have like the greatest mm -hmm, yeah. traction ever. It does look good, right? Yeah, 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 and then it's the biggest piece of shit of the the season, right? It's it's like gravelly, yeah. hard underneath, square edges. Like the those big rollers before the big jumps, mm -hmm. you never know if you're going to catch like an edge and the bike on the high side. Mm -hmm. You see them like being very cautious when they do their scrubs on those very big rollers. Yep. Because if you catch like foot or with your rear wheel like an edge, yep. then you're going to go on the other side and eat shit. Uh, we saw sewer your... He loves sewer. Be yeah. careful. Be careful. Yeah, he shit last year. Yeah, oh, like yeah. Bad last year, right. on, yes. that, on that yeah. track. Yeah. Um, so uh, I thought the track was um, very deceiving as far as like it wasn't nearly as good as it looked. Right. Um, very challenging. And Prado's bike was like, looked very good. He looked very good. Um, I thought Geyser's bike looked a little soft, which helped him on that track mm -hmm. for traction and square bumps. Uh, I thought I thought Fev bike was uh, not great, um, and he was like very tight. You see, like he was um, uh, cautious and scared of the track. He was mm -hmm. he, he looked tight all day. When you tie on the bike, you don't let the bike move in between your legs, and and it has to move eventually. If you all on tight on it, and uh, everything moves, bike and rider, and that's where like it's very choppy and stuff. If you don't want the bike to be choppy, you gotta let him, let it go. You know. What was the post-race report from Sewer Lewis? Um, well, before that, to build on what DV was saying, yeah, Argentina is like it looks amazing, and I don't, but I don't think anyone enjoys racing on it. And I think like it's so deceiving that that's why guys like Sewer and Hurlings, the more aggressive, charging riders, don't do well 
because it's so deceiving that you can't do that. But you have right. to be more finesse, like Prado. Um, and yeah, I think that's why Hurlings didn't take many risks, and Sewer has never done well in Argentina on a 450 in his luck. Um, but yeah, to that point, Sewer was happy enough. That was his best Argentina finish on a 450. So, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, like it's gotten that bad for him there. Surprise of the day, maybe Jonas, Paul's? 100%. Right? Yes. He, yeah, that is where he's best, though. Like, Argentina oh, is. is really good for him. But okay. still, I, I believe that he will carry this into the upcoming rounds. Like, at the end of the day, he's a world champion, mm-hmm. or a former world champion. Um, so I do believe that he can be this good and be on the podium. He's happy with a bike now. Um, they had a lot of teething issues at this point last year, just switching to Honda. Is he testing so I, for Alberto? Is that sort of what's what's going on? Yeah, I think similar to Ferry at Kawasaki with James. Yeah. Uh, Paul's is just like running through things and making sure it's ready okay. for Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. Paul's doing this for us. I'm, I'm yeah, a big fan. Obviously, it was wasted at the weekend because yeah. your guy. Well, we had surgery. How do you uh, – how... Why do you like him so? Ferrado? Yeah, do you know anything about him? Yeah, he's Italian. 354 or something? Yeah. 353? He, he, uh, he's an up-and-comer. He's yeah. a working man's hero. He's got good, great personality. You've never spoken to him in your life? I can see you watching GP, though. MXGP TV. He's got yeah, I'm not sure how you know he's got a great personality, but Lisa sure. Lisa talks to him. Okay. I'm not sure that qualifies anything, but okay. Okay, well, listen, why do you like Jeffrey so much? Ah, I've got to spend a lot of time in the paddock, observe, get close to the situation, understand. Uh, they say sometimes Very different. They say sometimes never meet your hero, so I don't know if I want to meet Alberto. Yeah, that's okay, true. Well, I have hey, a Ferrado jersey up there over there. Dude, that's crazy the because uh, mm. that you say that. Yeah. And uh, in 2003, I was four. I was with Fly, so three or four. Yep. Um, the guy I fly, what was his name? Oh. Alan Picard. Alan Picard. I have a blank. Um, was friend with Bradshaw. Yep. And before San Diego Supercross Friday night, he brought Bradshaw to dinner with us. Oh. Yeah. So I had dinner with him and he was cool, yeah. like nice. But I put him such like, for me, Bradshaw was yeah. anything. More than MJ or. More than Stu too. No, but Stu wasn't even born then. Come well, on, okay, bro. I so, know, but I'm just. But I like, love Stu. I'm just. Saying yeah, I, I like for like uh, the way he pushed the sport and the limit of right. what's doable. Uh, but for me, like uh, in when he came out, like in the '90s, I was 12, 13 years old. Yeah, Bradshaw. early '90s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I was a fan. The I Nolet, the, right. the Bob Warrior Fox, the the, the Troy Lee, Bell Helmet, the everything mm-hmm. I liked about him. So, okay. Uh, so, and. Afterwards, I, I was that was kind of weird, like that he was you, nice to me, and yeah, then I was yeah, like kind of he, you built him up so much, right? N- yeah, but I'm still a fan, but it's a little different now that I met him. Yeah, right. Lewis is the same way with hurlings; he builds him up, you know, <laughs> all this. I, well, I, he'll get he'll get there. There's 57 motors to go. I don't know what else to tell you. Who is no. who are your world title picks, Lewis? I don't know if I heard them. Um. Well, if um, hurlings is healthy, hurlings wins. And by his, kind of nah, but, but uh, don't, no, oh, he's now, not winning. Now we, now we went backwards with this, Lewis. Oh, here no, we go. Uh, I said it. On, on what ground can you make this statement that you've seen the last few years? At one point, you cannot, like, the more season you, you miss, the older you get, and older people get better, uh, you know, it's not going to do that forever, right? Every time you get hurt, you lose, you know, a few tens a lot, half a second, a few tens, you know what I mean? On what grounds you, you say he's going to win the championship? After yeah. going going 8-7 with huge arm pump and waving people by, uh, I don't know who he did that to on that tabletop. He waved him. I think him it was Renault. Renault. And Renault was like out of shape 100% he was sitting down everywhere his legs were shot he has like an ankle brace in carbon fiber that mm. he hurt his ankle he's not 100% and and earlings the, the earlings that was like also vicious and so competitive and give a thumbs up on the on the tabletop that earlings going to be champion this year I guess my rebuttal to that would be easy here 
Lewis. Yeah, I'm speaking slow, picking my words. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm not. I'm fine. No, but it, I'm. It, it's only round one. So like after round five, if this form continues, yeah, it's a different story. Um, Spain has been great to Jeffrey, so I would ex- like I would expect him to be at least in the battle for the podium at round two. If he doesn't do that, then yep, I'm coming round to your line of thinking. And then the third round is a deep sand, which he should win. So if round two, he's closer to the podium, and then the third round he wins, in my mind, like, that's the momentum and the upward trajectory. Um, and to your point about, like, another year gone and Jeffrey's getting older, um, with the exception of Prado, Geyser, Fevra, all of the other title contenders are also getting older and getting closer to the end. It's only Prado who's really maybe moving into his prime or at least working through his prime. Yeah, um, what you're not, when you, not, what you're missing is they haven't missed an entire season of riding and dropping in fitness, dropping in speed, dropping in technique for the four months at a time and having to build that back up to the original potential. It takes time and sometimes people don't do it. After injuries, is that, is that where we're at with Tomac? You think a little bit, still building a little bit from that injury? No, I Tom, mean, Tomac is uh, the. It's not injury related. I agree. I was thinking uh, this earlier. Like Jeffrey's Argentina was very similar to Tomac's Anaheim one. So I don't know. Maybe it follows the same playbook. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, I know that he had a very good off season. He's happy with where he's at. Like it. I have not heard from anyone close to him, and I feel like they would have told me straight up that he's not as good, he's lacking confidence, he's worried, like, it all seems to be there still, from what I've heard and people I've spoken to. So I guess that gives me more faith, but yeah. I mean, since his last GP win, he's had three separate injuries, which is crazy, considering that's only half a year for that happened. So I guess that does add up at some point, but I still have heard enough and believe in him enough that it's still him as the favourite. And I guess also I'm giving him a bit of a a bonus just because of everything he's done in his career. I, like I, I'm, I, I'm yeah, but you cannot give in. give him a title for service rendered. You know, it's not it doesn't happen like that. You know, well, he's going to have to prove way more because. Uh, uh, Seriously, he's two seconds off on the best lap time in second moto. Um, I'm I'm looking at it right now. Um, I know, uh, I know, like I do know that he was playing it safe, and I do I know that Monticelli spooked him, and I also know that the multiple riders who got injured on Saturday that played in his mind of like, okay, just get out of his get get out of here healthy. Um, I guess you can come back to that and say. The second you start thinking like that, yeah, is I was going to say that. Sign. Yep. I don't know. Um, if, if I want to put a parallel on on what I think about Erlings and what people think about him that I don't agree with, is Rossi. Mm-hmm. So Valentino Rossi. Yep. At the end of his I career, I met him once, by the way. He wasn't. Great guy. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't going to win. Right. You know. Bike wasn't there. He wasn't there anymore. Like Marquez was way better, and he had a tough time like getting into the front just once in a while. And that's exactly how I feel about Erlings now. It's like uh, I think the prime is uh, might be gone. I don't say it, it is gone, but that's how oh, I no, feel. Oh yeah, the, pri- the prime is gone. He's even said that. Yeah, the the prime, the Iron Man. Uh, did he crash on the first lap or something, or he started last? Iron Man when you won. Oh, Iron Man. Yeah, it wasn't last, but he was way far back. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, he's not doing Iron Man anymore. Um, yeah. So who's your pick for the title, DV? Uh, oh, if you look at the old picture, mm-hmm. um, starts, uh, experience, um, and then the riding lately, it's tough to go against Prado and that. I was very critical of him in Supercross. Mm-hmm. I thought he was like, s- when you say subpar, is not as good as what you thought. Subpar? Subpar, yes. Yeah. Below average. Yeah. Below average on easy Supercross track. I thought his results were not that great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was critical about this. Uh, but now, when I watch um, Argentina, 
He's in control. Play with the track. He looks very comfortable. I like his position. Great starter. And, and you know he's going to. Yeah. How many races is there? How many motos? Uh, 57 is what? Uh, left? 57 left. 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 So, so it was 60. 60. So 20 yeah. times 3. Uh, yeah. I, uh, they can't. This is ridiculous. Too. What? Canning points for like oh, Saturday. It's, it's insane. David Luongo is going to be in India this weekend. I, I hope I get a chance to chat with him and tell him that. He's going to say, screw you. Uh, he is, yeah. <laughs> He's going to say, who are well, you? <laughs> well, no, he doesn't know who I am. Oh, uh, yeah? According to Lewis. Oh, he, okay. knows, he knows who Steve is. Maybe not for good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> who does? Who does? That's the question. Uh, who that? <laughs> no, the qualifying race is a joke. That's an absolute joke. Yeah, don't give points. Like, it, we give points to eat races. Like, it, no, it, stop it, doing this you shit. Get, you get no money. You got to race again. It's already a dangerous sport. And yeah. I think... Yeah, the the race itself, just do qualifying mm -hmm. is dumb. Uh, I think the sprint in MotoGP is dumb also. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Saturday qualifying. Uh, so, you know it's going to be, his average on 60 stars is going to be two or three. Right, right. Right? Yeah. It's insane. That's something Erlings is not also capable of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other guys too is so yeah. good, and well. I think that's really important. But he also has uh, after the first race, and then the other guys. There's nobody that's other than Geyser, yeah. right? Geyser might be the main main guy. Uh, yeah. Lewis. So looking at MXGP, Lewis from Argentina, like you know, Jonas is a big surprise. Hurlings kind of did what you thought. You know, Prado, Geyser, Febre, all standard. Did anything else uh, surprise you? Uh, well, if you want me to go really, like, off the beaten path, uh, Kevin Hawkmo was really good. Okay. Um, tenth overall, yep. first place on a 450. Like, he won one moto in his MX2 career. Like, he's a small guy. Mm -hmm. um, he's on a satellite Honda team from France. Like, I never had him pegged as an MXGP rider, I meaning 450 class. Um, so, yeah, for him to start with a top 10 is a massive statement, I feel. Um, I would say that's the biggest surprise purely because I know, and I think we all know, that Jonas can be yeah. uh, running around the podium. Like I said, he's a former world champion. Um, maybe I was surprised that Jeffrey wasn't closer to the front. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's, it's weird because it, he was, he's better prepared than last year. And yet it went a little worse. I don't want so to talk. Weird. I don't want to talk about hurlings anymore. You people, you you people, do this all the time. But, but this, they're blinded. They, they conditioned maybe. because he was so good. That's I, understandable. He was so good, but these. Uh, they, oh, they 2018. Don't, what a year! Hey, when uh, 2018? That's when he came to Iron Man, or no? No, that was 2017. Oh, okay. Uh, 2018 was when he won uh, pretty much every race, bar like two. But. But but two. Ah, uh, but two. No okay. one can understand him, DV. He's. I said bar two. You know. And people thought I had a bad accent. Yeah. You know. <laughs> to tell you that's, <laughs> well, that's, that's a tough blow for me, but. <laughs> I did. I did like your comment. In, hey, in that was my line that I was waiting to use the whole show. That was my line. I'm sorry, Lewis. Um, I, I was. I had to try to find a line all day, and I said, eh, and I heard you speak. Obviously, like. British and I've been in America for 25 years so it's kind of more difficult for me to understand but um, so that was the line I was L trying Lewis to Lewis on Instagram told somebody everyone should have an American accent <laughs> <laughs> um, Lewis, no, there's a lot of that out there there's a lot of that out there what about uh, what about Ben Watson on the beta 12 oh Are we, well what? I didn't want to bring it up unless you did oh but it was very very good he passed Jeffrey early in the second moto and Guided Jeffrey through the pack. Jeffrey just latched on and followed him through to the front. Ah, yes, so. yes. We've seen that before. If we've seen that once, we've seen it a hundred times. I mean, I mean, I back champions. What can I tell you? Yeah. Um, no, it seems like the beat is really better um, this year. I mean, maybe not much, but mm -hmm. it's at least more competitive. I think they still struggle out of the gate. Um, power is definitely the weakness there. But no, it was really good. Like. Argentina is a weakness for him, I would say, as well, and a weakness for that bike. Mm -hmm. So I think I thought it was a really good start. When is that uh, bike good? What was that? When, where is that bike supposed to be good at? Well, the best thing about it is handling. So Okay, so I tighter mean, tracks? I guess so, but I mean, I don't really feel like there's any track where a handling bike 
just suddenly takes off and excels. Um, and you're yeah, across. And you're across. <laughs> there well, we go. I don't want to break news, but no. <laughs> um, um, yeah, no. But yeah, the strength of that bike is handling. From the very first time that Van Horvick rode it, he said it handled like a mountain bike. And every single rider I've spoken to since has agreed. Yeah, and, uh, Nichols, yeah, told, just... Nichols told me that too. And Not then, a mountain yeah. bike, but Nichols said the handling of the bike. So I, I did yeah. my show with uh, with Nico Oben today. Yep. And he actually tried one of the factory bikes. Oh, he did. And he said the same thing. Like the ending was fine. And the worst thing for him is like he has a huge engine brake. Okay. That it feels like you riding like a 550. Yeah. yeah. Like very kind of heavy yep. inertia. It's going engine. slowly. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. Oh, look at Nicol- Nicholas Oban testing. Um, MX2, Lewis, uh, were you disappointed with your preseason picks second moto? Honestly, we, since speaking of Simon Lagenfelder, mm-hmm. um, he's got a problem. You look through his career, he always is great in the first moto, never good in the second. I have a theory. Um, he tests in Italy near the Ducali team, trains there. I believe that he needs to get to Belgium and work under Joel Smets because this is too much of a pattern at this point. If you look last year, he won the first moto like nine times and never backed it up. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I honestly believe that if he just would work under Joel Smets in Belgium, then that would okay. fix the issue. I read that this was DeWolf's only second GP win. Like, what? Yeah. I, I thought... I. Yeah, I did not have. I figured he'd won three to four, five. Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, like, yeah. I think a lot of people don't want to admit it, but up until this point, the Wolf's career has been very underwhelming, um, a, based on mm-hmm. what he was tipped to do. Right. Is there any truth or something I heard about his team or the KTM group putting a timer on his phone? <laughs> uh, I've not heard that, but it maybe wouldn't surprise me. Really? I know. From really other things I've heard, and then I could, they, I could they had find a, out and get back to you. Yeah, I won't, that's what I heard. I heard that, that and they kind of like tell him like just to stop moving his ass because yeah. he was like just not getting shit done, right. you know, and not being serious about racing and stuff. Right. Uh, that might have been like three, four months ago or mm-hmm. after the last season maybe. Right. Um, but I understand what you're saying about uh, Lagenfelder. That's the first time I say this name. Um, <laughs> because uh, Rossi looks kind of like the same. It uh, yeah. s- seems like he, he ran out of steam in the first moto, and second moto had nothing left. He was on the one moto format. Yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you thought it was 2003. You know, yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. It, this second moto, you got to go. Right. It was like dead. And um, Nico said also something about uh, he doesn't think like it's good for him to be down there because nobody knows about training and it's just the college son doing it. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. Oh, and, look at DV and, 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 and Lewis agreeing on and and Tom Vial, for yeah. example. Yep. And his uh, dad Fred that raced with yep. me, obviously. Uh, they swear us by uh, Smets. They think that they, they he, do? he yeah. was like amazing help. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like I, I honestly believe um, that Tom Vial wouldn't have been as good as he was without Smet. And I think even Tom Vial would say that. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I, I can attest to that, yes. Um, and even like Andrea Adamo, he's Italian. Last year he started working with Joel Smets and look at how his career turned around. Um, Smets is employed by Austria to train Austrian riders. So I don't understand why Lagenfelder, especially after last year, isn't doing that. But building on what you said about Rossi. Um, I know that between motos, he was like getting water thrown on him, laying on the <laughs> ground. Um, and it was like 18 degrees Celsius. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Malin said it was like uh, in the mid-20s. I don't know if he was lying, but... Um, um, I think I heard that the, the highest it got was 21. Ah, okay. All right. Um, but, um, so, which is like uh, 70 degrees, degrees for user American, 69, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I also think the training in Italy hurts because the tracks don't get as rough. Like, it's a bike set up. It's not that good for testing. Like, I think I just, yeah, get out of Italy. I think every rider should. It's quite obvious that Belgium, Holland is the place to be to conquer MXGP. We've seen enough of that. Uh, Lewis, you, I asked you, I think, I don't think on a show, or maybe it was on a show, but uh, I kind of asked you about Triumph picking up those guys and Harup, and you said he can be a podium guy. You, you said that, and I was like, okay. Well, he called it. Like on the, on the Triumph, and, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
Ah, third place, triumph. Good job. Gets the first yeah, podium. Yeah, second moto as well. Yeah, yeah, really good. So nice call on that. Um, you you mentioned him being a podium guy, and and there he is. Yeah, Harrop's really good. I'm most interested now to see if he's going to become a title guy, or at least in that picture. Like, I genuinely believe he's good enough to do that. I don't think he can win the title outright. Uh, Lagenfelder, Kuhnman, the Wolf are better, but he can definitely be in the mix um, if he can figure out consistency. But he's been on the Dixon bike for a few years, so it's just nice for him to have a stable program. Mm-hmm. Stable flights, stable bike, um, and I expect him to make the most of it. I mean, it's his last year in MX2, so if he can perform, I'd imagine Triumph will give him a 450 ride. Sure, yeah. Um, DV, have you ever heard this, the term slowly, slowly, catchy monkey? No. Well, Lewis Is told that us a British thing? It's a British thing. Yeah. He taught us this on Friday night. It means... Be patient, move slowly, and you'll get your goal. You'll achieve your target. Because DV just told us a story on the commercial break, a French story about the goat and a cauliflower. Yeah, that's, uh, and then the not seeing farther than your nose. Yeah, not seeing farther than your nose. Yeah, so I've also, heard the nose one before. Yeah, that's a, that's a French uh, yeah, yeah. saying. And then there's a goat and a cauliflower. But, uh, are you guys talking about the, the wolf? The wolf? The wolf? The wolf? The we, wolf? We did talk about him. Yeah, but briefly, right? Well, I don't know. He's the guy's insane. His style. Yeah, style looks like yeah. Bradshaw yeah. with Anderson. With, uh, yeah, I was thinking and Anderson. Like Anderson, all over the Bradshaw, right, like right. a lot of like uh, mid nineties, like Americans yeah. kind of yeah, with all like over the bike. newer guys, like amazing. I saw, I think, uh, some footage. I don't watch MotoGP because at uh, three or four o'clock in the morning, I you know, I gotta sleep sometime. Um, but I think Sardinia or something last year, he was doing some stuff. I was like, dude, like I'm in love with this kid. Like mm-hmm. he's very very good and he shows some great stuff too like you did not see him like all models in the last 10 minutes like he showed up and mm-hmm. he was there and and then you have the other brothers uh the sasha conan like the the least good right <laughs> of the two okay i don't know how you say it but um the guy's like wide open everywhere mm-hmm. and then when i watch a, a gp race he crashes twice a model. Yeah, he crashes, like a lot. <laughs> he crashes he crashes a lot. He crashes a lot. He crashes like twice a lap. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, at one point, whatever you guys are doing, whatever you're training, what if it's not working? Well, like, Just, apparently the dad handles everything and he's a little. Yeah, at one intense. point, like maybe he got it good to get to that point yeah. here and now. Yeah. But, uh, dude, the kid is. I don't watch many, but every time this kid was on the ground, <laughs> one or twice a model. I'm like, how? He's, um, he's Hardy Munoz of MX2. Oh, Hardy yeah. was uh, Hardy was good this weekend. Uh, oh, it was, thank you, Hardy. He's sketch though. Oh, he is. <laughs> he is so sketch. But no, Kunen is not that sketch. He's a better rider. He's more technical. Yeah. But at one point, it's like what I was talking about earlier in the show. Uh, just ride well first, you know. Mm-hmm. Find and your then, lines, yeah, work and on then you. charge instead of trying to charge no matter what, and and just like. Hope you're not going to eat shit. Because that's kind of like, oh, I feel like this kid is, is racing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to end up getting her also. Lewis, do you hear the brothers are coming next year? Uh, 2026 is the official word. I okay. think there's a chance it could get brought forward a year. Okay. But I know that that hasn't even like got off the ground yet. It's mm-hmm. just the potential but, there. And right. speaking of um, the wolf, he really wants to come, but he doesn't really have a path to do that yet a path yeah like there's no deal in place there's no like roadmap yeah. for him to get to america whereas the Kunans are contracted with austria for america yeah but dude uh, the, a guy like this like he would go anywhere mitch will sign him tomorrow who i don't know he said he wants yes. to come to america for a while and he still hasn't got anything like he's he, put it out can there he ride indoors do, he's a dutch guy so super no, no or? seriously the way he rides yeah it doesn't take much to get it, especially nowadays on the style track we have. Mm-hmm. Look, look what Tom's doing after one year and kind of being like a shy guy and kind of uh, going like at his own pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Wolf is more like exuberant yeah. in his riding style and like yeah. technical and stuff. I'm sure he'd be, he'd be fine. Okay. He'd be fine. But seriously, but like Mitch will sign this kid like tomorrow, I'm sure. 
Oh. Yeah, don't you, like, I was having this conversation with someone last week. Don't you believe that, like, 10 years ago, Mitch would have already signed the Wolf? Like, I feel like that slowed down a bit for everyone, including Mitch, of, like, pulling talent from MX2. But I feel like if this was 15 years ago, um, yeah, Mitch would already be knocking on his door. Yeah, but the thing is, nowadays, all the teams in Europe don't want guys to race Supercross. So we don't know the level. This is still... Uh, this is still... Um, a country where Supercross is 80% of your contract. Mm -hmm. You got to perform in, in Supercross. That's why we can take some example. Like Alice's like, um, lifetime um, in, in Supercross was short, kind of, mm -hmm. because he kind of met a certain uh, uh, ceiling yeah. that he couldn't go past. Right. Um, So, just, uh, you can do, like, the same thing I did with uh, Solby 22, 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. I called Mitch, and I said, you know, give I have him a, a tryout, right? We'll, we'll bring you him to the test track. Give him, like, a half a day, like a few hours. Yeah. Just bring a bike, and uh, you'll see. All right. He well, did that, and then he went and podium <laughs> used on the next uh, week. Tell the wolf that we'll get Mitch a half a day. No, but it's... it's It's just an image, <laughs> right? I know, no, I know. But yeah, because I guess like, I'm trying to think. The last time that Mitch signed a guy who was kind of unknown in Supercross would have been Rattray. Townley? Yeah, but that Townley was before Yeah, Rattray, Rattray yeah. yeah. But there were... Because, like, Tonus, we knew Tonus could do it. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, was Tonus the last MXGP guy to go for Mitch? Maybe, yeah, maybe that Tonus like. experiment ruined but, him. But, uh, <laughs> Honestly, I think so. <laughs> yeah, but... I, yeah. I would think, you think the Wolf is better than Tonius? Uh, as a, yes. As a rider? Yeah. Maybe, right? Tonus? I'll tell you what, I'll put on my agent hat, I'll ring the Wolf tomorrow, I'll ring Mitch, and I'll, There you go. I'll get to work. There we go. Uh, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey with the yeah, Wolf. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Yeah. All right, we got to run. Anything else? Okay. DV for um, Lewis? Lewis is on the East Coast, so it's midnight where he is. Yes, he, come on. He's doing the love he always wanted to do. Okay. He's talking to uh, the emperor of the uh, U.S. The emperor. <laughs> of the U.S. Did media, remember L the thing? Lewis said uh, that his favorite race ever is 05 San Diego. He loves yeah. that race. Uh, when I got lapped, uh, yeah, yeah. getting he says fault he, of he, it. He says he loved when you got lapped. That was his favorite. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a Chad <laughs> Reed fan, that's why, right? Mm. Ch Chad yeah. won that race. Yeah, Chad won. Yeah, last lap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ricky ate shit, but like, Ricky was behind, right? Ricky was behind. Chad got him with like two laps to go, and then Ricky pinned it through the whoops. But the he was time. second. Yes. He was trying to win, yeah. right? And yeah. he ate shit. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? I was, was there. Just, it was just a good race because, like, Ricky had won six races in a row coming up to that. Um, so that, And then Ricky got the whole shot, led the whole way, and then, like, no one. He won six races in a row. Are you sure about that? Well, I'm. Um, Five, six, four. Like he, he didn't win Anaheim one, and then he won from Phoenix to San Diego. So whatever that number is, but enough races in a row where it was like, this is Ricky's season. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, a few races. We'll say. God, what if DV? Hey, Lewis. What if DV didn't do that damn photo shoot with Maeda? He doesn't even know. He wasn't even born. He knows. I, I back all of DV's life decisions, and I would never criticize my new friend. <laughs> Okay. You just don't want to be pulled rutley. I have so many yeah. I made so many bad decisions in my life. Fuck you you, you have you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I could write a book with, with my you bad you, decisions. You don't even work. You have billions in the bank. Yeah, but that you're doesn't fine. mean you're, like you're good. Your decisions are great. It doesn't mean fantastic. you're good. What is Lobby comes with uh what, what is he doing? Did you buy a four thousand dollar Apple Vision? The big is wearing the virtual reality goggles in the in the in the studio. No 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 just No, he's gotta sit there. Put him there. It's better for the cameras. Are we going to take a break? I need to chew. No, no breaks. No more breaks? No more breaks. Lepig's Do we here. get paid overtime? <sighs> yes. Right. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Lewis, uh, always always a joy to um, to have you on. And you're going to be in Thank studio you. with your friend Kellen coming up? Uh, yes, I'm always available anytime. I think we can all agree that this went much better than anyone expected. Agreed. Uh, 100%. I thought DV would be yelling at you. So, yeah, I, I agree. You know? I was honestly ready to retire after this phone call. No. How bad I it would go. You know, if you have your own opinion and then you're not out there and being like on another planet, yeah. 
You know? Yeah. I'm fine with you. Okay. You know? Well, now I feel less special. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, all right, buddy. Thanks for call- calling in. We'll see you this weekend. Cool. Thank you for having me. All right. See you. That's Lewis Phillips, everybody. Brought to you by the folks at OGO. Uh, before I get too far on the show, I want to thank the Pro Filter guys, Pulp 20 at the checkout. Uh, pick up an easy to use, pre oiled, ready to use premium air oil fil- air filter, oil filter for your next service. The Le- big's leaving now. No. Okay. Uh, thanks to the folks at ProFilter.com, Maxima as well. Pulp 20 is the code to save with Maxima, uh, Maxima USA 927. Are you using Maxima two stroke oil for your Yamaha? What would you use? Uh, I wanted my bike to smell good. So 927. Yeah. And yeah. I, I got a little, uh, so I did like a 10 liters. Uh-huh. I still do like a, a 2% like uh, metric stuff. Oh, right? yeah. I don't do like the, so it's 50 to 1. 50, okay. Yeah. 50 to 1. Yeah. yeah. I guess you can with, with the, the 927. You yeah. put, put your head. What are you doing, LeBig? What's your friend doing? I'm testing I stuff. I don't know why you know, he has I'm Apple Vision I don't here. know either. I don't What's know What's that either. deal? Yeah, I'm, I'm testing new, you know, new Pulp technology. Pulp 20 at Maxima and Pro so Filter. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm a real Motul guy. Motul? Oh, French because company. Because I'm yeah, French yeah. company, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But it got bought by a crappy company, I think, oh, or something. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a Motul 800 always. Since I was like in the 80s, well, my dad I, put that in my bike. If you want to smell good, you b- yeah. should have got 927. But I bought some okay. on motorsport.com okay. with my coupon code. Yeah, yeah. And I put that. But I wrapped it. And it's not like when I showed up in 1996 at Castec Lake uh-huh. track uh-huh. Uh, by uh, Six Flags. Yeah. And everybody was on the two stroke, and it's sm- that smell, that recent yeah. kind of smell. Yeah, it does smells the same. But mine doesn't smell like that. That's I don't think. Right. What are you What are you looking at, LeBig? Le what's What are you? I it's clicking. A, I took a yeah. few photos, and I want to see how good they are. Because it, watching porn it, right fo- now. it follows, <laughs> it follows the Apple Vision. Yeah, it follows your eye uh-huh. to just to move past oh. it, and then you can use your finger like it's this. It's like a like a laptop it's a click. screen. You like click. An iPad. You can click, click like that. Okay. All right. I thought uh, he was playing with the nibble. That's, that's, that's <laughs> Le, Le Big USA. <laughs> dot com. How are you, buddy? Everything good? Yeah, everything good. Yeah, all right. How's the website going? How, you know, he, he's now a competitor in the podcast world. Our friend. Yeah. Here. yeah. He's good at it, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if we got to do something because he's going to take our listeners and viewers. No, I think he's okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's it's complimentary. It's just a lot to, you know, yeah. you can listen to yes, a lot of different yeah, stuff. Yeah, I only want to do one, t- uh, one thing a week. That's it. Uh, I can't do more. Please, uh, if you're French and you want to get all American motocross news, go to thelibigusa.com. Sign up. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mountain biked at all lately, buddy? Uh, no, it's just I came back uh, yesterday from Birmingham, so I didn't have time yet. Oh, you were in Florida all week. Yeah, I was yeah, in Florida yeah, yeah, all week. Right. Yep. Actually, you got luckier than I did. I heard, yeah, the rain, rain, was, yeah. rain was jacked up. Yep, yep. Uh, how's Dylan Ferrandez, by the way, speaking of French riders? Uh, Are we okay? Yeah, he's okay. He has a like, uh, bone bruise, you know, the bone knee. Bruise? Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Okay. So he was kind of uncomfortable on, yeah. uh, on Saturday all but day. But he's racing this weekend? Uh, maybe not. I won't. I won't go there. Oh. Maybe not. Oh, bummer. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he's been so damn consistent all year long, right? He's been 5 to 10, riding well, been the first f- privateer bike, quote unquote. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, the last two races have just gone to shit. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they, they think, I mean, this knee injury, I mean, it's can, it can be tough. I mean, did he do it in practice or did he do uh, it no, in Daytona? No, he did it in Daytona. In Daytona. Okay, yeah, Daytona. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Did, did you see his crash yeah. on social media? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like AP, but yeah. he landed like the execution. Was perfect. It was like a ten out of ten. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like he yeah. was. Uh, but obviously, uh, when you land like this on yeah. your feet, is. But yeah. that was same as AP. Same, 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 thing. same jump. Yeah. 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 Uh, same now, are you are you talking to Dylan at all? Or how are you guys? I haven't talked to him since I can. Sh- I sell the text. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you. Last time, I no, I talked to him. Oh. Last year at Anaheim, maybe. Okay. For like, fifteen seconds, and maybe at uh, Memphis. Mumford's? Also say hi uh, okay. quick. All right. But as far as like communicating on a purpose. But there's no bad blood. I, I guess so. But not me. I don't care. LeBig, what, Le what is the status of Dylan? 9, and 10, 22. Last time I th- okay. he texted me back. Oh, I texted him back. Yeah. Uh, 9, 10, 22. LeBig, how yeah. is the relationship? With DV and, and, and Dylan? Dylan yeah. I have no idea. I do, I do want you to know about it. I mean, I don't know. It, this thing okay. went to shit. It's easy. Like me... I'm uh so he does his uh 
and I've told this story. Yeah, right? yeah. He's starting riding uh, again in Florida after like a thumb injury uh -huh. during the nationals. I find out on uh, Instagram, no big deal, right? Yeah, uh, no big deal. Uh, right around like you don't have to tell me you're going on the on the on the so turn, track, turn track. Just yeah. yeah, no big deal. And then he finally sent me a text and uh, say, oh. I'll I got back on the bike and doing some stuff. I've been doing some stuff on my own, like mm -hmm. for like a, a physical training. Uh, and I'm, I'm fine. So I give him a few pointers for Unadilla because it was a comeback at Unadilla that, that yeah, year. Yeah. So that's 22. Uh, and everything's fine. A couple of weeks later, there's a post on Vital saying that he fired me. But he didn't, right? <laughs> so then a few days later, I get a text that says, Hey, what's this story about me firing you? I saw a motor dog. Like yeah. those guys are crazy and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I saw it. Not a big deal. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. You're like probably uh, Le Big probably started it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Something happened like that. So I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. I know he's staying. He's taking some time off. And then uh, towards the around the time we're gonna start like yeah, getting grinding, yep. right? He sent me this text saying, uh, you know, like. I think uh we're not gonna keep going. Uh I don't think you I don't think you're motivated hundred percent to do this. Plus I want you to work only with me mm. next year. Yep. And I gave my world to to Marv to help Marv in California so yep. and go back and forth. Yep. And um and I say, you know what, like sorry, like good luck for the future and uh, you know. Yeah. And that's yeah, it. Yeah. I'm oh. I can do it. I heard he, I already let go let Button go too recently, his agent. Oh uh, yeah? Yeah. Just he said, yeah, we're done. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe, maybe some changes. Yeah, yeah, you you got to change. But the thing is, for me, uh, and <laughs> I may be the worst guy to deal with ultimatums, right? <laughs> like, if you don't stop working with Marvin, or if you don't work with anybody else, yeah, and you have to work with me yeah, only. Yeah, if yeah. not, it's a no. Yeah, it's even if I want to, <laughs> even if it's the best money, in principle. I will not do it. Yeah, yeah. And that's my integrity in there. Right, right? right. My and then plus my world, way before that, Marv says, Hey, I want you to I'm gonna try one more year. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Uh, I'm I'm in California now, we'll do this, we'll uh, we're gonna have fun, we'll take yep. it as right. as fun as we can. And I'm like, Okay, I will help you. And once again, me never contract. Yep. It's yeah, yeah. It's you know, yep. we don't even shake hands. But my world yeah. is my bond, right? right? Is that what they say? Yeah. Um, Something about golden cauliflowers too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do you think it would have been different if he would have approached it differently, like an ultimatum or anything? Or you st you yeah, still but you know, yeah. you know, Dylan or do Camillo. you think he knew that you would say no, so he said it? No, nah, I don't think that's smart. Okay. He's not that smart. Okay, he's right, not going to okay. play that game. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying, right? Where he's like, hey, no, uh, he's, he's not. A, his name is not Christopher Nolan. Okay, you know, he's right. Dylan Ferrandez. Okay, yeah. Uh, LeBig, how is the website doing? How's everything going? Your it's awesome. It's good? How much yeah. money do you make? Uh, a lot. He makes a lot. Yeah. yeah he makes how many a lot. paying subscribers? Uh, we want to know. Yeah, just how, how much you make this shit show here? We uh, want to know. I mean, I think I said it on the show. Yeah. Like what? F well, half I a mil? Half a mil? No. To pay for this ceiling? No. I'm in. I'm in huge debt with this house. No shit. Yes, I have a lot, big mortgage. You know. Um, Who pays his debt? Gets richer. That's the French thing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Another French I'm saying. A, I'm up to three tonight. <laughs> Marx, and I'm gonna, Marx is writing them all down. I'm going to start a book. <laughs> um, so, no, is everything's good? Though? No, everything's yeah, good. Yeah, it's yeah. been, it's been uh, 12, yeah. 13 years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we st well, the, the number of subscribers is still going up. You went to an only subscriber format three years ago? Four no. Four years ago? No, no, no. Ten years ago. What? Yeah. No. Yeah, I did, I did the well, two. Only one year, right? Or yeah, two? Uh, it was two years without subscribing yeah. thing. And I said I was tired of getting. Ten years ago. I didn't you started know you in what, 2011 or 2011. 2011. I didn't know you 10 years ago. Yeah, so you all are shit. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. He's been in Vegas since 98. I know, but I haven't been here since then. I, I, you know. You've been here for like what, 04 or 05? Yeah, I moved in 06. 06? Yeah. Um, so, all right. It's going well, though. Subscri yeah. Like, I would love to do subscriber-only podcasts. That would be fantastic. The amount of downloads we get, if I got a 25 cents for every download. What are you waiting for? Uh, I don't know, because Apple won't let us. Mark's told me not to do it. I don't know. It's just, yeah. But that would be great. You don't have to, you have to go through Apple to do that. Yeah. I have an app. I mean, if you want to subscribe to oh, the big, well, you, you, don't go, you, do, you don't Touchy go on an subject. app. 
Because yeah, they're going to text you who like 25%. Can you, Marks? can you get him your app guy, Lebeck? Marks builds it. Yeah. Steve needs an app guy. Yeah. I My have guy an app guy, awesome. too. No, he's, 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 yeah. uh, he's happy. He can't even zoom in the pictures. And no, the we're shit. working on it. We're yeah, working on stop it. it. That's the only Fuck thing. Yeah. Don't think that's the only thing right now. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we have a Got few an kids. app. Uh, uh, app that, uh, so I have an app for that. What about zooming photos? Let me ask you this, though. This is a question I thought I thought about for you when we lined you up for today. So... There's a long legacy of French guys racing America, mm -hmm. and from Purcell to Marvin to this idiot to, to uh, Ferrandez. Hold, hold, hold on, what? You forgot. You're gonna get in trouble. Oh. You forgot the most legendary one. Well, yeah, but not. He wasn't around then. Yeah, but don't forget him. He's no, gonna get JMB pissed. and yes, a, a, yes. okay. He, but the point is, is if you don't have a French guy here, say Dylan hangs it up, goes back or whatever, and there's doesn't appear to be a French guy coming or the next guy. I don't know. Right? Is your is your business as viable? Yes. Like, do you need the French guy, Libby? Yes, I'll answer for Okay. Him. I say it's better to have a French guy. It That's is, what I'm saying. It is better, but we have some years when you know Marvin was in Jordan and everything, and yep, yep. we st we still okay. we were there. We so still your, go around. Your readers, listeners, are not focused on what you have to Dylan. understand yeah. is okay. French people don't speak English. Yeah. Right. I know. So they don't listen to you. They don't listen to Wagen. They don't listen to, you know, uh, Don Maida stuff, right, right. Lewis stuff, yeah. even less Lewis stuff. They wouldn't. I, I can't even understand him. Too. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, Lewis. But Lewis. Okay, I got yeah, a but, job. But so yeah, so you don't need a French guy. But there's a huge following. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. So and it's not based on a French rider's results or it's better. I'm it's sure better. there's yeah. spikes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Because I one mean, thing I've noticed with you is you are always making sure, whether it's Marvin or Dylan or this guy or whoever, you get the French interview. Yeah, that's my yeah. priority. Right. I mean, after right. the race, I need to get those guys. That's the bread yeah. and butter. Yeah. But, yeah, but once again, I mean, like DB said, I mean, those guys, they don't speak English yeah. at all. Yeah. So an interview at Race or so anybody, yeah, yeah. they don't care. They don't give, they, but, they, they don't understand. Right. But so it, the, but the thing, in, and he's right, uh, for example, Tom Vial in Daytona is when, I mean, we got a spike in the su subscribers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I guess you know when I say there isn't a next one, Vial could be the next guy. Yeah, I, I don't look at him right now as a DV level dude, but maybe he will be. Right? Why not? Yeah. yeah why, yeah. Not? why not? Yeah. Why, why, well, because why are you doubting him? I, I'm just. I just. I don't know. Dylan won four titles, and like this guy was running premier races. I don't know. I need to maybe wrap my head around Vial being better than that. You won a motor car. You won a national last year. That was great. And you know. Yeah. He's so, um, so you don't need the French guy, but. But your interviews are in English with the English guys, yep. and that's okay. Or you translate them? No, I, everything is subtitled. Oh, okay. So yep. uh, what what I do usually I, I ask a question in English, then in French, and when I'm done with the French, it's just answer the question. Yep. So and after that I got I, I put the subtitle. Okay. All right. So it's a little bit longer for me that you guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it takes uh, f like three f f uh, three minutes interview it takes um, maybe an hour, forty five yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm very um um. um <laughs> I'm very uh, perfectionist. Yeah. I'm trying to get the world, you know, when Why don't you use uh, AI? I tried. It's, it's, it's not working. Mark's can yet. do it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I busy. mean, AI, the whoops, I mean, the technical stuff, yeah. I mean, it's... it's yeah, it's I, did, I did some AI stuff, and then hoops, whoops, when I yeah. speak in French, it, it, it writes hoops. Racer X, I, right. I have Kelly, this girl, that trans does my transcribing, and she's amazing, right? And she knows the sport. So she knows all the names. She knows how to spell Villamin. She knows all these names, right? And then Racer X, in a cost-cutting move, went to AI for – so you just submit the Word doc, and they give it back to you. Or you, somebody, you submit the audio file, and they send you back a Word doc, and it's – Horrible. I mean, the editing of it, you could – the time that it takes to edit, I just paid – I continue, continue paying this girl because she's great. I'll, yeah. I'll skip the AI translation you know so yeah i can see what i mean you're saying. For, for me from english to french i mean the ai is, is pretty good yeah i mean when i you know i translate like a press release and yeah. something i just need to tweak a little things but uh it's i mean off off start yeah. i mean it's pretty good right uh stefan so you mean to, you're cheating on the translating I mean, press release, nobody <laughs> who cares uh, about them. But Stephon I'm Lebron, still writing my own stuff. LeBigUSA.com <laughs> brought to you by <laughs> the folks at Off-Road Warehouse. Pulp MX is the code to save. Get your truck to the track in style. They install everything they sell from suspension kits, tires and wheels to steps, bed accessories and more. Pulp MX is the code to save with OffRoadWarehouse.com. Thank you to those guys. Motorcycle industry jobs, job of the week. Industry, upload your resume for free today. If you're looking for a job, this is a great job board. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, job of the week. Kawasaki, full-time job in Nebraska, home of Denny Stevenson. 
Uh, senior customer care lead. So this is a uh, customer care department at Kawasaki. Coordinates and leads activities and for Kawasaki's retail customer base and dealers. Thank you to MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. They bring in you Stefan Legrand, <laughs> Le Big USA. Thank you uh, for coming on. And, uh, yeah, we got much more here to talk about. Okay, so the last easy now. All right, let's focus here. Yeah. Focus, please. Go ahead. No, but um, you were, like, making money right now. Yeah, so yeah, we don't want to say anything. We'll so leave you alone yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can, you know, yeah. you have to pay for all this stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. Have you been to this new studio? Yeah, yeah. First time? Okay, yeah, yeah you've been I've here been before. there before. Right, okay, good. Um, all right, let's talk Tom Vial, shall we? Uh, I did think Daytona win was a Tom – that was just because it was Tom Vial. And he was really good there last year, a little outdoor. I don't know, just – like he's creative. If that's how you win at Daytona, and I didn't put a lot of stock into that. Well, this weekend he got the start. McAdoo's right behind him. Everyone else is right behind him, and the dude pulled away. So on our review pod, JT was like, "Wow, well, let's see with real whoops. You know, let's see a track with big whoops." Where are you at with Vial? Yeah, like, is this for real? I agree with uh, yeah. We, I agree with JT. We I mean, it was it was like a step in Daytona. Yeah. Then we get another step yeah. in in Birmingham, and yeah. now there's another one waiting. This is the the whoop step. So I think, but in Daytona something happened. I think in his head yeah. he said, you know what, I can do it. I can, I can beat it. those yeah. guys. And then he, he did it again in, in in Birmingham. So I think right now he's in a position that okay, I beat those guys. I'm gonna do it again. But there's a whoop situation. Yep. Let's see how Indianapolis is going to be. It's a triple crown as well. Yep. But uh, he's a good starter. I mean, yeah. like DV oh, was saying, right, right. In, in GP was incredible. So um, so DV title guy, like the rest of the way? Like maybe uh, not win, but like right in? Yeah, title guy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, obviously, now, like, uh, there's, you know, when you won out of, yeah, maybe f Shock's not going to be champion. Um there's Benick either. So you have Amaker, Digan, Brian, McAdoo, Vial mm -hmm. with it 15 Is points. That five? Was that five guys you just yeah, did? Okay. 15 yeah, within 15 points. Yep. Uh, yeah, one of those guys. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Tom starts good. I'm the same way. Uh, I thought last year in Supercross, no progression. He stayed like a yeah. – his, his best race was his first race, and then it went. No, nah, yeah. he got seventh. A couple of years, a couple of races after he got fourth, but um, did not see like any progression. Mm -hmm. It was flat and very average at best. Um, outdoors, you know, start like great, great. Got passed by a few guys at the end of motos, pala and stuff. Bike chasing the bike. Bercy, he wins a race. Um, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. And after he was uh, did a podium in Ironman, go to Bercy, he was racing with Bourdon in Bercy. Yeah. I was like, dude, not a good look. Yeah, yeah. Something going and on. Joe was a lot better. Yeah. And then show up uh, first race. Okay. Decent race. Big crash. And now he's taking off. Yeah. But I'm the same way as JT. I need to see. I think Daytona was exactly the best fitting condition mm -hmm. for his riding style and what he's used to. Like if you go to Belgium, uh, there's a lot of tracks like that. Like, you know, like timing yeah. the roller. So he used to ruts and soft sand, used to those conditions. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like the um, best thing for him. Um, and then I've said it uh, before he won the race. Uh, even the rule about the the whoops, Oh yeah, the nine, the nine whoops. Yeah, it's maybe the best <laughs> rule for him. Yeah, right. Imagine like if Marvin had that rule. Right. <laughs> you could <laughs> jump. <laughs> yeah, you could jump three times, and yeah. then we, oh, if Marvin did not have to deal mentally and physically with whoops, mm -hmm. because Marvin was an amazing guy. Coop, Cooper Whoop said it earlier. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think I've seen Marvin be the slowest guy. Uh, not the fastest guy at the KTM yeah, track yeah. ever. Yeah. The guy is insane. Right. But when he gets to this thing, there's a block. Mm -hmm. And this block is not only for five or six seconds of whoops. It affects him all no the way, way around. Yeah, yeah. So take this program out, which somewhere you can go night. three, three, three. Yeah, yeah. In the main event where they like round and yep. down. Yeah. Dude, the guy is tough yeah. to beat. So, so I think for Tom, that's a great role too. So who... If you had to bet money right now, we're in Vegas on who wins this title, 250 class. Who would you bet on? 
Uh, I think I would still go Deegan. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, I think I would. No. Yeah. I, I don't know. The thing is, with Tom is he's a he's a smart dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got he's not gonna go for the win if he, he needs to take risk. He's gonna be smart. Like, uh, okay, I'm gonna settle for second or third, and then it, the points are gonna add up. Mm -hmm. And and I think yeah, that's that's the, the thing strength. The thing, thing is, uh, I won't. The other the other guys, they're gonna they're not thinking that the, that way. I mean, we know. I Cameron think, I think McAdoo. No, I think McAdoo's better. I think he's yeah. he's better, but yeah. uh, he if he needs to push. Uh, I did an interview with Cameron and he said, yeah. hey, if I had a better start, I would have beat him and I'm, I'm going to beat him next time if I do it. Yeah. I, I think he needs to push and go to that level. Maybe he's going to make some mistakes and, and Tom won't. Okay. I uh, think, seriously, uh, at one point, uh, Tom is kind of like a nice guy, doesn't make noise, yep. shy. Uh, they're going to try to fuck with him eventually. <laughs> you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And but rough him up. He doesn't care. Y yeah, but he doesn't care. I asked him the question when he didn't did it. I don't give a shit what he says. Yeah, show me on the I truck mean, what you do. <laughs> yeah, right. But, uh, like this, you see JMB did an interview this week. JMB. Yeah. And says like, oh, he was uh, at Bercy in a tunnel. He was d behind him, and I think it's a makeup story. He was saying, hey, I was screaming at Bracho in a tunnel when I was racing him just to push him to the to make a mistake. I'm like, dude, you were scared of Bracho all your career. Like, <laughs> you couldn't be like fathers. Like, he always was scared all yeah, the time. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're making up this story for nothing. So I don't want you to tell me I'm going to win. I, I worked hard. The bike is great. I'm three seconds no, faster. I will start with DV on that a little bit. Yeah, just that, show me. That wasn't an interview. I mean, I was, it was yeah, just, just a genuine conversation. Right, right, right. Uh, I mean, he, I mean, he, know, I, he knows you're a media yeah, but, guy, though. Uh, yeah, but I, I told him, did you see Aiden Deegan you know, I mean, yeah. behind him? Say, he didn't even know. Yeah. So I think he, he doesn't care. I mean, okay, okay, okay. He doesn't care. What he says on the French interview, mm -hmm. right? Show me on the track. Show me on the track what he would do. If Deegan does a Cody shock to him the next week, We weekend. haven't seen that yet. Okay. So we don't know. Yeah, yeah. we don't know. So let me see how he handles that when yeah. those guys are going to think, you know what? They, they, we're they we're gonna probably will. Yeah, we're yeah. going to rough him yeah. up. We're no, going to rough him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's young and he's a, a French guy. Th they're, Shy. They're gonna, yeah, you know. they're going to be but like But don't hey. you think he can take it? it, it, it why? We don't know. He doesn't know. Just show me. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Just let me see. W the way he raced with Geertz last year, yeah. he was very aggressive. They collided the, towards the end of the season in MX2. Uh, I would say he would deal with it fine. But when different on a different continent, with guys maybe like more aggressive and mm -hmm. nasty, I would say. Not nasty, but like uh, um, what's the w right word? Uh, Vicious in the right world either, but they they rough. Yeah, you know, Makadu yeah, yeah. is rough. Yeah, yeah. Jigen is rough. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, um, I'm I'm just have okay. to, to to wait and see on that one. Yeah. All right. Fair That's enough. gonna be a good one. Yeah. I can't uh, wait listen, to see I, it. I, I, as I said, I thought Daytona was like ah, it's just Daytona. The French kid got it. Good ride. But I was impressed this weekend, for sure. But um, in the meantime, if he, if he does a, a start like he did in Birmingham, yeah. nobody's going to touch him anyway. Yeah, he'll just take off. Well, maybe. It, yeah, but you have to go around people. Yeah. And then people can retaliate. When you start in front, you you got you out of reach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you through the pack, um, you have to – and that's something he's not used to because he always good – a good starter, so yeah, he's gonna have to learn. Yeah, the Alessi thing, what we talked about earlier, right? Yes. Like, like when you're not used to riding in packs of guys and all of that, yes. you know. So there is that. Um, all right, we still want still got more information here. Uh, Race Tech Rant, by the way, Race Tech Rant tonight, Pulp Twenty Four is code to save Race Tech Rant. Um, I think we got it earlier tonight because DV's rant is classic. He said it for years. He hates this deep field shit. <laughs> he has said it for years, and I gotta say. I don't always agree with you on it, but when you just read down the 99 Anaheim one, I think those guys were all champions, or most of those people. Renard maybe didn't win a champion, but he won races. Um, uh, 16. Yeah. <laughs> so the deep field rant, I think. Is yeah, but like because it's, you know, it, it's just like we fluffing each other with this stuff. Well, right? Listen, there's a difference between the TV show saying it because they say that every year, and they're selling the they're selling the sport. They're selling the stuff. So I don't even listen to that. Yeah, but I'm but a I, fan. I'm watching right. it every. I'm not at the races. Yeah. You know, um, when I hear that, they just building that up, and then the fans, which it's a way 
it's a huge amount of people compared to people at the races and work in the industry. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't care what they say, most of the fans, yeah. they, they care about what the GOAT has to say about it. Yeah. When the GOAT says repeatedly, it's the greatest yeah, ever, yeah, Stockers yeah, yeah. Field. Wow. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I mean, Tony Romo talks about these NFL guys being the greatest ever. You know, Dan Marino's probably going, hey, man, like, you know, what about me? Like, Dan Marino's a bad dude, right? But Yeah. I, but I don't know. So, I feel like we see and that. Sometimes, I, at one point, you, you got to fact check people and just put them on the right track. Mm -hmm. And when you know a little bit of the history of the sport, yeah. Uh, Dude, I started in 99. Um, that was my first freaking race. 80, I know how hard it was. 85 was stacked, too. 85 was stacked. Yeah. yeah. It, so. And that's yeah. kind of like 85. That's the year I started riding a dog bike. So that's kind of older for me. Mm -hmm. But the time I, like, I raced or I watched, it's always amazing rider. So we need to start with this stuff. We need to start. Race it's not that deep. Race it's not that deep. Night. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Deep, deep, deep. <laughs> Not that deep, deep, deep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pulp 24 is code to save with Race Tech. Uh, hey, MTX braking pads. Did I ever get you some of these? I have some, LeBig. These pads for mountain bikes. Oh, yeah. Did I give you any? Yeah, no, you did not. No, I didn't get anything yet. I'm sure he's getting paid to, to have an order. Like yeah, do you have a brake pad sponsor yeah. for mountain biking? No, I don't. Okay, mtxbraking.com. Pulp MX is the code to save. Available in over 800 power sports dealers out there. Two compounds. One for e-mountain bikes, another for trail riders and racers. Make your mountain bikes better. More power, better modulation while remaining dead silent. LeBig is going to be testing these for us. MTXbreaking.com. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to do a sponsor read here, guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay, no, we're gonna, everyone can hear you laughing. Everyone can and hear the laughing. Riveting. So Push, push okay. my uh, uh, my Pulp Mex is the code to save at MTXbreaking.com. Great mountain bike pads. LeBig is going to be testing them. Soon. Yes, I will. Uh, all right, LeBig, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I meant, to, I meant to text this to you. To prepare you, and I forgot. Okay. So, so that's great radio on my part. Um, great radio. Best French riders to ever race in America. We broke last time DV was in here. We broke it down. Mm -hmm. We gave the list, our my list and his list, and they were kind of the same. Okay. What's, in America, you said. Yeah, in America, like the best French riders to race American Supercross and Motocross. What's your list? I'll tell you what mine is after that. And DV's, uh, we we were. Uh, so the list what top five? Top five. Top Let's five. Go top five. Uh, from all the years, it, it doesn't matter yeah, if I was there on the history. Doesn't matter if you in were the history. Yeah, yeah, history. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I got to say GMB. One. Yeah. Okay. Uh, geez, that's tough. No, uh, two is easy. Two is easy. Yeah. yeah, we agreed on this. DV and I did. I mean, I would say you. No, no, no you can't. You got to go, Marv. You go, Marv, bro. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Marv, DV. Yep. Uh, yep. Pichon. Pichon. Oh, I think I Pichon. went different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ron? Uh, I got to go CP, maybe. Uh, uh, between Ron and CP, yeah. I went Tortelli. Uh, CP, two titles. I know. Tortelli won yeah. what? But he beat Ricky Carmichael multiple times when Rick, outdoors when Ricky was the baddest dude multiple ever. Multiple times? Yes. How he, many times? Oh, he beat Ricky a lot. Like what? Glenn uh, Helen? How many? No, how many? Didn't race how many uh, here's a yeah. trivia yeah. for the emperor of U.S. media. How okay. many nationals did totally win? Overall or overall? Overall, overall races. Um, four, three. Okay. What? It should be four. He ran out of gas. Yeah, in, in, in my butt. So yeah. I give him four. Okay. But three. I know because it's the same amount as me. Yeah. We won three supercross. So he won three outdoors, one supercross. Maybe N4 of Supercross uh, podiums? If you look at it, it's not that good. I put you ahead of him. I understand that. Okay. But we overhyping is is American thing. Just because he won Glen Helen. Yes, he won a few races. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want to, you know. You're ahead of him. I, I won a few races too. It was not on my list. But you're ahead of him. I'm yes, not, I'm not but saying you're not. You, you overhyping it uh, kind of a little bit. You have to put somebody that's a uh, two-time champion, like Pichon, even if it's a light class. Okay. Pichon and um, Borsell, the they two-time champ. Right? Pichon should have won a national title, too. Blew it twice. Uh, I bike broke at Southwick. Yeah, right? you think he, has the, he, had, he never had the bike for it, it seems like. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he was a douchebag, so maybe I have a hard time. 96? You think he would have won 96 against Lamston with the number 12, I'm Kawi? I'm talking about Purcell. Ah. Purcell was talking about Purcell. I said Purcell should have won <laughs> two times. I thought you said Pichon. No, 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 no. no, 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 no I was like, Purcell. No, no, no. I was like, Pichon should have won some national title, at least one. 
I'm sorry. Purcell. Purcell should have won no. one national title. Uh, against Dungey. Maybe two. The, the one against Dungey, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the one against Connaught, he lost. Yeah. He had like he a did. huge amount of points yeah, lead. Yeah. He and then he, he just like rode the minimum and all of a sudden he had no point lead and then he ate shit in Pala and lost the title. Right. Like he should have been champion before Pala. Right. You know, I just, I just, he's such a douchebag that I have trouble ranking. Ah, uh, he's, he's a special. Why did you say that? <laughs> douchebag, why? He's a special I, guy. You like he's him. A you like him. Special guy. Yeah, he's, 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 he, he's in the bag. I told you, like the, the different, like Brian and Rhino. And, yeah, yeah. And I'll put Pulsar yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's they're all different in their own way. Yeah. But they're a little different. Right. So and he is one of them. Yes. He's one of them. Yes. But anyway, but he's a great rider. Uh, but I would put Pichon ahead of him. And Pichon I would won a national. Yeah. Glenn Helen Glenn or... No, no Glenn oh, Hill 98. 99. 98. Eight, eight. Yeah. Um, yes. Tony Berluti tuned. What is it? Two Frenchies win. 98, 99. Two Frenchies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, your, your, your list is... I mean, you had DV second. We, th- we, think, no, we no. both think Marv should be ahead yeah. of him. Yeah. Even though I Marv... Mean, Marv is still not retired, so he's still, um, oh, okay. uh, he's, he's still there for me. So I don't. And he know just did Day in the Dirt, so he's still still out there. He didn't win it, deal. Oh, he didn't? No, he I didn't. No, not even the no, no, no. He, the he, ru- he, ru- no, race? He, he crashed and he hurt his knee. So oh, oh man. Yeah. So is, is, don't tell me that. Is Tom Vial ahead of DV? Ahead of uh, what? Not now. In, in French rankings? No. Can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> the guy haven't set a, a, a wheel on the 450 yet on the main class. You're gonna put it in front of me. Uh, there's there's a line not to cross. Okay, buddy. that's it. <laughs> okay. <all> yeah. Right. <laughs> you cannot put somebody. Oh, good there. Ah, he looks. I, he he beat never, Deeks, dude. He beat Deeks. I don't give you a know? shit. If <laughs> you did not race premier class, you, you, doesn't matter. You ain't in front of me. Okay. <laughs> That's like <laughs> yeah. I put Marvin Steps. in front of me, hundred percent. Right, right. And JMB, right. yes, but okay. not, no. Yeah, don't. and JMB, you got it. I mean, even though JMB actually didn't win that many races uh, compared to some people, but he, he won, won sixteen titles. Supercross, I think. That's a lot. Sixteen? I thought it was twelve, but I think it's sixteen okay. Supercross. But, uh, he won the titles, so he's yeah. got the titles. Right? All, all yeah. that matters. Right. He, all, yeah. he, all, he, he made a ten thousand bucks winning a title. It was great. Was it really? I don't gr- think that was that big. Maybe fifty, maybe. Really? Was it that low? Yeah. Right? Oh. Uh, factory chassis parts, by the way, DV. You know all about engine mounts and the difference they make. Hold on. Uh, okay. I got unplugged. Engine mounts. Is it FCP? Is that what it is? Yeah. FPFC yeah. or yeah. FCP? Factory chassis parts. A guy DM me about those. I'm like, dude. I think we tried those uh, at Yamaha like 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, they make a difference. Yamaha once that we never ran. We ran some different ones at Yamaha, but it lowered the motor. Do you remember that? Yeah, but they were somewhat thinner too. Yeah, yeah, we had different ones. But they they were like vibrating and shit. I, I we don't like that. it. I but we a had guy a from from that okay. company, all right, sent me a DM. Okay. So I never sent him my for which bike for your own bike? Yeah, for my oh, two, I thought it was for my nineteen. Okay. You just try it out. All right. Yeah. All right. Pulpamex dash chassis is the code to save. Uh, Dylan Ferrandis uses these at uh, Phoenix Honda. <laughs> Justin Starling, F and H M X G. What? I'm just. Rockford. I love how you hype the stuff up. You the best. I mean, <laughs> he's good at it. Yeah, yeah. he's good. That's something I've never been. He's gonna yeah. before the show is over. He's gonna sell me a life insurance, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and, uh, and a vacuum. You What's know. that noise? I don't know. Uh, sorry, 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 We're sorry. We're watching sorry. a video. <laughs> I know something open. Sorry. Factory chassis parts, CNC machined parts out of high quality aluminum and titanium, easy to install, drastic improvements. Check out engine mounts, Dylan Ferrandis. French rider. Where's Ferrandis on the all-time ranking? Ooh, no. Dude, he, t- dude, he has to be in front of me almost. Oh, for right. He, he, doesn't have a, he doesn't have a 450 Supercross win, so. He only has two podiums, right? Yeah. But he has a, a national win. National a national, win. national yeah. championship. Yeah. 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 He counts for something. Dude, I forgot. I was part of it, too. <laughs> people so people forget. People tend to forget. It's why. That's why People we tend to forget. This He's is a national champion. This is a Supercross town, city, Country, yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. It's super cross first. Pop next ass chassis at FCP. Thank you. Maybe I'll try. It. I'll try it out. Okay. You. Maybe you, maybe you're. You have them on your bike? Not yet. I'm getting some. So are we gonna um, eventually? Maybe it's, it's getting late. At one point, I want to go home. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. But maybe the feud we had on uh, 
B and C rider. You being a, a, a oh a yeah B or a C yeah, rider yeah, again, Helen yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was funny. Right. Because somebody just um, did you try Roxanne's bike or something? Yeah, at, at in Florida. Yeah, and somebody DM me with the the reel of you riding. Yep. 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 And he well, said, hey, "Is he a C rider or a B rider?" And the guy says, "Kind of look like a C rider to me." <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. I was like, "So Kiefer and I are doing a video soon, because uh, I've been riding more lately, and I feel pretty good, and I feel, yeah, I feel all right." So we're doing a video, Kiefer and I. I think we're gonna do it at Mesquite, but we may do it at Glen Helen. If we do it at Glen Helen, you can come up and coach me. I'm gonna race him four laps, three laps. I don't know. We haven't decided the length. I'm going to race him on a my four. I'm on my 450. He's going to be on a modern YZ 125. Yes. Then he's going to be on my 1990 125, and then he's going to go to a big wheel YZ 85. What's over he, under? He thinks he can beat me on all three. Yes. There's no way. No. There's no way he beats me on the YZ 85. I'll, uh, fucking, 85. I'll, I'll fucking ride into traffic. If You'll dig him out of the way. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I will absolutely. <laughs> Cody Shock and Deeks will, will happen again. <laughs> so he thinks he can beat me on all three. So we're, we're gonna uh, do this video. Yeah. The other one, all big wheels. And yeah, then, big uh, wheel 85. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's all big bikes though. The rest 125. Yeah, is 1990 one? 125, and then a modern 125. The 1990 125 is my rebuilt oh, bike. Shit. Yeah, you've seen the garage. Yeah. It looks good, but it's fucking slow. This bike, yeah, <laughs> those Yamahas were like very right. slow. Right, right. Yeah. So we're going to do a video, and maybe you can come out, DV, and be the, the rider coach. Wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah, you're coaching there. It's only one, uh, three laps? We don't know. Three or four laps. Yeah, we're not sure. No, you got to do like uh, um, you got to do like time practice, I think. Put like a transponder. Oh, and not, then don't do a race ever? Just do laps? Obviously, you, you have to race maybe one of the – don't race all the bikes. Okay. You can do like in one bike, we do only lap time. And with this bike, we're going to do a race or okay. whatever. Right. Uh, Are you going to race in a row? Don't don't kill yourself. Yeah. Okay. You know? But you keep your 450. Yeah, I'm on my 450 the whole time. Yeah. Glen Helen? Or Mesquite. We don't know. Mesquite is a little flatter, right? There's yeah, only one, one hill. hill. One yeah, hill one hill. hill. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, stay tuned. But stay it's tuned. altitude too, Mesquite maybe. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, all right, uh, motorsport.com, tweet at Talent Segment. Let's do this. No, that's my mom. It's the motorsport.com, tweets at Talent Segment. No. Motorsport.com, great guys. Uh, OEM and aftermarket parts, great prices. Do you have used motorsport before? Le big? No, never. Oh, well, DV does. How good is the service there, DV, at motorsport.com? It's great. Yeah. I Dedicated really like a team of gearheads there. What, did, what I do you buy? You buy parts? Yeah, OEM, aftermarket, yeah. gear, it's everything. oil. Motorsport.com. Go through the banner on Pulp Mex to help us out because then I get a small slice of that. And then I can afford to pay LeBig, DV, all these other people, Phil, all these other people to come in the show. Uh, thanks to the folks at Motorsport. These questions are submitted at Pulp Mex Show on Twitter. And uh, the guy in the corner reads them off. All right, let's do this. We uh, tracked down DV's gearhead too. It's Britt Gagne. She, uh, I think she races like WMX. She's pretty good. Okay. Ah, see, I was right? Yeah. Ah, okay, see, good. Uh, he's a gearhead, so he's probably going to get mad now. Well, because you work over there at Motorsport? Yeah. yeah. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought that was the first time I saw this guy. He said, like, I mm. saw him, like, multiple times. I don't know. Every time DV comes in studio, he's like, oh, are you new? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> first time. <laughs> There's him and Tits. They rotate. Well, he does Tits, mostly. Uh, Tits I stopped at Gabba Gibbs. Yeah. Okay, right. and then that was it? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so these questions are submitted at Pop MX Show on Twitter for all of us here. Oh, man. Uh, first one from T Hall 767. There's been a lot of talk about Sexton's bike setup, but why haven't people mentioned since you gave the ship up to Lewis, Sexton has struggled? Yeah, great points. Great points. Um, you know, Lewis likes to think he's Sexton's ship captain. And you know, have you heard of this stuff? Yeah, I've saw like yeah, a little bit yeah, of exchange. Sad. sad. So. But I think his bike's pretty good. It's getting there. Yeah. KYB stuff is interesting. Yeah, but even before that, his bike is way more balanced than Coop's bike was. Yes. Remember, Coop was yeah. really to the yeah. front. Um, now his bike, you can and see it's flatter, and that's, uh, for me, better. Yeah. Better looking. New frame, right, which makes a little bit of difference for people I talk to. Not a big difference, but a little bit of difference. And then 48s and, yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be okay. Yep. He'd be there. 
uh, from Vin, De- Vin Diesel. Uh, I'm going to Indy SX this weekend. Any must-go-to places or bars? Uh, St. Elmo Steakhouse. You been there, Big? No, no, I don't remember. Oh, the 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 the, the cock they have there is just amazing. Shrimp cock. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the the horseradish sauce in in the in the cocktail sauce. Like, dude, you got to put like this much on it, or like your nostrils will be blown open. It's great. Gargle cock. Uh, that's a really good restaurant, St. Elmo's. DV, any? Getting very excited about cocks over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that, huh? any, I'm a fan of shrimp cock. I always have been, <laughs> always will be, you know? So you like tiny ones. Yep. Um, Sounds gay. What else in Indy, DV? The earliest he's ever, Indy? ever Indy, any, uh, any must-see things? Dude, dude, that was the gr- one of the greatest thing is... Uh, the Red Garter strip Denny, club? What was the guy? Denny... Uh, Hartwig. Hartwig. Yep. So we're there for press day, and then we went to see um, the Pesos play. Oh yeah, it's right down there. the street. Yep, right here at the yep. field house. It right. was called or yeah, still there. something yep. else. Um, and we were like three rows from the mm-hmm. well, not court side, yep. but might as well be right from me to you to the court. Yeah, right? three. That was like Is this Reggie Miller years. Uh, no, that's uh, P- I think PG was uh okay. yeah. No, Paul George. Yeah, PG was there, I think. I'm not really 100 percent sure, but okay, I think so. So this has been your Suzuki years? I uh, know maybe. Um, I don't know if it's PG. Uh, maybe okay. not I, PG. I don't think Paul Jarrett was there. PG has been there for 10 years. No, so 14. No, he hasn't been there for 10 years. More than that. So he wasn't PG. Who was there before that? Maybe Reggie Miller. Then. <laughs> I mean, it might have been. If I race, it was Reggie Miller, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Anyways, that was great. So. Other than that, I love that Indy or oh, East Coast uh, cities. Yep. Is those uh, tubes that goes from building to building, yeah, like walkways, those uh, yeah. walkways, right. like because there's, so there's a lot of Starbucks around there everywhere. And there's uh, what's that very dark, kind of like maybe a couple blocks from that field house. Uh, there's a steakhouse, kind of dark, low ceiling. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I don't remember that. What one. is that? I've been there. Yeah, yeah. We not, used to not have team Elmo's. dinner. Not staying almost. Yeah, something we, else. We had team dinners there, and it was actually yeah. steakhouse or Italian. It was pretty good. Uh, also, too, Friday night, though, if you're at Indy, there's a live show <laughs> with me, Jake. <laughs> if I'm in Indy. If, if you're in Indy. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> well, what do you mean I'm crazy? I'm not going anywhere, first of all. Second of all, well, I'm not going anywhere if I have to stop somewhere. If it, There's no direct flight. I didn't flight. you. I just meant the ah, people. Ah, okay. I thought yeah. you, you were talking to me. I'm like, I like dick cheese. <laughs> okay, live show. This Tickets for sale on pulpmex.com. Justin Brayton will be our guest. Me, Weez, JT will argue about Tom Vial and David Villeman and others uh, this Friday night. So I think we sold 120 tickets so far. So, yeah, keep it going, people. LeBig, you going to come out? Why not? What is it? It's uh, called the Irvine Theater. Okay. Next to the stadium? No. No. Okay. I, don't, I can't afford those kind of rents. <laughs> okay. I'll find you. But you tape it. You do podcasts and everything? Yeah. yeah. They they provide all the equipment or yeah. you bring it? No, they they provide everything. It's a live theater, so they have all the mics and everything. Wow, that's great. We go up on stage and we make fun of people and stuff. It's great. Uh, you're flying? La big, obviously. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, he's swimming. <laughs> so there we go. Go to the go, go to St. Elmo's for the cock <laughs> and then uh, go to the steakhouse, which is, yeah, somewhere downtown. Man, this guy. It might have been Paul George, actually. He got uh, drafted in 2010. Then I was Moto Concept, and I was around the sport. So, oh, so that I thought it was – but Denny wasn't – I think Denny was gone by then. By then? You think yeah, so? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, AM712 wants to know, if McAdoo wins his title, is he basically screwed for a factory 450 ride, or his only options triumph or – You can defend. You can defend one year. Yeah. So if he wins, he can get defend. It's not that hard, guys, to understand. Uh, oh, I got a question from a Corey Hutter. Are you, oh. are you ready? What? You still talk to him? Yeah. How yeah. is he going? Oh, he's a good guy. He's in Illinois. He's selling fly racing. Oh, he's a rep? Yeah, he's a rep. No more suspension? Nope. Good for him. Are you ready? Is he doing good? Yeah. Okay. You ready for this question? I don't know. All right. I don't like questions from people that know me. Back in the day, Jimmy, Perry, DV, and Matthew Lelos went to a sand track next to a subdivision that was under construction. We were doing some pre-Southwick testing. Cops showed up and said we couldn't ride there. Did DV call the cops anonymously <laughs> to get out of riding? <laughs> That's a question from Corey Hutter. No. Okay. So that was uh, – who was it? Where was it? That had to be like um, 
by Compage or something. What was it? I don't. He said some. I wasn't there. Compage was, or Compage or Yucca Valley. Okay. One of those two. Behind Compage by uh, Keith Rose. Mm -hmm. But maybe Yucca Valley because I remember being there, not like forgetting my gear bag, having to call my ex-wife. She drove. Oh, I remember that story. Yeah, two hours. And she had the M we had the M3. Oh, it was a, it wasn't an M3, but it was like a, a coupe, okay. BMW, it whatever. And there was sand rollers. She dragged that car like on every sand roller to get to the to the truck. I'm like, dude, when you're here one time, that you're scraping the bottom, mm -hmm. just stop and wait for me. I'll ju I'll just come right. And uh, but she was cool though. She drove two hours to bring my gear bag. Mm -hmm. I forgot my gear yeah. bag. And then at the exit, like to exit the the sand wash. Yeah. You been to Yucca Valley before? Yeah, but I don't know. I've been to this track, but I've been to Yucca Valley, yes. There's only one spot really to ride okay. where everybody rides. It's a sand wash with like up up hills, down hills. And we went there with Perry to mm -hmm. test O three or something. Because I was telling Perry the bo the the gas is boiling. Boiling, yeah. So I think it was it has to be maybe later because we showed up at um Lakewood. Lakewood pump with gas. pump gas. Yes. Because of me. Okay. I was racing up riding up Paris. I always gave Jimmy the credit for that. So actually give nah. me the credit. Okay. <sighs> All right, Jimmy. Stop okay. it. Okay. So my, my gas was boiling and Jimmy did not believe me. It's not possible. It's not, I'm like, dude, I'm I know what gas is boiling. When I stop, it mm -hmm. goes off the, yep. the the hose out like on yep. the on the front fender. I'm like I'm like the gas is boiling. So he did not believe me. So we went in or July or something or June, super hot, like in a triple digit to Yucca Valley in the desert, and then I think Timmy was there, maybe might Timmy? have been, might have been there. Uh, Corey said Lalo's. Yeah, but Lalo's was with me, so that was oh five. Oh, so he was just hanging. Yeah, he was helping me. Okay. He was my main friend, like sparring partner, mm -hmm. or like training partner. Okay. Um, and um, he wanted me to do motos. Where it was hot, mm -hmm. and then get the bike warm yeah. just to see. Right. And obviously, I and did it, and it, it boiled. Boiled, <laughs> okay. It boiled. And then the cops came. And the bike was blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, see, we do not have to drive two hours here. What did the cops do when the cops show up? Uh, and they show up because um, sometimes they would show up. Okay. You're not allowed to yeah. ride there. It's like illegal, obviously. Right. But it was a good spot to train for like um, Southwick, Red Bull, all this stuff. Right. All right. Uh, from Dave DJ, obviously Jet is super talented and gels very well with the Honda bike and the team. But in your opinion, does the riding style in the Honda give us what we're seeing, or do you think it would be the same on any of the other brands, better or worse? What do you think, Davey? Not sure. Okay. Le big? I don't know. Okay. It's tough. Moving on. Uh, two stroke smoke for DV. Do you think the lack of gate drops that most of the top amateurs have before turning pro is the reason that there is more first turn pileups that we've been seeing in recent years, or is it start grades, maps, whole shot devices, or moving skill? I think we should, this is a. Uh, I've been an advocate of this, of all shot device should go, no more. We don't need to get people faster the first turn. Mm -hmm. We need long start. We need uh, crappy, dirty ruts behind the gate. I know it's, and and I've said in the beginning of the show, every we make everything easy now. Right. It's easy. You show up on Monday morning. The track is groomed, mm -hmm. watered, with the automatic sprinkler system. We used to go the night before with air lights and do it by hand. Right. Right. Uh, now there's no no factory riders that uh, practice bike at home. You know, right. it's with a f yeah. factory mechanic. They bring the bike. This, so they don't have to do anything. They don't wash, don't change the clutch, they don't change tires. Shit, nothing. So everything, everything gets easier. Track, we make track safer, easier, kind of more yeah. forgiving. Yep. And then the start is the same thing. We put grace on. Why are we? Why are we getting ideals from Europe to put? It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a dirt. It's a dirt bike what, what that racing. Is, is to make it easier for the promoters and the track crew. That's what that is. I understand yeah, that, yeah, yeah. but 
you know. I mean, we got we got lights to tell them where to keep the throttle hand. We got start maps. That's what I'm trying to we tell got you. Whole shot devices. I'm, I'm telling you. We got blocks, starting blocks now. So even if you're short, no problem. And even like uh, in GPs, they they, yeah. they have the feet on the pegs yeah. on the stock. Yeah. Just get that shit out of there. I am with you. I'm right? with you. That's so TV race tech ran also. Okay. So. Remember, like, uh, uh, Terra Firma, the footage of the Nationals, mm -hmm. outdoors. Remember, yeah. like, when you have this slow-mo at the start, when the guys, like, they're in a rut, and they kind of jump. Pop out. Pop out, and yeah. then they redo it again, they, like, in two times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those are great, like, footages, and think, like, uh, start history, kind of. Right. Yeah. In the mid nineties when those videos were very popular. Now like there's nothing that turns me on about a stall. It's 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 steel, it's straight, mm -hmm. uh and there's nothing to it, and you get on the first turn yeah. at two hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And we say, Oh we have crashes, we have pilots, what's going on? I'm like you wanna uh, unlevel the field? Yeah. So now if you win your e race, you can find a nice gate that gives you a little advantage. Mm -hmm. But you have to know how to start on the dirt. Now you can start 15 and start in front. But maybe like back in the day, 15 yeah. was tough. So you don't get this gate advantage now with um, uh, with the grid. So why doing time practice? Why doing e races? Why talking about gay pick be, being important? It's less and less important mm -hmm. now because everything, you don't have to have a, like a dry, shitty ass right on the outside because you know you have the same gate as Jet Lawrence. Yeah, I agree. Right? So what's the point of trying to get a good gay pick? And then same thing, get the, the start technique back with mm -hmm. no uh, yeah. starting device. And then there's people that say, Oh yeah, but people would loop out without the starting. Are you fucking kidding me? You, you dumb. Yeah, those yeah. are pros. You think people are gonna loop out? And they loop out with also device. Yeah. Look at uh, Daytona. Baguette, Baguette, yeah. or yeah. these guys would do what it. Happened Daytona? Yeah, some of the guy loop out. Oh, that's is, right. Is a yeah, photo, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, next question. That's another rant. That race tech rant, DB. I'm with you on that rant. That's been my rant over and over many times. It's ridiculous. Like I said, we got lights to tell them where to hold the throttle. We got maps designed for starts. We got whole shot devices. We got crates. We got blocks. We got rear whole shot devices in some cases. We got it all. Don't worry about it, guys. We're going to end up with like MotoGP. Just do this and dump the clutch. Make sure your elbows are up. It's, it's stupid. Yeah. yeah. All right. From Jimmy G, Steve, I've been looking for a rider to get behind since... Troll retired, somebody that is short on privilege, long on adversity, and holds a shockingly high level of determination. Can we welcome Cody Shock into the Troll Fan Nation? Are yeah, you with me? Yeah, Shock's good. It's a really cool story. He got a collarbone break. He's going to hopefully be back soon. Um, yeah, Shock's a good one to pick. Filth, Filthy Phil, our buddy Filthy Phil. You know, he's grinding away. He comes from nothing. Um, I think Chiz. Look, Chiz is awesome, dude. He's, he's out there still, man. How old is he? Thirty six, seven. I have forty four. I don't. Even know. <laughs> I don't even know. I think he's thirty six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dude, I w he was racing. Uh, yeah. When I was team manager of Mono Concept yeah. in he was eleven, your guy. he was your guy. That was thirteen years ago. Yeah. And he wasn't. He wasn't young. No. Thirteen years ago. No. Wow. God bless Chiz. Guys like Chiz. Uh, from Shane J. Borden, after this year with AC out at Cowie for twenty five, is he done? We've. I feel like we've been asked this every week. Marks, right? I feel like this is like a... I haven't been here for like a I month. So I, don't know. I, didn't, I didn't hear the question. All right. What was the question? No. Is AC done after this I, I don't know. I would yes. bet yes. I would yes. Bet yes. I would yeah, say yes to. Yeah. I do not know. Do you think he's going to go to HEP or like right. Phoenix? I do to, not know. No. The, the burnout at Daytona seemed like a, this is the last time I'm racing here thing. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, have you guys uh, talked about Prado being at Cowie for three years? Yeah. 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 He rode the bike and... I don't know. I, I don't know if I heard three year contract, but yeah. Yeah, it's, three years. Sounds like it's gonna be done. I heard, I heard three years from supposedly somebody that has a very reliable source. Yeah. And they say, "Can we three years?" Yeah, that would make sense. 
Uh, I love I love this. I love everything about this oh. because, um, and I kind of like wanted Marvin to do that. Even you know, I was trying to have him kind of leave the Red Bull KTM oh, yeah, yeah. Ski, yeah. this that, and then try something Japanese and you know, yeah, uh, different mentality and yeah. well, something different. Yeah. Just try. You've done it. You know, try something else. And when I see like. Um, Kiroli says, you know what, Red Bull, KTM, yeah, whatever, I'll go yeah. to Monster Ducati. Right. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, and we see happening all the time in F1 with Hamilton. And when you see Prado that's young and then won titles with that company, and I guess he wanted only to stay with uh, have a ride at KTM. Oh, did he? Okay. That was the yeah, thing. Yeah. And then they wouldn't, they, they weren't um, uh, ready to... Uh, guarantee yep. that right and you don't want to do i guess for the ktm guys it's like the lesser teams to be as key or gas guys I, it does seem like well tld is kind of on their own they kind of do what they want a little bit with some guidance yeah. and it does seem like husky is a second class to the ktm guys do you agree yeah i think so too you yeah. know so yeah it does you know i think i think prado has a, a point there for that um yeah i think prado has a point there uh, by the way, everybody, uh, Arena Cross coming up here in Vegas. Are you going? After, it's Friday before St. Louis. I don't know if you're going to go and no, fly into St. No, Louis. I'll be, f- I'll be flying to St. Louis, yeah. Uh, ArenaCrossUSA.com. Uh, Kyle Peters, Ryan Brees going down to the wire. I went to the Daytona one on Friday night. It was great. Did you go? No, I didn't go. Okay. Uh, it was fantastic. Any Supercross guys? Where's that? Yeah, Marshall Welton and okay. uh, Rod Bell and a um, few guys escape me now. But What day is that? In Vegas? Friday. Before St. Louis. Before St. Louis. Which? What? <laughs> Which is date? when? <laughs> the date? Okay, DV. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Friday. I don't know. Uh, 29th. Oh, okay. Yeah, 29th here it's, in Vegas. It's uh, good Friday. ArenaCrossUSA.com. Uh, uh, Brees closed in within three points of K- KP. KP brought a 450 to the Daytona races, which changed the game a little bit. He managed to get back. He won one main. Brees crashed. Uh, there was fights going on. Brees and uh, Marquier throwing throwing fights, throwing fists. Crockett Myers and someone else was throwing fists. Get your tickets at Arena Cross USA for the finale. It's eight-point difference right now. And, uh, yeah, thank you to the folks at Arena Cross USA. Kyle Peters, Ryan Brees going for it. You can ride whatever bikes you want? Yeah, 250 or 450. Oh. Yeah. And they have two mains a night. Well, they do they do like uh, they start back rows on yeah. the second here? The second main, the top six go to the back row. Oh, I thought the uh, uh, gate peak were inverted or well, something. Well, it is after the main one. So they go six and six. So 12 guys. Yeah, 12 okay. guys in the main. Okay. And, and it's inverted after main one. And then the last six guys, one to six in main one, is are on the back row. So, oh, yeah. Nice. So it's cool to watch. Where well, are they so racing in Vegas? Where? Uh, Orleans, South Point. Oh, South Point. South Point. I hmm. believe. Let me check. I should know. That's this. the recipe you know for that. mayhem. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be great. So go. Uh, he doesn't know the date. He doesn't know the. <laughs> I do arena. know the date. He <laughs> doesn't. I, I, he doesn't know where. It's not. He say Friday, St. Louis. <laughs> Orleans, <laughs> Orleans, <laughs> Orleans, Orleans Arena. Orleans, oh, Orleans Arena. Okay, makes sense. Did you get my photo? March 29th. You never replied. Okay, so I said the 28th. It's 29th, Friday. No, that's right, 29th. Check it out. Get some tickets. Watch it on the app. Watch it on arenacrossusa.com. Budman and Ping doing the TV. Yeah, just got it. All right. I'm t- just oh. trying to do a primo. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. DV <laughs> from, uh, from Moto Farming. Arena Cross USA. <laughs> DV, what did you think of Prado's showing? Do you think he can be a, a championship contender? When oh. Supercross. So, that's rough, bud. Um, no. Today, no. Um if uh, if he surround himself with like uh, cool guys, they're gonna tell him uh, he's the best guy in the world, and uh, you know don't want to rough his feathers. He'll never win. And most likely in this industry, everybody kiss everybody's ass. So and they're not gonna say anything to make him improve drastically in Supercross. So he's not beating the the top young guys on the 450 class with no uh, rough and guidance. That's my answer. Okay. All right. From Momo, does Tomac do outdoors to show Jet he's still got it? 
or has he had enough of the Jetson and retires? I think he's done. I, have you he's heard of Big? Yeah, yeah, I think he's done. Yeah, after Supercross? Yeah, after Supercross. Yeah. 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 He's done. There's no you, point. Okay, I, I was teasing before the commercial break, and I forgot. About Tomac. Yeah. Yeah. Is he going to win again? Uh, so see, I, I'm, I'm beating this dead horse again, but his bike looks horrible. I'm sorry. Fox soft. He goes in in the ruts. Like the front end is like low speed drives down. Uh, he almost endowed in those. Uh, did you see the race on TV or no? Yeah. You know those rhythm section with a lot of ruts. Yeah. Like he almost endowed on a small double, like bike w- doing weird stuff. Um, really aggressive on the throttle. Well, that's him. Always. But yeah. but you know. On a very tacky, like, um, uh, Play-Doh. Detroit. Yeah. It's, it's tough with your arms and, you've, you know, it's tough to stay on the bike, basically. The bike wants to get away from you. Like, you have to try hard to stay on. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things. Um, and it's crazy that when I see him, I would change, like, a lot of things. But he's not that far, if you look at it. Mm-hmm. It's not super far. And some of the track is going to work, and people in this industry always um, think if the rider wins, the bike has to be good, which is not, is most of the time not the case, right? Mm-hmm. Jet's bike is, yes, last year was the best, and this year is maybe the easiest bike for everyone to ride. Uh, I don't think. Uh, in 21, where by the best bike? I don't think in 22, Eli had the best bike. Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> but when people see guys win with a bike, they say, oh, the bike has to be also It's good. Well, I think it has to be good. There's a difference between good and great. I mean, no, it's, you know, it's, v- it's very, ab- I don't understand how you can not feel or see all the front goes in the G out or the rhythm section. So deep, and when you have play though, those weaknesses goes it it's even worse because you know like when yeah, the play grabs it, yeah. it grabs and it Pull, makes the pulls your arms and, and then it makes the forks and like the the front tire softer and the fork softer. So basically, what I see like on a regular track, it's obviously going to be worse on ruts and play though dirt. Um, and if you could just fix that. So he could race the rhythm section. Why don't you think he couldn't do anything in that rhythm section in Daytona? I think you put him something that's that holds better on the front, that doesn't dive so much. I've talked to people close to Tomac about this, and, yeah, they're not in agreement with you. <laughs> I will say that. Yeah, but how can they? I mean... Why is it like in, this? In their dyno runs and their tests. I don't give a their, shit oh, about okay, the dyno. Okay, they just think it's they think it's good. Yeah, dyno? No, no, just the stiffness of the fork. Uh, like they, they, I, they we're they, not they, in Formula One. It's not that the same for, for every track every year yeah. where you can and you have people that can analyze uh, d- data from a, a, a suspension dyno. Mm-hmm. We 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 in motocross. But we, ultimately, Eli is the one saying I like this setting. I understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's not working. I Does think he, win he again? Crash, Does he win again? I think he crashes in Detroit because of his forks. Does he win again? Uh, yes, he will yeah, win. Okay, okay. He will win even with this setup. Yeah, eventually, yeah, yeah. something's gonna happen, sure, and sure. there's you know what nine, uh, eight, eight left. So that's uh, it. Nine left, right? No, we did run nine, I think. Oh, yeah, eight left. Eight left. Yeah, eight left. Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. But. Um, Seriously, like, and he's not going to change now. Halfway through the season, yeah, yeah. last season, right. over 30 years old, and people like being like this, thinking they have the best bike out there. Uh, oh. It's not going to happen. Le but LeBig, does he win again? Yeah, I think he will. Okay, but I'm I'm still surprised he's still around. I thought he w- at one one point he would have said, you know what, I'm done. Um, so I think he's going to win again. Yeah, before okay. the end of the season, for sure. All right. Uh, from Dirtbiker one. DV, how discouraged do you think the 450 riders besides Jet are? And how would you react in regards to training if you were racing him? Yeah, we kind of talked about it earlier, but if you want to try hard to to beat him, I don't think you can, you know, 
I don't think you're gonna get it, be successful at it. Um, as far as training and, and practicing, it's just clean up your stuff and be more precise and basically be more efficient and faster with being cleaner. So clean up your writing style, uh, being precise, and kind of train in a way where every lap you change rhythms. You know, try doing one lap fastest way, one lap not the fastest way, and switch, do opposite lines. Uh, do the track backwards. Do a figure eight in a track sometime. Um, something you not used to and then you challenge to be precise with your dirt bike where if you ride uh, we, we've said it many times you ri you ride like uh, six uh, inches wide for three months of so the same jump and the same thing uh, eventually it's going to be good but then if you move a foot then you're lost and jet is not lost and he's challenged to change lines and 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 do the obstacles Last weekend in Birmingham, he was doing the 3-3 three, three single uh, uh, the most in the main event. Uh, and it's like jump Cooper was uh, Cooper Webb was saying, talking about the jumping into the banana mm -hmm. and jumping three. And Jet was doing that like uh, far in the main event. Yeah. Um, and when you do that, you land opposite of all the ruts. Yeah. So th that double double was super sketch. Everybody lands here, 250, 450. Yeah. That was the main line, and just says, you know what? Screw this. And then starting jumping over. I saw I think Anderson do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe Coop did it. Maybe yeah, I Coop don't. did it. Uh, um, Mookie was doing it. Yeah, but uh, Eli couldn't do it. it. Didn't do it. Yeah, and he was struggling in those rhythm section. And <laughs> this Eli you know, is definitely. Uh, Leaning on the side of caution, the last couple of years, even mm -hmm. last year, he won. He, look, he was sure to win the Supercross champion. There were many times he did not do the do, main do, rhythm. He do just. You, do you see it or no? The front end. I don't see it as much as you. No, I don't. I he, need to start watching it again. I guess. He starts like, so the ski jumps. You know, like the yeah. the, the five footer and yeah. the three threes. Yeah. Look when he lands, like his bike jumps like that yeah you know front and low like the thing is um i don't know okay all right and i feel like he, he he can he cannot charge through those rhythm section like the other guys can all right next question slow ride 858 it's a bummer for max and the team that the bike failed but let's be honest he wasn't truly a contender for the title the way he was riding do you disagree no i don't he he wasn't getting starts and yeah i mean you know, he looked better last year. I mean, he had the red plate, which he didn't yeah. have last year, but he yeah. looked better last year. And when yeah. the bike died, I mean, it was far behind. Yeah, so. he was six or seven. Yeah. He or was something. the third, third fastest in the race, though, uh, only uh, doing half of the laps. So the third fastest lap of the race? Yeah. yeah. So I, I wrote yeah. that. But, uh, so the pace is there. Yeah. But uh, couldn't buy a stall, no. really. Um, and yeah, I thought it was kind of a little fortunate that he had the red play. Right. You know, it was a matter of time. Yeah. Too bad for him. Like it kind of like those guys uh, start believing that you know you have the red play once, and then you get the red play the second time, mm -hmm. and then you start believing like, oh, maybe I can do this. <laughs> no, man, you yeah. you never gonna you never were gonna win. Yeah. Right. You, you're not right. Well, I think You're still missing I think something. He, I think if he had started, he can do it. He could get on podiums, you know, all day long. Yeah. But not what what he showed this year, like yeah. other than the mud race right. or whatever, like um, or what it Detroit. <sighs> yeah, Detroit was I, second. I don't know what I'd yeah. say in mud race, but um, um, the the um, crazy the first start. race, yes, yeah. yeah, crazy start. All right, all right, last one, Brock Moran ten. How far back in Supercross history would you have to go for present-day Kyle Chisholm on 2024 equipment to be the title favorite in the Premier class? Everyone well, else on he, bikes if, from that year. If he's on a 450 four-stroke, you could go to, like, the late 90s. No. He's not beating an Ezra Lusco. No? No. On a modern 450? Eh. He's not beating MC in 98 Okay, so you got 99. the 1980s? No, early 90s. Early 90s? Yeah. Like uh, J and B days, 
Uh, all the way till 96, maybe. Okay. MC 96. So you're thinking MC's got more tech technique or whatever than him ever. Like, dude, think about a forfeit. You guys used to, you guys, you were the greatest riders in the world, and you would fuck up the turn and not be able to triple. That happens all the time. Like, screw something up, and you're like, ah, shit, double, double, you know, you know whatever. Yeah, but. Well, Chiz, Chiz would never fuck that up. Okay. Chiz is on a 450. Okay. He'd be like, bruh. Yeah, but you, you're comparing. But that's the question. Yeah, no, but you're not comparing the right thing. I'm trying to explain to you. Just listen to that's me. That's the for question. One second. It's like Chiz is going to ride on tougher track, steeper, less. He's fine. He's going to ride bigger whoops. He's going to ride. Yeah, 450s are great in whoops. I understand that. I understand that. But the tracks are less groomed, more steep, you know. Dude, uh, dude he's fine. But you you think he beats a, a, a 2000, 2001 Ricky MC me? No, that? no, no. I went further back than that. I said like 90s. 90s. Like, yeah. I said 99, I think. Then I said 99. Um, I, just show, I, I just showed you the, the lineup in 99. Yeah, dude, but the bike. I'm just the, the 450 four stroke EFI. No miss, jump everything. Don't fucking. Like, all you guys, you watch old videos. You guys would make mistakes and have to back out of things. Okay. Well, do, you agree, well, do you agree with that? I'm gonna. You know what? Do you agree with that? You should have asked this question when MC was on. It says, you know what, MC, you're in '99, you were champion. Uh, you know, Steve we, Mathis thinks we, he's gonna whoop we, your ass with his 450. No, no, not Steve Mathis. Carl Chisholm. No, no, Carl no, no. Chisholm. Steve Mathis, Mathis thinks Carl Chisholm, yeah. Chisholm's gonna uh, whoop your ass with his 450 Suzuki with a kickstart. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. gonna uh, well, say that to his face? <laughs> uh, I may not use the terms "whoop ass." <laughs> <laughs> I might not use that term. But the you, big, are you with me on this? Yeah, you, uh, you uh, can't ask him. No, Why? I can't. I plead the fifth. Why? He's not. Uh, but, but, be, be careful what you're gonna say. He doesn't know enough, like this type of stuff. Yeah, he's right about that. To 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 have a, okay. uh, a an opinion. Bike wise, he uh, pulls okay. every hole shot. He pulls every hole shot. Oh. He tracked us through the whoops. He jumps every so for combo. him, for him, the '99 Supercross season is like the your race in Den Denver, the Privateer Island race. Yeah, what about it? So, for Chisholm, it's easier to win a '99 Supercross uh -huh. against 250 guys, 252 short guys, yeah. than to win. No, a, he won a my race. He smoked my race. Okay, so but he won from the back row. He beat the Privateer guys from the back row. Okay, so you think it's uh, it's going to be the same? Okay, like he's so going to win just like he wins. So the look, private what we're really thing. what we're really disagreeing about is you're saying like 94, 93, he wins, and I'm saying like 98. Like we're only disagreeing. Nin you said 99. Okay, well, but 98 MC was champion too. We're disagreeing by five years. That's really what it boils down to. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm thinking is, do you know you telling him he, he's going to beat the king? I'm going to bring this up in my group text tomorrow. It's like gonna, saying I'm going to ask so you I'm, I'm going to ask you Okay. Who can I talk to right now? How many, Who's awake right now? That no, I want I want to get someone's opinion no, right now. Just call him. No, what I was uh, in hockey. Yep. Hockey. Love hockey. Uh How many players in uh in, in the league? Uh there's 32 teams of like a roster of like 25. So 30 600 plus yeah. uh, 700. Sure. Sure. All right, 700. Um, and uh, Chiz in, is in what uh, category as far as he's a top 20 guy yeah. out of 60? Yeah. So he's in the first tier, you would say, in Supercross? I don't know where you're going with this. You already lost it. <laughs> no, no. Do you think that training, riding skills, bikes advance every year? So you think Kinda. A, a top 200 – the 200 player in hockey, because that's your sport. Yeah. A 200 player in hockey. Uh, who was M who was MVP in hockey in 1999 or 2000? Uh, Mario or Yager, one of those years. So you think like a, a 200? You know Yarmer Yarmer Yager is? No idea. Okay. I don't know anything about hockey. Yeah. But since you know hockey. But you know Gretzky. I know Gretzky because everybody does. Lemieux. Uh, no. Okay. All right. I know that crazy uh, goalkeeper that was. Stopping everything no long ago. I saw on Sports Center. I don't remember. Okay. Um, so, who is the 200 best player in hockey? 
Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? So there's 30 teams. Yeah. You take uh, 30, take less than 10. So you take five guys, you know. <laughs> what the hell kind of math? I'm so lost. I'm trying to compare. I know, I know, but so I'm so So you take, lost. like, the worst the worst player yeah. of a starting lineup of a hockey. Today? Today. Yeah. The worst player of a starter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because that's pretty – no. And you're yeah. saying you're and I and you're saying against, put him back in against Gretzky against the 2000 MVP hockey guy. Okay, who's better? The 2000 hockey guy. Would okay, be better. thank you. Next question. I think that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I'm trying to but put I, it in I, perspective. Here's what I'm going to do for you tomorrow. I'm going to text some very important people in the industry. And ask him this question. Yeah, but there's no way to know who's right. I know, but I want. I, I don't understand. I don't give a shit about if 99% thinks like Chisholm's gonna win because I don't. <laughs> I don't think people have my eyes and my expertise okay. in the, on the matter. All right. So they have no. Um, but again, credibility. We're, we're arguing about five years here. <laughs> no. Like we're five years <laughs> off, which I is not. Know. Which is not a I huge. No, it's crazy. A huge difference. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. All right, last question. That was it. No, Way to go out, horrible. though. Way to go out on a high. I yeah. didn't know if you were going to like that one, but it was, I it was a hit. I love that one. Yeah. Chiz, 94 Chiz champion. Chiz might not love that one. On an RMZ 450. No, you said 99. Stop trying to redeem yourself somehow. Chiz, 99, Supercross champion. Yeah. On a, on a on RMZ a, 450. Let's do it. Call Doc from uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> let's make this shit happen. Can we do – is there a chance that we could dart fish Chiz? Dart fish on the <laughs> re, re, redo the track yeah. on Heim 99. I'm telling you, dude, a 450 four-stroke would jump you everything. Might, you might have a you point. You would get the starts. You might have you a point. You would blow through the whoops. You might have Thank a point. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just like to argue. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> but you, you might have a point. He's coming around now. The, I'm, uh, I'm, playing, he hey. I'm playing the bad guy because I want to argue with you. I cannot say yes, yes right. to you. you Privateer LCQ race coming up. Tickets are available on pulpmex.com. Marks is going to make an app where you can pay $100. <laughs> no, pay $10. $100. To vote for the wild card. Stay tuned. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, what a, a grifter. Grifter? Yeah. Show's over. See you guys later. I'm out of here. A bunch of uh, grift. grift. Legit turn the cameras bunch off. Of grift. <laughs> I'm going to call you the orange uh, man. Uh, <laughs> the orange man. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Please. And Gold shoes. I don't know where that came from. Oh, come on. He doesn't know. I, you don't know? Jeez. No, I know what you're talking about. Your boy, Donnie. Oh, what did he do now? He, he, he sold the, sh the shoes. The, the gold he shoes. sold Chinese gold shoes you with a chi on there. Yeah. Come on. A thousand, yeah. thousand of them for 400 bucks. Yeah. Sold out in like three seconds. Yeah. Of course they did. <laughs> he's going to use all that money to pay his fines. <laughs> pay he's, his court cases. He's, not uh, gonna, he's only going to make 400,000 on it. I don't yeah, understand how he, you... He needs more than that. He needs yeah. to sell did you buy a minute. pair? Did you buy a pair? No, two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One for the week and <laughs> one for the weekend. Okay. Uh, Make America Great Again with Chinese shoes. <laughs> Is that? Gold. Gold. Okay. Uh, LeBig, thank you for coming in. Yeah, no problem. Are we done yet? Yeah, I'm I think saying we... goodbye. Thank you for coming in. LeBigUSA.com. No yep. Uh, well, no, please no. check it out. I want, you, I want you to have the your reaction live when I'm going to show you uh, uh, this. You can catch DV on his podcast. You can catch DV. <laughs> oh, they're on Poshmark for 2200 bucks now. <laughs> That's insane. I want you to go to uh, what's Indie, yeah. buy those, yeah. and go. Oh, my Th God. A thousand <laughs> pairs. Never surrender gold shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you never seen that? I didn't it see that. It was all over the news. Uh, all over the news. I, 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 I don't – listen, I listen. I like Fox News, and it wasn't on there, so – uh, you know? I'm a more on the Newsmax guy. Right, right, right. right. Newsmax know. didn't cover it. Oh, <laughs> you know? I don't know. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. Oh, Mark's just sent me a photo here on the, uh, on the yeah. Slack. Yeah, <laughs> those are great. Um, thanks for coming in, LeBig. No problem. Let's, let's mountain bike soon. Yeah, let's yep, mountain yep. bike soon. Yep. Always fun to do it. LeBig loves mountain biking, DV. He is. I'm a, obsessed. He is. Both of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I, have you tried to, to go on the ride and re removing the seat? See how it feels? <laughs> no, no. But I'll tell you what, whenever I go with this fucking guy, DB. This Something happened? No, he's just always taking photos. That's, that's how he does. Dude, he knows about that. I'm yeah. just like, let's go. Dude, dude let's this go. This guy, I'm sure he does like five miles. 
No, 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 no. I guess Strava. I'm joking. I'm joking. I follow him on Strava. If it's on Strava, if it's on Strava, it happens. It happens. Yes, exactly. Uh, so thank you for coming in. Uh, we'll see you this weekend, of yep. course. Yep. Always fun to have you in. We need to get you in more. You told me one time you didn't think your English was good enough to come in. I think it's, it comes around. It's fine. It's, it's you're good. You, you sound great. You've yeah. been here for like I know. 60 years eventually. Know. Look, look, you, you, sound, you sound like uh, the coster. You, you know, sound, been you here sound better for than this guy. <laughs> People still say, I can't understand what DV says. Nah, yeah, yeah, come on. You can understand me better than Lewis. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Cooper I can't Webb, understand Lewis. Cooper Webb, Lewis. That's a French thing. <laughs> Cooper Webb, Lewis, McGrath, best interview tonight. They're all go great. I, I thought Coop was very open and like yeah. uh, he looks so like tense on TV. He does. He, and on race day, he's a different dude. But even like uh, like race day, and I've been around him a little bit. Uh, even at the test track, it seems like somebody killed his dog. You know, oh, like okay. uh, so I, I'm in some group text with him, and he's come here to the house. The dude's awesome, and then at the race day, he. He's a different guy, but like, even to me. Yeah, so, I yeah, understand. Yeah. Uh, but he was like super open, super nice. And, yeah. uh, you don't see that on TV. He's always kind of like grumpy a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, like past champions, uh, past uh, kind of like a new world champion, mm -hmm. uh, I don't always know how they feel about like as beans like me, mm -hmm. like asking question or giving uh, my opinion. Uh, so I have a tough time sometimes, you know. Yeah. But he was really cool, you know. Awesome. Was really cool, uh, yeah. Best interview, Marks? Uh, I'll go Cooper. All right. Talent? No. I'm still mad that DV didn't yell at anyone one tonight. I don't have a he best He didn't yell at anybody last time either because I had Sexton, McGrath, uh, I, all these great – I had to – you know, I can't have Rutledge Wood or Myrtle Tough. or these other guys that he's going to yell at them. Not with that attitude. <laughs> 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 we need to try to get DV I want. I want Keep fired up DV. Can we get? I was kind of fired up. I thought it was 50 50 was going to yell at Lewis. I really did. Oh, I really did too. Yeah. No, he seemed like a genuine like fan of the sport. Kind of like okay. fan right. domish. He's a kinda. good guy. Le Big, you know Lewis? Yeah, yeah I know Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. You get to know him a little good bit guy. better. Is, is that the word they use these days? What? Fan domish. Fan, I thought I you were know. saying dumbish. No, dumb. Fan oh. dumb ish. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Slight I don't miscommunication. Think get a yeah. job before the main event. So okay. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks to our sponsors for get for helping us get DV here. Thank you for the money you pay me, so DV can get paid expenses and a fee for coming here. Always fun. Uh, appreciate it, Marks. Thank you. Yeah. Talent. Uh -huh. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thanks, you're, Steve. Volen told me things I got to do, I guess. <laughs> you're so. not going to do it. I'm, no I'm one's going no to remember this. Uh -huh. uh, thanks to Swiss Corps. Thanks to uh, Roto. Thanks to Pookie as well. DV's leaving. Um, uh, LeBig. <laughs> Thank you, LeBig. Uh, appreciate everybody listening and watching on YouTube. Daniel Blair in next week. Really appreciate it. So until next week, see ya. Great radio, bros. There's something I want to get off my chest, and it's about that summer. When you went away to community college, I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine, and I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff, and I was totally nude, and it was weird. I, I mean, you probably didn't hear about it because I went under the name of Mike Honcho, but I just wanted you to know that. If you could hear me, if it got into your brain somehow, that I spread my butt cheeks as Mike Honcho.